Oh man. Hello everybody. Happy Saturday. It is pretty freaking darn early in the morning. It's 7.45 a.m. EST. I'm gonna turn down this Pentakill rock and roll. All right, today we're gonna watch another NA Masterclass. It is time for the Iguana PB Masters. Rise and shine, what up, Boking? When does it start? It starts in 13 minutes. Oh God, I, I was setting up so many things. I actually didn't even set that up. So let's say EPB ma uh, Iguana Masters starts at 8 a.m. at March 16th. And we got the countdown timer started right here. Boom. All right. So for people who don't know, what is the Guana Masters? We got a big time player list today. Uh, we got a big time player list today. I'll go ahead and show you guys. Um, can you guys see? Or is this screen too small? I think you can see it. We have 60 second, Ahau, Alan ZQ, Balotelli. Ben Actually, let me go ahead and... Uh transition here in just a second look at my cam doesn't show up what oh, this other screen it does not show up okay weird um i'll probably just do it then like this all right uh <clears throat> man it is too early in the morning my brain is not working all right so here are the people that we have today we got 60 second from china it's just alphabetically listed ahau alan zq so aha from china top player so 60 second is uh as you guys know uh was for a long time uh called a ladder warrior from china but he has since shaken off the fraudulent allegations he got to the world championship and landed in the top 10 Great performance, uh, no longer a fraud. Ahao, uh, winner of a former China Regionals, one of the earliest winners, I believe, set three was when Ahao won. Uh, so he's like the very first Regionals winner for China. So he goes OG, OG, right? Back in set three, they started competing. Uh, that's how uh, China started getting on the map uh, with their regional competition. He's that guy. Alan ZQ, longtime competitor in TFT, also a Legends of Ruterra world champion, uh, the host of Don't Talk We Don't Know EMEA. Uh, this guy is very qualified. Also, apparently in scrims, the PBE in-houses in scrims, Alan's number one in AVP. What up, Michael? Oh, wait, I'm uh, an observer. So sorry, I got it. <laughs> We're watching Malala. Malala, we're watching you today. Good luck, buddy. I'm PB. I'm Observer PB7. No pressure. Uh, let me. I'm just going to keep walking it through. Uh, Balotelli, Italian legend, has competed for many sets as well. Uh, I, I, we, I don't actually know if he's... Um, I don't think he's won the GSCs, but I think he's gotten far in, in several of those tournaments. Uh, I'm just going <clears> to <throat> look it up real quick. Yeah, he got top finals. It, he got into the final lobbies a few times uh, in, in some big tournaments, including regional. So he's definitely capable. Bintum! Oh my God, Bintum is back. I mean, what can I say about Bintum, man? This guy from Korea has uh, somehow grown a hater, a hate watch party from North America. Bintum hate watchers. Are there any in chat? Any Bintum hate watchers in chat? All right, uh, Capri e Nezu. Actually, I don't know much about them, but I think they're two ladies competing together and they've been pre-approved to play together. I think they're kind of like a content creation duo. And so it's cool having some women playing in it. Uh, Cesar, I don't know much about Cesar. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. He's one of the players I'll be looking up. Uh, Caesar, Latam player, top 12 at Latam regionals, okay. Uh, from Mexico. From Mexico. Uh, Cheche. This guy was known as uh, kind of a choker in Argentina and Latam for a long time, but has also made it to set 10 worlds. So now kind of overcoming a big hurdle. He was getting to many final lobbies, but never made it to you know, beyond the final lobbies of regionals. 
So he is now starting to be on the upswing. Maybe that, that world performance helps him break out. Dale Som, very strong ladder performer uh, from Spain. Quite possibly the most consistent player from Spain currently. And so he's, a, he's an all-star from Spain. Day sick, uh, long-time innovator, kind of a kind of a contrarian in TFT. A lot of times when people look at day sick, he's um he's like a player that always just say, no, nah, no, nah, the meta is fine. You guys just suck, right? And like, or or like, oh, you know, I actually really like this this mechanic that everyone else is. He's, he's just kind of like a TFT contrarian from Russia, kind of going through some hard times back when the Ukraine and Russian war was going on. Uh, Dasik struggled a lot in TFT. Uh, I think he wasn't, uh, we, we weren't even sure if Dasik could even, like, you know, play TFT anymore because uh, Twitch cut off, like, all of his earnings. I'm glad that he's still around. He won uh, some PB tournaments in the past as well. Back in set six, uh, he, he was, like, early, he won the PB set six tournament, I think. Um, and so in these kinds of PB tournaments, I expect him to do well. It's still ongoing. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I, 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 it feels like a long time ago, but it's still very much a big struggle. I mean, if anything, we're still packaging 4 and 8 and everything like that. It's definitely is still a thing, for sure. Uh, Dish Soap. <laughs> Dish Soap. Uh, regionals winner from set 10. <clears throat> uh, my partner for TFT Academy. Uh, in my opinion right now, top two in NA alongside Malala. Uh, but you know, we'll see if, uh, big six Zuko can do it. Flancy. Uh, I consider this guy top three in China for some, several sets now, actually not several sets since set seven, he first broke out in the scene because he was capping out and winning his boards at fast nine, fast 10, big time, strong, uh, strong, strong fundamental player. Uh, you know, I really like watching Flancy play. He's also kind of a little bit of a, a, a independent thinker. He tends to play a lot of his own b builds and paths a lot of times. Very cool. Uh, he, he does play the Metacops. It's just that he likes, he likes to do some weird things that I don't see people doing. Uh, Grafo is another good Argentinian player. Uh, not quite to the level of some of the other Argentinians like Relic and Michael and Cheche, who have kind of taken more to the spotlight lately, but uh, keep an eye out for him. Don't know much about Point GG, uh, so I can't speak much about him. Juan May. Uh, literally, if you were to end TFT today and you would say who is the GOAT of TFT in terms of results, if you're just to end it today, it'd probably be Juan Mei from China. This guy has made it to four consecutive world championships, has won one of them, uh, and is largely still considered to be a top player in China for uh, since the very beginning. So, I mean, this guy is, I mean, I put, I put him second on the list right now in terms of headliners for a reason. Uh, Ice. Ice is an APM demon, kind of like known as, uh, like, you know, the, he's, he's kind of like a StarCraft player who loves to play TFT type of player. He's, he's just constantly doing quick roll downs. Uh, we saw him compete in set 10. He made it to the final lobby. People th thought he was the strongest player from China in set 10. And, uh, now he's back here. Don't know again much about Dion. I gotta look up some of these players. This is a little bit more of my fault. I'm gonna look it up right now. Dion. LSRP. Uh, the only result we have so far is that he placed top 16 in a Spanish tournament called Level Up. Dale Som got second. Point GG got third. Chuso fourth. So a lot of good players here. Oh, that is not good. 15 out of 16. Okay, the only result so far we... <laughs> the only result is that he went 15 out of 16 in a cup. Okay, uh, let's move past that. Casey Campus. Uh, Camp is the cousin of double 61. Uh, and kind of like a little bit living in his shadow, but has made to the world championship, is a strong player in his own right. And uh, I, it's, it's always like double 61 takes a little bit of like whatever he, I can do, whatever, whatever Canvas does, double 61 goes like one step above. That even happened in Vegas, by the way. Canvas was like one point away from making it to final lobby. And guess who made final lobby? Double 61. Very strong player. Uh, he is known to be a little bit greedy though. And so I don't know, I don't know if this meta suits him because I think it's going to be more reroll centric. We'll see if it ends up, uh, being as reroll centric or as, uh, as greedy, like fast nine, fast 10, but if he can get there, he's a strong player. Spencer, you guys might see this is, this is supposed to be alphabetical and there's a K here. That is right. K3 Soju has dropped out of the tournament. Um, I feel like I should just read what he wrote. <clears throat> he, 
hello i've been like super busy so i haven't been able to play pb can another top player spencer take my spot i won't be competitive this tournament since i haven't been able to practice i feel terrible since setsuko keen pressman dish up and all of them have been practicing hard ha <laughs> keen and i see a bunch of top players from every region get invited i haven't been streaming recently since i've been busy i would just disappoint my viewers and north america so uh so so soju is no show today this weekend he says he doesn't want to disappoint his viewers and doesn't want to disappoint north america this was posted uh about four or five hours ago so yeah so soju is not is no longer participating today it's sad uh kevin parker i mean this guy is if there's one there's i'm just gonna put it out there yone reroll is a thing right now in this meta yone umbral reaper three cost is a devastating real composition to play maybe we'll get to see some kevin parker uh part two part dose uh maybe, maybe kevin parker can and relive some of his glory days from the vegas open <clears throat> legend also kind of becoming a friend of the co stream he's like one of our emea guests that comes out comes on his english is fantastic great stream also has his own esports team high rollers Kudz is a player that you probably don't remember, but he was actually my favorite to win set seven championships uh, because he actually had the Malala set before Malala. I, 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 I wish, let me, let me pull up the split tab view. Before Malala did the Malala set. Wikipedia TFT. This Kudza guy was like on something. In set seven, he like, like this was all done in like a couple of months where he went first at Huya qualifiers. Then he won this net, set, uh, the South finals. Then he won the Huya finals and he got second at regionals. Like, look at this string of results. Before Malala was Malala, Kudz had a chance to do it all. And so I picked him to do really well at set seven championships because I was like, this guy is on a complete burner. But uh, he got top 16, which is still pretty good, but uh he is an animal whenever he's on fire and like and he's not like he was like a one set and done he's since put on some pretty good results he is still very very good and in, in my opinion probably the best chinese player the chinese best chinese tournament player that people don't talk about kiyun korean and canadian i mean <laughs> let's hope that kiyun uh i'm pretty sure kiyun today is 20 at 20 timo let me see let me let me let me ask him uh are you still 20 out of 20, Timo? Let's throw it in. <laughs> All right, so Kiyun is 20 out of 20, Timo. Uh, my little legend is also Timo. <laughs> All right, he got it. He got it. Um, that's all you need to say. Kiyun is uh apparently Kiyun and Disso and Preston have been practicing really hard, according to Soju, but yeah, Kiyun. Yeah. All right. Uh Les Coco, good French player, has made it to many final lobbies. Um, doesn't really get the spotlight compared to some of the other French players that we've even have on this list. Like Pade Bowl has been to Worlds, when uh double sixty one, Zyko, like a lot of other good French players. Um, but Coco's very, very solid, has been always a threat in a lot of tournaments. Uh Lelouch people don't remember this but he was one of the first eme players to like really put his money where his mouth is my opinion lelouch's claim to fame was when he wagered soju who would do better at worlds lelouch made it to set seven worlds for when it was just his dragon lands and lelouch uh like soju was shitting on eu right he was just saying like eh, eu sucks eu sucks eu teeth whatever eu eu, EU west sucks one two three and ain't greater than eu and lelouch is like so you, you shouldn't even talk uh, and then so uh, and, and then uh like so just like shut up like, just sit down little bro whatever little gup just doing his usual trash talk and Luch said okay you want to wager who's going to do better at worlds and so just like sure and then they bet a lot of money they bet a lot of money and guess who did better at worlds <laughs> luch almost made final lobby let me see Lelouch was 10th. Yeah, Lelouch was 10th. And Soju, ooh. Ooh. I mean, 23 is usually a good number, but not here. Lelouch, top 10. And, uh, well, I mean, I think that's pretty cool. Like, I, he's one, he's one of, if, if you are, like, a person looking for EU scraps, right, to fight against NA, 
in terms of like putting money where their mouth is wagers eu has a big one over na Lelouch beat soju that one uh McGarkey, another really good french player kind of like in that same territory as coco i think coco is much more accomplished and much more uh established but McGarkey is i think as far as i know um a little bit more known as a streamer uh oh we're running out of time what i still have like 20 more players to go through michael considered to be latam's pride right now i think uh if if there was like one player from latam that people say is the most accomplished from that region and it can hang with the best consistently it is michael yeah he, he is unfortunately going through um kind of a big fire that's uh like that terrorized chile i think one of the biggest fires they've ever had biggest natural disaster they've had in, in, in a while um and so he's been actually spending a lot of time recovering and repairing a lot of his local community right he spent he raised money and like took a local caravan around town uh, so i don't know how much tft he's been playing but uh he's been trying to be a pillar not just of the tft scene but also his local community <clears throat> Oh wait, uh, I have the wrong scores. Let me, let me, uh, see. Uh, wait, what? Okay, okay. Before we start, I need. I don't actually have the right scores. Uh, rule set. Excel. Admins. Okay, okay, here, uh... Do we have the scores link? Is, does, anybody, does, any, does anybody have a scores link? Okay, Miguel Arcjo, he was a player that I connected with over set 10 worlds. Wait, hold on, let me actually add it. I've, I, I'm not using my normal tournament scene. So I have to I want to add this to support if you guys uh like like this tournament you should you should definitely thank Iguana from uh sorry uh from Spain he organized this whole tournament and is like putting like so much effort into it uh and so Iguana is the MVP uh Miguel Miguel is, is more of a content creator set 10 was the first time he was like he's been a long time streamer and then said hey I want to kick it into gear um This is one p guys link thank you thank you thank you thank you uh edit com scores pb wanna masters or sheet boom it's a it's a new sheet it's a new sheet uh miguel so it's kind of like if uh, like raditz was like hey i want to like be really competitive this set and then like because miguel's very entertaining he does a lot of woke builds like last set in set 10 he's going for garen reroll and like had it up his sleeve for world he never had a spot for it but like He's uh he's 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 kind of a he's kind of a guy that's starting to take it more seriously, even though he's been known as like a streamer for a long time. I mean, okay, Malala, I don't even know much to say about this. This guy has had the go season run and is currently on track to uh possibly be the greatest TFT player ever if he can keep it up. Like, how far can this guy go? I mean, no, it, honestly, he has nothing to prove anymore, but now we're kind of like at a point where like keep going, right? He's kind of like Max Verstappen at this point from Formula One. Max is just winning everything, and everyone got like Okay, the thing is, we're not tired of Malala winning, but at this point, everyone's like, okay, let's just see how far he can go. And I, and I would love to see Malala uh, go really, really far. Just, just like, hey, win everything. Why not? Like, win for a whole year and a half. Who cares? Uh, maybe it gets a little bit boring, but I, I would love to see that in TFT. It'd be pretty cool. Uh, Potty Bowl. Potty Bowl uh, has been to Worlds before. Um, I believe it was set four and set eight. Hot bowl. He went to set four, definitely. Um, he, I remember because he made it to the final lobby. He also made it to a different uh, world championship as well. Set seven. So he went set seven and set four. Uh, has both, but had had good results in um, a couple of them. And I think that in general, he's a really accomplished local player. Look at all of his Hex League. Hex League is like the local French competition. Uh, and it is, so it's like, kind of like... Uh, Kind of like if Soju took, decided to make his own competitive league in NA, like the Soju Invitational, he's like winning all of them. Like he's winning all the Soju Invitational in France. So he's uh, he's a very good player. Okay, looks like we're starting soon. Press event. He's coming off of a set ten where he had his best results yet on the rankings. 
and or yeah he's be best result yeah, on his rankings and also the best amount of like ladder results press event is like kind of on this continual progression higher but he has some of his worst tournament results until regionals regionals he got final lobby and was in contention to make it to the world championship and so now we might actually get a, 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 a maybe press events like finally on the upswing after a couple of really bad tournaments in set 10. uh kiki kiki has made it to world just before uh he's he's actually kind of one of the og competitors he reminds me of kind of like current x just kind of has been there for a really really long time um he has made it to worlds back in set six yeah and set seven so um just just kind of been very very uh solid also he has a magnificent beard look at this freaking like you can tell this guy has a badass jawline <clears throat> but he decides to you know gr he decides to let everyone off easy with uh with a magnificent beard okay relic from venezuela uh this guy is the first player to ever make it to both league of legends world championships and tft world championships which is pretty impressive uh i i anticipate that he won't be the last the the closest person besides relic was uh coral from edward gaming back in like 2017 or something like that the top laner he was very close a couple times he goes by the username pseudo udo now in china but we thought that he was gonna be the first person but instead it was relic and relic has actually just recently retired from league of legends but like last year and so set 10 was the first like full set that he competed in because he's been a challenger from like season set one but um he's never really been able to compete so he, he was he was just one of those like prolific gamers he was a pro uh, league of legends player but on the side he just got challenger tft for fun and now he's competing uh for real he's also like um in a lot of streams i watch which is really interesting because not a lot of people know who relic is I, I, or not, rather i don't think a lot of people are familiar with relic in the tft scene so he's in a lot of people's chats that i uh i don't think people see notice and so he's studying a lot of the game so I, I i've been very impressed with his work ethic so far ry oh man this you guys already know if you've been watching my stream for the past couple weeks you guys know that i if, if there's bintum hit watchers if there are bintum hate watchers where are we? we covered bintum already for for about a, a solid week i was a ry or yeah his name is really hard to pronounce in english so uh i just say ry um or chinese rather I was a big hate watcher. This guy threw so much prize money away because he had like a, the most unlosable spot of all time. And in checkmate, you have to go first. He was 100 HP over a 16 HP disco player and he couldn't convert because he rolled to zero for no reason at all. And then he, he, when he rolled to zero, his board wasn't strong enough. And then he had to wait like three to four turns for his economy to recover, but he didn't. He just rolled to zero every single turn. And then lost and he sold his only win condition which was vex three <laughs> and so i for that i like couldn't forgive him for that so i was a big ry watch i hate watcher but hey he made it up in the world qualifier the the day after he got top four and then he made it to top four at worlds in set 10 so like he shut me up but man this guy i i, I was such a big ROI hate watcher you guys remember that right Oh, guys, be careful. This, I didn't actually calibrate my sound settings. This might be a way too dank moment. All right, so I covered uh, almost everybody's storyline. Oh, no, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. Oh, man, I fantastically did it. Okay. Here we go. Game number one. Game number one. Let me put up the graphics that wasn't so bad right all right what portal is it it is prismatic party and i'm going to try and see if i can keep track of the exalted for you guys cleanly if it's if it's gonna uh be like a huge part of the clogging up the screen I, I might not uh include it so right now i have this but this portal is prismatic party okay and we're hopping on board with uh malala to start things off we voted for the uh we voted for what the portal or the lobbies were going to watch ahead of time yesterday 
Okay, Exalted is Rek'Sai, Kiana, Teemo. <laughs> Rek'Sai, Kiana, Teemo. And then Aloon, Aphelios, Nautilus. Boom. All right. Hopefully, hopefully that doesn't look too messy. <laughs> All right, uh, I think that's good enough. Uh, okay, so here we go. We have Malala's POV. He starts off with Yasuo and uh, Yorick and Darius. Looks like he wants to go for a Yone opening. I, ex I expect Yone to actually be really popular today. Um, oh, crap. I don't have my observing. Okay, give me a sec. I don't have my hotkeys up. I know, I know. Amateur hour out here. Can you move it to the big to the to the top left? Yeah, sure. Let me do that in a little sec here. <clears throat> okay, so we got prismatic. Starter kit, trash to treasure, sniper crown. If he wants to play Yone, it's probably none of these. The the best thing about trash to treasure is that you might be able to get like um like some really, really powerful components or things for Yone if you want to go for it, like uh like Death Defiance. But uh I wouldn't recommend it. I wonder if he's gonna consider things like Sniper Crown. So with the Exalted, you could probably play around Aphelios. And he has a Rage Blade. Rage Blade is good for Aphelios, so you can actually uh, convert off that if he wants. Okay, Trash to Treasure. <clears throat> now, the question will be if he ends up using it right now or waiting. Probably Belt. Sniper's Focus and Infinity Force. Okay, pretty good start. It's uh, Jeweled Lotus 3 for uh, point GG. Here you guys go. Top left, yeah? That works. And I can actually make the background bigger this way. And then... Uh, add the portal text. Uh, there. Boom. All right back to high rolling amazing encounter nar lets you reroll augment one additional time well perfect timing not really so nothing happened loud yep this is potty bowl he started with wandering chainer oh my god are you kidding me? Porcelain and Sniper with Aphelios and... Oh my god. All right, classic EU high roll. Another Trash of Treasure. We got Mana Zane and Deathfire Grasp. So a uh, pretty good AP opener. This looks like uh, you could try to play around some of the four costs. Um, but maybe ends up going for uh, like AP three cost reroll like Zoe. I don't really think Zoe's that good with Mana Zane though. But... Uh... Maybe I'm wrong. I might have to look at the data on that one. I've played Mana Zane Zoe 3 before, and the thing is, if she doesn't burst and kill early, then you just have a dead item on her. Which is if she's not getting kills and her ricochet is not actually scaling. Nice. Good start for our boy Malala. Let's go. <clears throat> Chuso. Chuso's a really good player from uh, Spain as well. Uh, again, has performed in a lot of tournaments. Uh... Him and Dalesom are probably the two uh, Spain players of, uh, in terms of uh, the, some of the best results lately. There's a lot of Spanish players here, but uh, he's one of them to pay attention to. Oh, Rainplosion is in call. Okay. Wait, is she? Hello. What's up? Okay. Hi, Rain. Give me a second. I am going to stream... If it's okay, I'm going to stream at 7.20. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. All right, great. How are you? Uh, I just woke up about, like, 20 minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, so... don't worry. I, I, I feel you on that one. Um. Okay. Uh. This is Juanme. One May, as you guys know, I was I was doing a little bit of a preview, but I basically, you know, Juan May. I would say that if TFT were to end today, Juan May would be considered the the goat. I don't know if you disagree with that. Uh, 
Uh, Hwame is the goat? Okay, honestly, maybe you could argue for Malala as the goat. Well, I guess oh, they're kind yeah. of impressive. I mean, the run yes, but like Hwame has like the longevity right now. Mm -hmm. Like Hwame has the spike, but uh, yeah, Malala, of course, has done really, really well so far. Um, but let's see, let's say uh, Malala, Malala has like another set that's kind of like that. So I'm pretty sure it is. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, uh, sorry, I was just setting things up. I have rain in the, in the bottom right corner with me. Everything is good to go. Uh, Juan may pick level up. He's gonna try to play for looks like a four cost AP of some kind. Wait, he's not slamming anything. Is he gonna go five loss here to focus on econ? I mean, econ's pretty important when you're playing level up. Generally, when you're playing level up, like, I assume you're playing for like level nine or something. Oh, take it back. Immediately, this Riven. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it, he, he probably knows he's not going to win, so he's trying to kill units. I mean, he's slamming on Caitlyn of all units. Uh, mm -hmm. And she killed one unit. There you go. <clears throat> Juanme, um play style has historically been kind of degenerate. Uh, people people used to fear being in lobbies with Juanme because he's the guy who will start the game at 20 HP by full selling everything, even if he has to. Like, in this spot, historically in the past, mm -hmm. He's just like sold all his board and you're just like what <laughs> out of nowhere <laughs> um i don't think he's gonna do that against yftx it looks like he's going nar kindred with two for one interesting actually maybe yone he's holding a yone i think it kind of just depends on what they hit i assume if they find like multiple yone shops you know yeah. one yone equals yone two that is they true. probably will just play yone but if they find some kindreds and ours i mean yeah it's... oh they sold it they sold the Yoni, actually. Oh, wow. Why Why sell? I feel like at least you can hold it. See what happens. Yeah, that doesn't even make Econ. It doesn't even make Econ. Uh, you know, like, the Mentalist commit's actually kind of important. You know, like, maybe other people scout you. They see you holding Yone. They think you can see off the... Yeah, that's pump. true. And Malala is a person who... I, at first, I thought he had an angle to go for Yone, but he has Trash to Treasure now, and he has Sniper's Focus plus Infinity Force. So he can play... Oh, oh. Bunch of stuff. Also, cool tech to talk about trash or treasure. Um, just a bit nitpicky, and like this is just stuff that like people haven't optimized. But with every single completed item you get, you can slam a completed item onto your worn items and reforge them all without consuming your reforger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I found that out like a couple days ago, so I tried it out, and mm -hmm. you, uh, it's actually really nifty. So you can play things that are like temporary to help get you like the early game power. Let's say for some reason you have something like I don't know, like Mogul's Mail. You don't have to immediately reform and you're like, oh my god, this is so terrible. You can actually play that, get some gold, and later in the game, slam a completed item on that mogul's mail, and then like reforge that after you figure you feel like you got your value off. Yep. Okay, so a Yone commits, two AP commits, Malala pretty open-ended. Not entirely sure what um what Cheche is going for as well. We we see a lot of trash of treasure. Zonia's and Mana Zane. Zonia's is really good for Syndra, but I don't know if that's what he wants to play. It looks like everyone's also just slamming everything and reforging into all. Uh... Oh, not not Canvas. Canvas is not slamming uh, or not not reforging this. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Makes a lot of sense. Like the Orn items, uh, it's not really like you can get Shred Sunder and Theo from them. So keeping a few things. I mean, the Algon's called Trash to Treasure. You might as well keep like stuff that's already good. Yeah. Agreed. <clears throat> Trash treasure is much better than what the forge design wise. I mean, I like it. I think it's clever and I think it's fun and I think it's uh, there's some advanced tactics for it. I think it's like a it's like a pretty good example of design where like the variants can be both fun and skill testing in a lot of ways. Lolly going for a six streak here. And he gets it. Nice job, Malala very much on this and th these kinds of spots are so important i, I think these four cost comps you go to another augment these four cost comps are going to be so important that you play from ahead so, so that way if you you need that buff room because a lot of these real comps are going to pressure kind of similar to where set 10 landed actually mm -hmm. i think there's just like less four cost win out comps like the win out comps tend to be like actual level nine carry comps Agreed. So a lot of it is about, like, if you're trying to actually win the game, I think, it's about, like, hitting a 4 cost and then letting it carry you to 9 and then switching over to, like, one of the actual level 9 carries, which there's there's a lot of this at. Okay. Uh, free 2 more Ornite items? Take any, <laughs> any, any, like, free 2 Ornite items. 
or free three one items. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now you can do kind of do what you're talking about, which is uh oh he's going for three oh. full items. Oh, double sniper's focus. Man. <laughs> it's a long Yasuo. That is really long Yasuo. Whoa. One interesting thing like was that uh it's Z10 at least. A lot of melee carries, um, more specifically Z and some somewhat Akali, uh, actually could use Sniper's Focus pretty well because it's basically like the old RFC. Getting plus one range on a melee unit is super good. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I don't know. Maybe there's like some Sniper's Focus Kane tech. Double Sniper's <clears throat> Focus. Oh, I think Double Sniper's Focus Yone. Does that sound good or no? We just keep Yone safe like in the back and then you just let him melee. Oh, it depends on where he dashes. Like, what if he's in the back and he dashes into their front line? Oh, right. Like he, like, like he, like where this Yasuo is, he dashes to where the Yorick is, and then yeah. But he's attacking and the back line dashes. unit or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Never mind. It's probably not that good. One may also still loose streak. Oh, he had his loose streak snapped. And YFTX, by the way, six Nars, Freaky Friday. Oh, Juan May's playing Tiniest Titan. Oh my god, he's going for level 9. Kiana's the best sniper user? I don't think so. A, a, a good sniper's focused user late game is Azir, but that's like, you're not like, you're not looking at this and be like, man, it's an Azir game. <clears throat> that's, that's, that's the only thing that I know of one. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. I can look around. Well, the AP carries, it's pretty good with um stuff that tries to kill your backline, like yeah. uh, Morgana and the Leo. Yeah, I think. Morgana and the Leo. That makes sense. Uh, Maybe even... Mm, did, what about really Kaisa? Because Kaisa kind of does her ink shot like through the back. I'll admit, my knowledge on Kaisa is kind of deficient on the current patch, because I don't think I've put her on that many boards. I think Ash is just a better Kaisa right now, at least. Unless you're, like, you're playing... Uh, trick shots already. I agree with that. I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm speaking conceptually, but yeah, like power level wise, mm -hmm. I think Kaisa, I'd be surprised to see people play Kaisa outside of uh, like an Exalted she's or a Build Diff or something like that. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I think she's like really, really strong with four trick shot activated, but you kind of have to activate four trick shot to make her strong. Also, really interesting, none of the uh, trash treasure plays have gone like Econ or an items. I feel like I've seen, I've seen them. So maybe everyone just either like high rolled, low rolled, or yeah, before them all. That is true. Although I couldn't help but notice, but the top four players all have trash to treasure, <laughs> and and uh, and like uh, and like an item. Wait, even this person, Point GG, took trash to treasure. <laughs> everyone has what it. What the heck? All right, should we just should we just make this a portal at this point if everyone's going for it? Man. Yeah, maybe it makes it a little bit more fair. Everyone gets to have it. Malal is still streaking. Let's go, buddy. Nice job. One May at 37. Oh, my God. I mean, like I said, he has a reputation for starting the game at 20 HP. He's going he's gonna to pick up right where he left off. Here comes the encounter. Oh! Okay, <laughs> okay. Like, what is even going on? What is this? Just complete buffoonery. We had, we don't even have space. We don't even have space one, to do this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven plus six, thirteen or items on stage three. Oh my 13. god. He's a he has a uh, trick class. He just made a uh, kindred two, so we can go for sniper's focus kindred, I guess. Mm -hmm. Looking like he's gonna move the items off Yasuo because well, yeah. Yasuo was good, but definitely has fallen off a tiny bit. There's a lot of carry items though, and a lot of them are AP. I don't know if he can actually put the sniper's focus on kindreds. Maybe he's actually gonna need to sniper's focus the uh Oh, okay, DFT Kha'Zix. Oh my god, he's doing it. I he's doing you're it. it. <laughs> um, I guess we'll see if it's actually good. Okay. It dashes right into the He front dashes line. right into the back and then focuses the w was he focusing the corner unit? I don't I actually he was don't focusing know. the front line. Yeah, it looks like he was going for the frontline unit. I'm okay, down to not try a sniper so face Yone in my own games, I think. Okay, so the question is, is the damage point from where's Yone standing or where he dashed from? Because the sniper focus says Pretty for each hex, right? 
sure it's where he's standing. It's where you. So it's where. So after the dash, it's not where like the the original body is, right? Yeah, I don't think so. Okay. Well, that doesn't look that good. Where's Soju? Uh, he quit the tournament. He messaged uh, the the organizers and said that he doesn't want to let down his fans and let down North America. <clears throat> That sounds suspiciously like something Soju would not say. No, that's actually what he said. Really? Yeah. Okay. I mean, he didn't say let down. He said he used the word disappoint, but yeah, he did. Okay. He said he hasn't. He said he hasn't been practicing. And oh my god, Morgana too. Okay. I wonder if he's gonna go for the the four ghostly boards I've been seeing a lot. You've been playing. You play Morg. Um. Or ghostly, and then you go for Kane, like Morgana Kane carry, and then you just have like a good split of 80 AP. It's like pretty good. Why eight? I mean, the Why problem with playing AD, ADP is that like you kind of need the 80 items. I'm not sure. Yeah. You have any oh, what, what is this? This is a uh, Nar plus Aatrox reroll. What? Oh my god. Okay. He's not going Kindred at all. He's just going straight Nar. I haven't, I haven't uh, seen this. It also doesn't look that good. It's losing to almost losing to Cogmai too. I mean, a win's a win. Yep. <clears throat> but maybe it's like it's got some hidden scaling. Hidden scaling. It'd be news to me. Okay, I. This not, I'll just say no, this. No, we, we, we won. We won. We won. We won. We lost to Cogmai too. Carry. Don't knock until you try it. Oh, Long Yone. Long Yone. Nice. Malala streaking again. Here comes the four two. Reaper roll the dice oh, and Reaper overwhelming down. force. So he takes Reaper emblem and he can go for four Reaper and you don't even have to reroll at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, four Reaper you only two is like basically a two star four cost. <gasps> Call to chaos. Golden egg. He's oh, not going to take I love that. I love Call to chaos. It's so, so good. 40 so, like, rerolls. 40 rerolls. That per that's 80 gold. Like what Prismatic is giving the 80 gold here. I've never seen this one. Oh my God. 40 rerolls. Are you kidding me? The problem is that, um, <laughs> who's this? Canvas? Canvas doesn't actually have enough gold to buy the to units. buy stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, it, it persists, so. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, it's just that, like, they actually don't have enough gold to, like, take take advantage of, of the rolls that they're, they're getting. It's too much. This is Malala's. Malala going for Silas. Reaper Silas. Oh, killed the unit. Gura cast it again. Oh, Canvas is rolling really hard. Yo, let's go, Malala. He, wait, he skips Ash. Wait, was he rolling? Oh, he's rolling for Aphelios yeah, I'm 3. Su I'm uh, surprised they're rolling, though, with like zero gold. Like, if they find something, they have the lock shot for it. Yeah, and also, it looks like he's he's being contested. Like, Potty Bull has like Aphelios's. So I'm surprised that uh, he's going for it. Because, like, look at Potty Bull. He was the one who started off with Porcelain Sniper Wandering Trainer. Offers you an Iron Man. Also has Man, a, I'm getting more dogs again. Uh, call the chaos. Well, you're in spectator, right? Could you check what Padables call the chaos is? Uh, yeah, you're right. Uh, three thieves gloves. Ew. Three thieves gloves. Let's scout around and see as well what people have. So, Ra <laughs> oh my God, this guy. Why oh, if he likes is streaking with radiant BT Nar? Okay, this is kind of woke. I, just, I did not expect to see it this. Definitely today. is. It definitely is. <clears throat> oh man. Wanmei got to eight, took Sage Crown. He's going to play round four Sage. Point GG, looking to reroll Yone, but he's one off. Umbral Kane, though. Going against Nar three. <clears throat> also a six Umbral. Yeah. I'm a little bit surprised that they didn't like reforge some of these items. Like, I don't know if I would have kept the Redemption specifically. Yeah. That makes sense. Like, I mean, he probably feels like desperate because of HP. Like a lot of your items, I feel like you waste a lot of the power of uh, Trash and Treasure. Because, mm. I mean, in general, at least the Nord item is stronger if it hits your comp. I think for Silas, Silas has some really good ones, too. So. 
I'm very yeah. surprised. Like things like uh, Zonia's is like very, very good on him. Yep. I mean, also, I didn't particularly rate Redemption as a super high prio. Agreed. Dude, uh, why I want to see, I kind of want to see why FTX go really far. So a lot of people have kind of, one of the big meta shifts over the past 40 hours specifically is kind of the revelation of Wardens. I think a lot of people are starting to like put together that Wardens is, is probably like just way too high of a number <laughs> in terms of the damage reduction. And so maybe why FTX is just like, yeah, look how, look how broken Wardens are. You can just play NAR 3. And, uh, and just tempo. I, I don't know if that's true, but we'll see. Hmm. I mean, I, I was really surprised by the ward because this is the person we saw who like had the two kindreds and the two nars. I'm surprised like the kindreds just uh, mysteriously disappeared from their board. Yeah, 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 yeah. Also, it's funny because he's not even using like the tattoo, which. <laughs> yeah, they're playing Ink Shadow for. He, he, he's playing Ink Shadow and he's putting it on a, on a Mumu one. <laughs> yeah. Uh very interesting <clears throat> what's the first augment it's called two for one where if you buy a, the first champion you buy each round you get two copies of it as long as it's three costs or less so it's a reroll augment oh my uh malala has spread out his uh sniper focuses by the way he picked up the infinite remover which is kind of nice I don't know, you guys. Is Nar 3 busted? I actually do think Nar has potential, but I usually see it with like a backliner carry, like Kindred, because I, I think like if your comp is your pure frontline, uh, kind of gets screwed over late game. Because there's like a lot of AoE on like level legendary boards. Oh god. We're playing Rage Blade Kaisa. This is this is desperate for Chuso. He's just trying to stabilize, but he's also playing around Wardens as well. Malala has 114 gold. He's oh my god, he's waiting for point GG to die. And then he's he's gonna full send it. Oh my god. Okay, so he has to see if point GG dies. And when he does, Malala is going to hard send. Let the chaos commence. Okay, I don't know if Cheche beats him. Cheche's board looks like it's kind of lacking. Yeah, still carrying Gazira and the Lilia one. Okay, but I was just say Point GG doesn't have a lot of damage either. He's just relying on the six Umbral purely. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, and there's also two uh, two Zon two Zonias, So like, come on! Yes! Oh, sorry, <laughs> Point GG. It's nothing personal. It's just that Malala needs. Oh, Ari cutscene. Oh, what the heck is this? Oh no, my wallet. What was that? Ari kisses you? Holy shit, TFT players will finally understand what it's like to experience the kiss of Ari. Huh? <laughs> okay, so now we roll. We we saved 120 gold for this very roll down. Nice. 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 Oh. Okay. The only thing is that we our bench space is a little locked, but uh, mm -hmm. hopefully, I mean, hopefully not a big is, deal. He, he's actually making econ, so he doesn't actually need to pick up the orbs on this turn. He could just like let them sit. Oh, that's true. That's true. But then also, if, if any of them contains like, if one of them contained like Yone, wouldn't yeah. it just automatically I mean, it combine? Doesn't matter. <laughs> it didn't matter. Yeah, it didn't matter. But like, I think if, if one of them contained Yone, I think it would combine, right? Uh, I think I've seen that before. I'm not entirely sure. So I'm not. I'm never like 100 percent certain. I kind of just stay. Okay. Stay weary. Reaper. You could Reaper Morgana. Does he want to keep it onto Silas? Morello. Nice. Anti heal. Reforge. Frontline items. Nice. Wait, I'm just realizing this infinite uh, item remover with trash treasure is such a sick combo because you could always mm -hmm. like cherry pick exactly what you want and how you want to manage it and when. <clears throat> oh, Malala is in a great spot, you guys. Malala is in a great spot. Oh, this is looking good.
You don't think so? You need the bench space? Okay. Okay. Malala basically hit and he still has a, the gold to go to nine. What are you looking for when you play nine on this board? Um, I think if you can get like set online, um, he really ensures your late game with the Umbral executes. Right. That stun is huge as well. Cause I think Umbral's a little bit low on utility in that sense. A mm -hmm. lot of like just do a bunch of damage except for a loon. A loon has some utility. Okay, this is Ghost Fight. Should be good. Let's check in on Cheche. Yeah, his Lilia board's going up against Canbiz. Canbiz is, uh, he was a 40 free reroll. And I gotta admit, man, this does not look like a boardy he ro board he rolled 40 times for for free. I think Canbiz is probably bought for here. Yeah. Didn't we hit the Aphelios 3? Why FDX is still streaking? Oh my god, the CN Tech. Reroll Narsena <laughs> and, uh, and Aatrox. Nar, Aatrox, reroll. Wait, wait, what? I, I, I guess wait, it makes wait, sense. Wait, but... that wasn't a move in one. Wait, oh, I mean two for one. Two for one? Okay. I was like, yeah, so I was saying it makes sense, but out of nowhere, it feels like. <laughs> that wasn't a move in one like four turns ago. Potty Bowl is doing a trick with Thief's Gloves and Removers. Thief's Gloves are permanent this and for the round, so you know what you're going to get ahead of time. But you could see what the items are and then repurpose certain Thief's Gloves to the, the better holders. So that Infinite Remover still has value with Thief's Gloves. <clears throat> Radiant, BT, Infinity Force, Gnar. My God, that is not That's normally pretty good. And the board is like pretty uh, easy to roll for, right? There's no like three, four costs. There's not even more than one three cost the roll that he's playing around right now. <clears throat> so he's activating it off of relatively cheap units, right? He's got a bunch of one cost and two cost and a Mumu. That's really accessible. Juso hits uh, the set. Okay. What is Malala going to go for? Oh, we can take like Shoji or something Honestly, if he wants. Whatever item you take. If you don't oh. like it, you can just reforge it. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Because he still needs like king items. I think he can still use um, a silence item. Wanmei has successfully hit nine with his level up and has two star across the board except for Udyr 2. This is a really strong board. Do you think it's good enough with his augment setup to the top four, though? Um. Uh, I think this board, like, really has a problem with single target damage. Um, nothing on this board, like, really kills. Uh, like the big tank stuff, like the Gnar. Right, right. I'm not even sure it kills the Yone. Like, I think you, like, uh, on level 9 AP boards, I think you really need, like, um, an Udyr instead of the Silas. <coughs> or, um, like an Azir. To really deal with, like, man, I'm getting more dog target damage. damage. Wow, wow. Yeah, I agree with that. Thankfully, he has a good matchup against, uh, Canviz. And so, uh, I mean, Canvas is just dead. I, I'd be surprised if Canvas got, got like even a fifth. His board looks look, looking pretty bad. Chuso gets a win versus the Ghost. Law lost again versus YFTX. Dude, YFTX on the 12 streak. Well, that was pretty rich though. I mean, he definitely has the opportunity to cap, to, to cap out. Yeah, yeah. And I think There's also like Chuso, for example, is holding Chris two sets. So, mm -hmm. only some of the units that he wants to play around. Hot ball rolling for Helios. Three. He has seven of them. He has also eight ashes. Wait, what? Did you say eight? Uh, sorry, sorry. Eight, eight luxes. Eight luxes. Oh, okay, okay. My bad, my bad. I meant. Uh, I, I got really lost. Yeah. I was looking at the board. I was like, huh? <clears throat> I 
I mean, Malala is pre-leveling. If he gets a win here, that is huge because he's just greeting for the last three rounds. Oh, good loss. Good loss. We take those. Juan May wins again. YFTX. If he wins this round, 13 streak to close out stage five. Oh my God, this Gnar. Wow. <laughs> and Chuso's dead. <laughs> oh my God. This Morgana cutscene. All right, which one's better? The Morgana cutscene or the Ari one? I think I like the Morgana one, but... Uh, what, Honestly, what do you guys think? I kind of hate all. I kind of hate all the cutscenes. Like I just want to play the game. Oh, okay. And then in that case, your opinions are relevant. No flame. Um, is it? What do you guys think? Morgana or Ari? It's the pathetic meme. Yes. It has to be the most low effort one. Wow. I mean, one of them has to be te technically the most low effort one, but I, I feel like that's, I wouldn't categorize that as such. All right, we're looking for, okay, Silas 2. We're looking for Set. Kane 2. Nice. Two star Reapers. Wow. Okay, we just upgrade everything. You can reforge if you want. Or definitely did something get a lot you can also reforge like this to turn winter for size as well mm -hmm. oh i think you oh i think you might oh, not oh. know about like the the, the reforge tech because he hasn't done it a single time yeah yeah I mean, like, frankly, understandable. I don't expect everyone to, like, can, yeah, to know all the tech, like, super, to know everything, especially about the PB tech. Oh, because a lot of this stuff might get to each other. Oh, fair enough, fair enough. Maybe we'll slide him some tech between games. <laughs> Morgana can step on me, just saying. Okay, but you don't have to say it out loud, you know. I, I didn't need to read that. <clears throat> Wukong. So Cheche is rolling. He hits Orn 2. Pretty reasonable upgrade. It is, he's, he's got a really beefy front line. He has Annie 2 times 2. Galio 2 times 2. Nautilus and Orn 2. Mm -hmm. He's yeah, putting man, all of it in like Lilia. Is the items were like stuck on a Zyro, Zyro 2. I mean, now Hui 1, but Hui 1 is also not the highest damage ever. Wait a second. <clears throat> Double sniper's focus Kane. I'm trying to see if this does like major damage, maybe does a line. Oh my god. Sonya's cheesing. Doing some damage. <gasps> Nice. Top three from Malala. Juan May is dead. Why is he actually on a 15 win streak? He's actually winning out. This guy hasn't lost in stage three. Is he just going for a Filios three as well? Oh, no. He's this Patty Ball already has a Filios three. Oh, actually, so there's 17 three costs in the pool. Does two for one get to bypass that mm -hmm. and get two three costs, two, uh, three costs, three stars? I'm pretty sure it does. Like, oh, I think with wow. two for one, you can actually hit. I didn't uh, think about uh, that. Two, <clears throat> two three stars, three, stars, three costs. Yeah, I, 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 I've never seen people, two people hit without a duplicator, but the, the idea is, you know, the 17th copy would create an 18th one if you buy it. And then uh, that'd be it. <gasps> Oh my God, the feel barely lives. Oh, and that's it for his win streak. It's not a win out. That's huge. That's huge. Why FTX can bleed. I wonder if that's a positioning thing. Like Pate Ball, for example, put the target dummy in front of the NAR. Riot emblem. Is that helpful? No, he thought about it. It's definitely like. Ooh. I think I'm Pukong too. Oh, with Heavenly, heavenly Spot? 
Oh my god. And Omni Vamp is so good for his team too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hundred percent. Oh wow. Yeah. Oh wow. Except I feel like the Heavenly Emblem should go on Silas. Wait. Yeah. It's higher, more the higher star level your unit is. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Um, okay. I just wanted to double check. <laughs> I didn't realize that until like a week into it when my chat was like, you know, like I got a three star heavenly uh, build a button. They're like, oh, yeah. And your heavenly bonus is like insane. Like, what are you guys talking about? And I didn't realize that your star level, uh, like until a week into PV actually improves your bonus. <clears throat> Reading is hard. Okay, NAR3 versus uh, Yone and Silas. And Kane. Oh, that cane burst. Is this spin actually hitting anything? Uh, I think it's just like an. I thought it was just like an enhanced auto. I need to recover oh, his ability oh, actually. Okay, okay. Execute. Oh, barely losing. Hotabe lost to the ghost of Malala. <clears throat> TFT player versus Rei. I know, I know. Here comes the encounter, the last of the game. Oh my gosh. Support uh, item. Aegis would be massive. Oh, Zeke's is interesting. Because of the posi but the positioning puzzle is like so Man, hard. Man, I'm getting more dogged again. YFTX got locket. Not only Blackbird and Willstorm, thanks so much, guys. Law's going 10. So he knows he probably won't die this round, so he's going to be able to go to 10. And YFTX is stuck on 9. <clears throat> I mean, Malala is definitely the person playing for first. Yeah. Uh, he, he's back to fumble. Also, he's already no re really strong. One thing to think about is whether or not Malala ends up giving up on full re umbral value. Because YFTX positioning hasn't changed whatsoever, and Malala... Uh, is the one who would have to move to force him to move. Assuming that uh, he, he doesn't win here. Mm -hmm. It's looking good, though, I think. Oh, and the Senna? Nice. Yeah. Uh, what went, what went win, better then? this fight? Was it the, was it the Locket? Was it the Wukong repositioning? Mm. Not quite sure, but like all of, the, all of Law's units ended up uh, actually killing the Nar this time. Okay. Well, well we can, we can watch back the fight between rounds uh, mm -hmm. if we want. <clears throat> Yone didn't eat the Lissandra ult. Oh, okay. Good catch. Good catch. There probably is a little bit of a variance within that. And also, even just adding more items for Wukong for, for survivability probably helps. Okay. We're going to 10. Hopefully, he finds set now. Assuming that's what he wants. Oh, Azir. He passes set entirely. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> on this board, it's like set doesn't like super super fit. You'd have to drop the Silas. <laughs> okay. Okay, this should be a last the game. He doesn't, um, he doesn't move the tank items onto the Silas instead of the Yorick. Yeah. Silas is not really that good of a tank but is he is he better than york probably oh wait who can move back one uh, -huh. uh wait Lissandra's dead wow nar's dead oh yeah, it's looking look good, good. oh that's right just a rerun of set 10 worlds Malala go to PB as well. Oh man, Seth Malala Goat, another Lord first Goats. place. Amazing, well done. And he probably didn't even know the the tech. He probably didn't even know the tech. Okay, let's go ahead and watch Kiyun's game. Let's see if spectate mode works. They said spectate should work on uh, tournament realm. <clears throat> Kiyun is uh, twenty out of twenty Timo. For anybody who's kind of tuning in a little bit late. This guy is the Michael Jordan of this game. <laughs> I like it. Malala Jordan. Spectating working. Uh-oh. 
Uh, it, it, and the game might be over, actually. 41 minutes. Okay, I don't think uh, it's working. I can try it again. But if it's 40 minutes into the game, the it might be over. Quite, the game's not quite open for what it, not Not over yet for what it's worth. Oh, you're watching on a stream? Yeah, he went 7th though, so uh, <laughs> we wouldn't be watching Kuhn. Okay, uh, looks like spectator mode isn't working. I'll try just one more game. Let's try Salvi. And just see how it works. Because they said that spectator mode should work. But if it's not working, then I just then we'll uh we'll just drop it. Okay, it does work. It does work. Looks like it's just random. It's press events lobby. Aren't Soju and Robin this tournament? Why aren't they streaming? Robin dropped. Oh. Uh okay. It looks like it looks like spectator work mode is not working, by the way. Robin dropped and Soju dropped as well. Okay, Pressman just finished. We'll get Dish Soap's game. Dish Soap just finished. Uh, I, I should never lose to the... Sloga Song. Sloga Song's finished. It looks like a lot of people are finished. Okay, Ging. Ging's game's still going on. Okay, he's playing Bard. Mythic Bard with Lilia. That's honestly pretty disrespectful. Is that an Orn 3? Uh, oh, it is an Orn 3. You're right. <laughs> I mean, he's playing Bard, but I think he's playing Orn carry. Oh, actually. you're right. He's playing Orn reroll. I forgot. And he just hit Bard 3. Okay. Surely he wins here. How is Duty at 55 at 7-1? Is it like... He has to have some kind of health buff, I think. Or the most godlike matchmaking of all time. I mean, it could be that the Orn 3 was relatively recent, especially yeah. if uh, Snooty, Snooty was like win streaking most of the game. Snooty's playing Dragon Lords, Volibear, Volibear 3. What does Orn 3 do? He makes multiple items. I think he like, how many is it? Is it six items or something like that? You see how everyone has like this blue box? Kind of like it's a super fan item. It's uh, or Orn three does that. Oh my God, Volo Bear, almost. So he's going for Duelist plus Dragon Lords. Interesting. He had Kyun in his lobby. Yeah, Kyun went seventh. The spectator mode thing does not work. I should actually let people know that in the co streamer thing. Uh, heads up, I don't think spectating works. Game via friends list works. Good job. Round one. Go. Either did you know that you can reforge paid item plus worn item and still keep reforger. <clears throat> I I dropped him a lot of the tech in case he didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> I said Just good job round one go. By the way, did you know you can reforge complete item plus orn and keep still keep reforger. <laughs> <laughs> he just said I didn't know what to do lol. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And, he, and Malala also says he didn't, he didn't know what Kane's ability did until just now. <laughs> All right, well, there you go. That's still a win. Hey, honestly, this Lolly Bear is looking surprisingly good. Yeah, yeah. I think people really underestimate uh, re-roll Volo Bear and Tristana because they got nerfed. But it is, I still think um, Volo Bear 3, Tristana 3 is still very good. I don't know if you're like trying to go out of your way to play like as many duelists as possible. In this case, he's only playing four, but um, still looking pretty good. And he also and Snooty also kind of innovated by playing Soraka three as well. It's not usually a unit you play with Volo Bear because uh, they're they're not easily easily bridged. I guess they can heavenly. It is heavenly with uh yeah with uh Kiana. It's interesting. So it's more just... like an AP duelist setup then, huh? Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Interesting. Yeah, I would have done it normally just because uh, I don't know if I believe that much in <gasps> Soraka, but on this board it looks it looked pretty good. <laughs> oh man, the new Ari skin. All right, good job by Ging. It's the first place. Well played to him. All right, let me open up scores. Wait. Okay, so this is the scores. All right, so in round one, uh, let's see. I don't know who Iguana PB6 is. That might be a substitute. All right, let me uh, zoom this out. Ahau, oh, Aha went first. Dion went second. Allen went third. Lelouch went fifth. And then you need uh iguana pb6 i don't know who that is and then ry ry went eighth and lobby two flancy one oh wow china went one one and in, in, oh my gosh uh second was balotelli from italy third was I, iguana pb3 i don't know who that is fifth or third what fourth was sean's fifth was Sologa song sixth was caesar seventh was dale song eighth was toady and Co-Stream 3, first was Dasic, second was Lake Coco, third was Dish Soap, fourth was 62nd, then Safo, Kiki, Tampop, and Miguel. And four we just watched, Malala won, and then uh, YFTX got second, so CN's doing very well so far. Lobby 5 is Ging, who we just watched with Snooty, um, Relic and ice and then lobby six was kudz oh dude rico uh t3by tb and precedent top four dude i think china that only had one bot four <coughs> holy in the oh no no two 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 juan may went fifth but ry mm -hmm. and juan may i think are the only cn players that didn't bot that didn't uh top four they won three of them too. Dude, Cien is uh Cien's doing really well so far. That is scary. Honestly, maybe it's just like a Cien without stats thing. Cause like I'm pretty sure like a lot of enemy players agree that like a lot of enemy players really rely on stats to like tell them what's good. Um and what to what to play, what to build. I'm like Cien's been doing more of that, but uh they're always like they were always really good without the use of stats. And PB doesn't have too many of those. That is true. Um, round two, we're going to lobby number five. So round two, we're going to lobby five. Each round is a different lobby. They preset them. And we voted on this yesterday. Lobby five, uh, we have Tanpop, Cheche, Juanmi, Magarki, Skip. This was supposed to be Soju, but it's replaced. And then Palatelli and Kevin Parker. Um, I think I will join Juan May. Yeah, Juan May, I think. So did you got replaced? Yeah, he actually, um, he quit. He, he decided to back out of the tournament uh, a few hours ago. I will read the message that he sent. He said, Hello, I've been like super busy, so I haven't been able to play PBE. Can another top player, Spencer, take my spot? Spencer did get the spot, by the way. I won't be competitive for this tournament since I haven't been able to practice. I feel terrible since Setsuko, Kiyun, Preston, and Disto. It's funny they put Kiyun there. And all of them have been practicing hard, and I see a bunch of top players from every region got invited. I haven't been streaming recently since I've been busy, and I would just disappoint my viewers and NA. That's what, uh, that's what Soju said. Saj. Wait, is Setsuko not playing either? Did he drop as well? Someone early in chat said like Setsuko didn't wake up or something. Oh my not god. Sure Bo both Setsuko and Soju dropped. But Setsuko was playing like a lot of, he was playing a lot of PB. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, Setsuko like doesn't usually play PB at all. Like last set, for example, he was... I think it was like Hearts oh, of the Emerald for like, like 70 games or something. This is not a good look for North America. They're even on East Coast time too. Mm -hmm. So it's like 11 a.m. for them. Rain and I woke up at 7 a.m. for this. Just saying. 
<clears throat> we have Malala. Yeah, that's true. That's true. We got Malala. Setsuko was first to masses in Challenger last day. Yeah, yeah. No, we're, we're not. I'm, no, no one's doubting Setsuko's ability. It's just more like sad that mm -hmm. they didn't show up. It's like disappointing because like, I don't know if you guys know, but there's a lot of effort that went into this tournament. It's not just like some streamer inviting a bunch of people. It's like a whole last production. Like they got Riot to give us these tournament realm accounts. And then they got like all these different translators. And they have a bunch of different co-streamers from different languages all running and they have admins managing all of them like we have one two three four five six seven admins running it on top of this and it's just like it's, it's like this whole ass like effort thing if you're like looking at like how everything is running right it's like all, all this as well so it's like it, a lot of efforts being put into this and it's just like kind of a bad look it's just like well you know i just i just don't feel like playing it's like oh man i don't know yeah the tournament actually like <clears throat> grew to be way bigger than i expected it to be from like the twitter announcement like i saw the twitter announcement and i was like oh it's like a 1500 dollars attorney yeah but that's pretty cool it's and they're writing yeah. global players 100 percent. there's like so many notable, notable names that showed up yeah uh, why did Robin drop out? Robin dropped out a few days ago, at least. He he said that he uh, had a, com a schedule conflict. He want uh, because Robin's actually the reigning champion of this. He played in the last set, so I think Robin wanted to play, but I think he accidentally double booked or something like that, which is understandable if that ends up being the case. I think he's doing like a DJ stream tomorrow or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he had to plan his birthday stream or something. Can we pause the game here? That is a bad, a bit of a bad luck. I, it, it is, it is. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, but kind of like what Rain said, I think not. Not a lot of people knew how big of a deal or how much effort is being put into this. Um. So yeah. <laughs> uh, they probably thought it was like some kind of like random small cup. <clears throat> I feel like I see streamers do that m more than most people. Sorry, I slept through my alarm clock and didn't go or last track. I mean, a lot of streamers like go through. Basically, streamers are simultaneously like oh, like they they work too hard and they also are super lazy. It's kind of a weird mix because like with a lot of people's motivation to stream is that they don't want to like go out and do other traditional lines of work. So they'll sit inside and stream and play games for like 30 hours straight, which is actually a lot of work as well. It's like physically intensive. I know it sounds like stupid to say, but like sitting down and playing TFT for 30 hours straight is like really hard. I don't, I don't know if you guys ever tried. <laughs> uh, so that's like hard work in itself. But as a result, they're like really incapable of being disciplined. And uh, there's a lot of like they have a lot of lazy tendencies. Yeah. <clears throat> Oh, Rain brought up that Sissiko typically doesn't grind PB and started a recent set slowly. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that was true up until set 10. You don't, you guys don't remember, <laughs> but in Box Box Bootcamp set 9 and set 8, Sissiko got eliminated like like the day after me. And that's not... that's <laughs> now, you're, you're talking about bad looks? That's actually a really bad look. <laughs> it was like I got eliminated at GM and he got eliminated like the day after. It was not a, it was not a, it was not a good look, but, but in set 10, he crushed it. It was, it was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I will say that's like he he didn't prep he also didn't prep PB. Like this yeah, I was like yeah. really surprised because he actually was playing like uh he was actually playing in PB lobbies. Yeah. Uh but like even that said, that's like he like got really, really good at the patch like pretty quickly. Oh. But he did also he 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 actually spent his like first sixty games like literally hard stuck in Emerald with like four point six or four point seven average or something like that. But I, I mean, 60 games is nothing if you grind out like 300 games in your first two weeks. Yeah, are they remaking the lobby? I think they might be remaking the lobby. Hold on. Leave. Uh. Wait, I got invited by Canbiz. Casey Canbiz. What? 
Okay, I'm just gonna reconnect real quick and then look at what's going on. Kevin Parker streaming. Oh no, they they are paused. They are paused. Okay. Kevin, what are we paused for? Don't tell me. We didn't get the go and no ready check. Lobby owner just started for fun. Oh, okay. Well, apparently, uh, the, whoever's a lobby owner just started, I guess, when they weren't allowed to. So, yeah. <clears throat> oh. <clears throat> yeah, totally. Uh, never done that before in tournaments. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, so Rain, how do you like? Now that we have a little bit of a, a breather, how do you, how are you liking set eleven? Are you are you fe are you vibing with it? And how do you like it compared to set ten? Mm. Huh. I okay. <clears throat> so like, not even as a competitive player, I love the theming for set eleven a lot more. Set ten, like. I, I didn't like some of those. Some of the, like, Heart Seal never, the like, units never looked good even up till the end to me. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Um, but I love the theming a lot more. Uh, I like the meta a lot more in the earlier days of PvE. Like, I love playing around, like, Fast 9. I love playing around, like, uh, Super Legendary Flex. And it is still, like, really strong, but I don't know. I mean, I said that at the end of set 10 as well. I don't like Reroll. So I think I have more of a problem with the current meta than I do, uh, the set in general. So when you, when but, you say um, as a whole, I, as a whole, I think I actually like it. Got it. Okay. When I, when I was saying, um, uh, like when, you, when you say reroll metas, how like reroll should exist, right? But when you're saying like, mm -hmm. what what's the what's the line for you when you're like, this is too much reroll, like I, I don't like. It. Oh, I mean, I think I think it's a uh, too much for me when I, I load it in on two one and like my first instinct is, what can I what can I reroll for? Like, like I want my my I want my first instinct to be like, oh I'm like I'm just looking to play a comp, you know, like I'll play like a four cost comp or I'll flex something, and then like if I happen to see I don't know three three Yones, I'll be like, oh I mean I can play Yone reroll from here. That's pretty good. Got it. And I mean those are the metas that I really enjoy. But like when I load on a two one, I see and I'm like okay, like I can play Yone reroll here or Tristana reroll here, or you know, Teemo reroll here. Um, those metas I don't really enjoy. Okay understood because yeah, it feels like you don't have that many options mm -hmm. i mean the meta might not actually be very real heavy um i do think that like ash is really strong lily is not bad and fast nine is still good so i guess we'll see through, throughout the tournament because um i mean i'm sure everyone has their own meta reads but uh a lot of people's meta reads are different so i mean someone has to be wrong that is true Okay, I got the Exalted in. I got the portal in. Spatula portal. Uh, and it's Cho'Gath, Zyra, Yone, Annie, Ash. When Yone is like an Exalted, I anticipate some people will try to see if they can play around that. Uh, and then I guess do the, the squeezing Exalted is going to be kind of tricky though. It depends on it depends on how people view Exalted. Some people think like you try to play it all the time, and some people say like you can squeeze it in if you if it makes sense, but you're not going to go out of your way to do it. I don't know if you sit on a particular side right now with where Exalted is. Uh, I think it's, I think it's like actually slightly weaker than two jazzes on like set ten boards, because like the two jazz gave um the decent amount of damage damp as well as like help some health routine, but like it really depends like how far you have to go out of your way. I think if you can like fit your comp in with like plus one extra unit <laughs> like so what plus one <clears throat> so awful unit uh then you should like usually look to play exalted but like if you're really going out of the way like you're like making multiple unit substitutions for like lower quality units i think got some uh, there's it sort of reaches that break point where it's just more worth to play like better units okay interesting over encumbered pick for juan may uh sharing is caring do you like this uh augment they buffed it to two oh, gold now i think it's really really strong for a silver two gold per round is pretty nuts yeah like trade sector is two gold per round that you can't make interest off of 
<clears throat> and yeah, like giving one gold to your opponents, like I'd rather my opponents get zero gold, but if you really think about it, <clears throat> like you, you only ever give it to one one person at a time. So it's more like you're giving like a seventh of a gold yeah. around two. Yeah, two yeah exactly. Would you still play this if you said your opponent gets two gold? I think I would, yeah. <clears throat> I think I would. What about three gold? I think it would have to be something like... Oh. What about four gold? <laughs> four, gold I, uh, four, four gold, I'm not sure. Four gold, I'm not okay, sure. Okay, okay. Three gold, I think I would. I'm just trying to see where the line is for you. <laughs> but, but I think the Aquaman is really strong right now. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. <laughs> Upgrade your next two. Oh, stars are born. The stars are born one. Ten gold is a lot of gold. Ten gold is a lot of gold. Ten gold is a lot of gold. But two star two cost is a lot of tempo as well. Because if you think mm -hmm. about it from a reroll perspective, like if you're if you're queued and you're rerolling Teemo. Oh, I think Kevin Parker took his next two just, cost. You just insta lock the two cost if you're playing any two cost reroll. I mean, you could buy Teemo if he wants to. Story Weaver Emblem for Skip AS. It definitely gets like a little more awkward to play Teemo with this spot. Um, Teemo doesn't really have too many amazing traits to like the flex into because Fortune's Fortune's a good trait. It's just not a good trait to like play when you're trying to like win rounds. Yes, yes. Interesting. Uh, so so we went five Story Weaver here. Kevin Parker, I think, based off the clues took oh wait he actually took 10 gold never mind wait how's he so broke compared to everybody else then that's so interesting uh he leveled to five on two two so yeah 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 really but some people have like 30 gold i guess maybe i was looking at people who have uh econ augments actually yeah some people are really rich yeah and kevin's like five gold. <laughs> yeah all right i guess like part of it's like a really upgraded board atrox two is six gold um holding a whole bench I'm trying to see if uh, this encounter lets me see if anybody chose. Yes. So uh, it looks like this is Canvas. This is what Soju. This is the person that sub for Soju. Soju's supposed to play in this lobby, I think. Do you have any spatula tech, Rain? That you, I guess, don't mind sharing. <laughs> uh, I don't even know what half the spatulas are, honestly. All right, oh, all right, I mean, good, porcelain. Enough, oh, porcelain Udyr. No, 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 no. That, that's not really true. Uh, I think porcelain Udyr is like really, really strong. Porcelain Udyr. Okay. Uh -huh. I, I have another porcelain unit that I think is really good, or rather, a porcelain holder. I think Silas is really good with it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I'd agree with that. It's just like any, any like. Uh, frontline melee carries that actually can use the AS and the damage damage reduction are really, really good with porcelain. porcelain. Uh, in this case, like I think Udyr is like pretty easy to fit on the board. Silas is uh obviously very good at level eights, but I think at level nine you try to like pivot out of bruisers at some points. I agree. Uh, porcelain set, yeah, I can see that as well. Oh, the game for 14 hours ago. I think it was uh, who would place higher me or Dissoap, and uh, I think I think it was I think it was Dissoap. I can't remember. I can't remember. <laughs> it was so close, you know. I was uh, I was so competitive in those lobbies, but I think it was Dissoap. <clears throat> Man, we're still not using this. Interesting. Like he's also streaking, so it feels like you kind of want to actually buy like a two star two cost. I mean, I will say from this spot, it'd be, it'd be a freaking, it'd be a Nar two. That's not bad. Nar reroll with Dryad Emblem. Yeah, I mean Dryad Emblem is pretty good. I think, I, think here. I, I think Dryad Emblem kind of is one of those things where like either you are willing to play it and you think it's good, or you kind of think it's trash. I don't see, I don't see anybody who like sits in the middle of it. They're like, ah, eh, it's okay. People are just like, yeah, like six dryad is very good. If you can get six dryad, you reroll, you hit all the stuff, is in a really good spot. Other people would just be like, nah, I'm not touching that. They'd rather just keep open spat. He's waiting for Teemo. It could be. Could be. 
But I am curious because he had a streak to protect, which is why I felt like using it might be advised. And now he has no two mm -hmm. costs. Okay. I mean, it really depends, right? Like if you if you look at your matchups and you're like, okay, I could I could buy a an R2 here, but I still lose it against them, then Right. Yeah, waiting for team. Probably not that incentivized to, to uh, buy a two cost. Man, no one's really slamming spats outside the. Okay, we finally got one. Oh no, it's branching out. Oh, and he used a reforger. Oh, oh double faded. Wow. Okay. Faded emblem is another one of the emblems that I think are like pretty strong. Like the bonuses you can get from seven faded are insane. Yeah, three hundred percent for the faded. Mm -hmm. I need to click on a faded unit to give uh, the view, but. It's no joke. Okay, I mean, yeah. this, this, he like, loses think... here. We don't need to watch this. Okay, so Faded. They buffed set 5 and 7 Faded to give 203% of the Faded bonus. So, for example, if you have, like, Ari, you get 90 AP, which is, like... <laughs> That's, that, yeah, that's not a crazy. trivial amount of AP at all. That's that's a lot. That's like that's that's more than the prismatic go combat augments worth of AP. That's more than six arcanists, right? And that's kind of the AP trade. And that's just half mm -hmm. of the trade that you get for the faded because you get you get to pair another faded unit. Yeah, you get to link the other thing. I mean, the the one thing to watch out for like is like when you link to like Ari, <clears throat> not all of your faded units necessarily like want the AP. Like a fellow certainly doesn't. Yeah. So, so I think it is balanced by the fact that like, um, the generic faded bonuses like Syndra, uh, are actually a little bit weaker than the specific faded bonuses like Ari's AP. Yes, but thirty percent bonus damage is also really good, as well. As well, I think. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I don't disagree. I just think that thirty percent bonus damage is pretty lackluster compared to uh ninety AP. AP. Yeah, yeah. Given ninety percent multiplier versus a thirty percent multiplier, I mean, you, you can do the math. Hmm. Uh, you need a you need 300 AP for, for yeah. 200. You need yeah you need like you need 300 AP for the, uh, for the, bonus the damage to be, to be better. Equal. Yeah. Or is, is it okay? Got it. Um. By the way, McGarkey rolled a five on his fortune. For those of you who don't know Ooh. how fortune works, uh, you roll a die and then in that many turns you get the option to cash out or raise the stakes. They call it push your luck. And he rolled a five, which is perfect because I think 10 loss is like that sweet money spot uh, where you get the turn transition at three, seven, and you get to like go for like a 75 cash out, which can be pretty powerful. They also commit to the double faded emblem. So they're definitely looking to play probably Syndra. Yeah. Like maybe Ash with a fel with a failures. Okay. You, I mean, the problem, the only thing about that is sometimes you kind of struggle with having like all the items for that because you, if you, if you prioritize like Ash and Syndra, then you also like don't have frontline items. Unless I guess, I guess we have two encounters this stage. Well, that can change a lot. And we have well, Fortune. We also have Fortune. Yeah. Yeah. True. There's a surprising amount of Fortune cash outs that are like very econ driven though. So, yeah. A yeah. lot of them give you like five costs if I've read the tables correctly. Oh, someone picked RE3. Jewel Lotus 3, Ash, or Ari 3 with Fade. Okay, so we have Ari reroll. Interesting. Does double fade emblem give double emblem bows? No, no, it should just be a single instance of it. Man, I'm getting more dogged again. I need all the tech I haven't touched slash watched any of set 11 yet. Web is incredible. Well, this is uh, the tournament to do it. Right now, China has shown a little bit of extra tech that we haven't seen yet. One of them was Nar, Nar, Nar Ink Shadow reroll. We're seeing Ari reroll. This is actually another comp that I think people were talking about, but I haven't actually seen. People said Ari 3 and Yasuo 3 I got to play it good. once. I think it has some problems with the comp specifically, because like, you have a you really struggle to fit your units in, until you find a Syndra. Until you find a Syndra? Like as a, yeah, because right. <clears throat> Syndra's just like too important for the comp. Uh when you're playing around Ari. She, I don't she's, know, maybe you can high roll an early Syndra and it's fine though. So so what what ends up happening? Is it like you don't hit the faded breakpoint, you don't hit the Arcanist breakpoint? Or is it both? Mm -hmm. Uh 
it's both slash whatever like you know you don't put in um if like we, we don't have the syndrome it just feels like you're playing down a fawn the entire game because you're missing a unit that's arcanist and faded got it the buried treasures lucky gloves kevin parker took stationary support and got zeke's skipeus cybernetic bulk three and then uh new recruits looks like it's most likely ash for balotelli so it looks like a, a good amount of faded players this lobby and then uh some people might contest ash as well on top of that <clears throat> How good is seven story weaver? If you just slam the story weaver emblem and just pick up all the story weavers, it's like it does really well in some of the in houses. So I, I, I don't know how legit it is from the games that you've played or seen. Uh, I think it's like really tempo based. Um, if you actually manage the tempo with it, uh, then you can generally get yourself in a good spot but like i i think it's like definitely the opposite of like a win out comp okay so man i'm getting I more dogged again i think it's i think it's like pretty spot dependent if you can actually um play it from a spot where you have a lot of tempo then it's quite good but if you play it if you're trying to like hit seven story where it instantly went out i think that works a lot less well Remo demo thank you yeah i agree it reminds me it's actually very similar to like uh cultists from set four if you remember we just kind of like you just play it you curve out you take your top four if you played the tempo spot correctly uh and for the most part wait Iguan janna reroll oh interesting i was not Ooh. expecting a janna reroll it's definitely one of the lines that like haven't talked about i think um I I'm not sure I expected with a story for spats. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, for well. spatula start cuz uh in these spatula starts you expect higher power level and I like Janna usually feels like to me the only time I've seen it uh do well is when she gets a dragon lord related augment like enter the dragon which is um mm -hmm. it buffs all your dragon lord damage. But hey, I've also seen it do really right well now. with that too healthy oh yeah yeah too healthy too healthy story weavers you played Janna, riven uh all that zyra mm -hmm. probably play nico as well okay mcgarkey has to lose one more here comes the encounter lowey grants you eight free rerolls this turn oh my gosh Let's see what uh these top players do kevin parker is going to level now and roll kevin might go for like the zoe soraka comp which i think is uh really solid but he is he does have 80 items slammed mm, never mind mm -hmm. i mean <clears throat> wait, skip maybe you could like reforge those or something he has a mini Nico as well, so I mean, he basically has like four Zoe's, four Sorakas already. Yeah, yeah. Everyone got a lot stronger all of a sudden. Whoa! I just I just looked over and Tampop rolled to zero on eight. Wow. Dang. And it looks like they still have more rolls. Yeah, one more roll. Work with. Um, I mean, it definitely like kind of screws with the econ but it's not that bad because especially because uh they're on an eight streak winning here is yeah i mean three econ per turn and they have sharing is carrying so like they can rebound really really, really really want to do the uh tft map here he's actually making 50. yes all three right let's look at this from sharing is carrying fortune cash out 75. Oh, okay i think 75 is one of the big points right uh yeah yeah oh uh, wait Oh, he sold that. That was, that was a sold faded emblem. I thought he crashed out of faded emblem. <clears throat> okay, so we got five costs. Is it this five? Mm -hmm. Is it the five cost plus the items? Oh, three ZZ rods. Uh. Well, <laughs> we're not gonna have a frontline issue this game. Yeah. Okay. Hey, wait, wait, wait. He has cybernetic uplink. Oh. 
cybernetic uplink and three ZZ rods. <laughs> so how does ZZ rods look at uplink? Okay, a Hui pair. You can print himself a Hui too in like uh, five turns. In fact, you can get like almost any any of the legendaries he wants in five turns. <laughs> Uh, this is a board. What? <laughs> this is so many ZZ rods. Wait, he needs to pair. He needs to pair. He needs to pair. Oh, he did not pair oh. his faded. You see all these uh these little lotuses? If he needs to drag and hover over, I think it's random now. Okay, well. It's a. Uh, it's technically the two strong. The two strongest, but like strongest oh, is like. It? Okay. Yeah, but but like strongest is like. That doesn't literally mean the strongest unit on your board. It's a specific term. Like it's like a. If anyone remembers from the like set eight hero augments, uh, it's whichever unit has the most items. Uh, then I think if there's a tie, it's whichever unit was put onto the board last. It's like Demacia, right? Your strongest Demacian. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Demacia. Okay. All right, here comes the four two augment. I, was, I I'm, we're gonna stay on Magarki here to see how he handles this crazy fortune. Another faded crown. Wait, he actually can go for ten faded. Oh, oh my god. god. And they hit a set in shop as well. Okay, okay, so he hit the sets. <laughs> He's benching the ZZ Rots. They have the most HP on the board. That's too funny. Wait a second. That's actually perfect. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, <laughs> uh, set, for people who don't know, scales his AD. Look at his passive. At the start of combat, squat adjacent units in the same row, permanently gain. AD for each 1,000 HP squad is. So these are at a perfect 2k HP total. And so it gives him a uh, 4 8 or yeah, it gives him 4 AD. 8 faded. <clears throat> faded, if you will. But, but like with an 8 said. F aided. The only problem is that to get to, to get to 10 faded, you have to be level 10. Which like, I mean, his ward's pretty strong, but right. he's also a long way off of level 10. He is. This is sort of like one of those things where now you kind of wish you got the tactician's crown. Although the three ZZ rods is hilarious. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie. It's pretty funny. Uh, eight bards, eight toads for Juan May. He took prismatic ticket, so he is. Oh, he also has Juan May. Or he also has a uh, Huey painting. Two turns off from guaranteed Tom Kench three. Oh, you know, this isn't like super secret tech, but you know what I've been doing with Huey? Uh, if I heard an early Huey, like sometime in stage four, like sometimes I've been printing one cost with it. Because like, even if you had zero copies of a one cost, it takes you nine turns to print, like print one. But like when I have like five Cossacks or something, you can print yourself a free Cossacks three in, uh, in four rounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not to mention it actually converts into gold as well if you need. So like you could always just mm -hmm. sell it for gold as opposed to Huey, which is like, it's kind of banking the turns if you can. Cause you could, you could like put Tom Kench here for two turns and then put another three cost in. And like, let's say he hits Tom Kench three, you could put another three cost in and then have that duplicate the next turn. It's not going to like only work for Tom Kench. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot of like small little nifty tricks you could do with Huey, which is really, really cool. Also, by the way, how insane is this bard item setup? He has radiant rage blade and he has the tattoo of bombardment, which just sounds like a lot of attacks because uh every third attack fires bolts based on the ad and he's got a pretty high ad so like it, 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 is tattoo of bombardment bard's best uh what, part of his like this like would you like be like man this tattoo i should play bard that sounds like it okay i wasn't oh, even I trying know. to make the pun bun bombardment <laughs> but it actually is a perfect fit it's in the name uh... I mean, I don't personally know. Uh, is his AD super high? I mean, it might be, but like, I think I think his damage is like it's only like sixty percent physical. Like forty percent of it is magic damage. So I'm not sure. It sounds pretty good though with a rage blade and a lot of attacks coming out. Uh, the spectator mode is, but okay, it looks like it's only twenty. Wait, no, that's Irelia's damage. No, oh, I mean, okay. it's like 80% AD here, but I think like, I mean, at least a part, big part of that is because uh, they have a tattoo of bombardment on the bard. Yeah. 
that makes sense to me this is our jana 3 player got to level 8 pretty successfully i want to see more of this uh this bard oh he's going jg instead oh, okay put it back on oh man it's i mean it's, it's looking pretty really good damage What the hell? This is actually so this is actually so much damage. Crazy. Okay, I think I think Tattoo of Bombardment is pretty good. At least on this setup. Maybe it's enabled because of the Radiant Rage Blade. Because Radiant Rage Blade is like true bis uh uh bard. Oh man. Even okay, Shroud Edge of Night. Uh, duplicator for this Irelia, can, if you want it. Uh, we hit Galio too. A lot of this story weaver tempo is still staying pretty strong. Regarki trying to end on the five streak. pretty big fight if you can get it Syndra Syndra is also a really big element of his damage I think adaptive is a, an item that people don't really think about on Syndra but apparently it's breakpoints um work really well on a bunch of AP carries so it's kind of like uh like people say like oh if you don't have blue buff you can just take Shojin on Syndra adaptive is also another alternative as well <clears throat> honestly a lot of AP carries I think that uh adaptive is better than Shojin yeah because the AP they also gives you right Mm -hmm. So yeah, it also like it also like adaptive works even when you're stunned when you're not casting or whatever, and because it like gives you man mana in intervals of ten instead of intervals of five, like it's not impossible, but it's like it's a lot harder to like waste the extra mana from it. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. I, I was trying to think about the cybernetic breakpoints as well. You get an extra three point five per second, so that probably makes up for it. So it feels like you're spam casting. Also, we are teching out of the Ink Shadow, so he looks like he played a Tattoo and Bombardment temporarily, so maybe it's not as insane, and he's he might go for a, another item here instead on Bard. I mean, typically I put a Hodge on it. I think having a little bit of healing is good for your backline carries. And also, Bard uses uh, both the stats pretty well, so... Yes. Titans on Bard? What do you think? Probably not, probably not. Oh, you know, I thought about that. I actually thought about that. I'm pretty sure it's it's not that bad. Like you can replace the GS with the Titans. Okay. And, okay. Uh, you have like a really tanky bard. Like if you have healing, if you have healing, I think it's not that bad. Okay. <laughs> I, don't, okay. I don't know if it's very good. <laughs> healing, but, like, um, if if anyone remembers like the Bastion of Felios comp, um, like these like these like spam spam auto attackers who also have like decent AP scalings, uh, they can generally hold Titans like mm -hmm. at least decently. Yeah. I'm not gonna say like it's BIS, but like. I don't know if this is like secret secret tech, but uh, I think it's like it's a decent substitute for a damage item that also makes your bard pretty tanky. Yeah, yeah. And it's also like uh, you guys saw what Dish Soap was tweeting as well, right? There's a lot of like splash AOE in the set that just like kind of whittles things down. So having a little bit of tankiness for the back line is sometimes pretty clutch. Not that it's like a, the biggest priority, but if you already have a lot of boxes checked off, which uh, Juan Mei does, right? He has like a lot of damage. He's got a lot of attack speed. You can uh, you can definitely squeeze in like a tight or something like that sometimes. Wait a second, McGarkey's level nine forty. Does he have all the faded units? He has a Philios two, Kindred two. Yeah, he has ten. Oh man, mm -hmm. everyone has about two I'm rounds just... before McGarkey gets uh, insanely strong. Okay, quiz time. Rain plosion. What does ten faded do? Uh oh. Uh, off the top, I'm just gonna guess. All you, all units get faded bonus. Wait, all units get all the faded bonus. I'm just gonna guess this. Like, I don't think it's it's probably not true, but like all units get all faded bonuses. Okay. All faded know, champions gain 300% of every faded. Oh, bo oh right. not bad, not bad. It's pretty good. Pretty I got good, the number right? wrong. Pretty good. But uh. <clears throat> 
I got the number wrong, but I got the effect right. Yeah, but I mean, it's that's really good, right? So you get 300 times, you get 30% bonus damage. You get 9% health every three seconds. You get 45 Omni Vamp. You get 75 armor. It just, it just keeps tiling up. You just, you just get an insane amount. Yeah. <clears throat> If you miss him, use all the stuff, then it's like, what, it's like four times stronger than Seven Faded. Right. And so for everybody else, like, he's getting these wins with Seven Faded already with the uh, strong board. But everybody else, it's their HP total is going to be almost like where they finish, depending on who McGarkey queues into. Oh, man. Another story weaver emblem. Does someone have how many story weaver emblems do you need? Three or two? Hit ten. I think you also need three. I think this is one that you only need two. I think it might be mythic. It looks like I'm you need three sure. based off of this. Okay. I could be wrong here, but I think mythic is the one like ten trait you can hit with with only with two, two spots. Yeah, I do think uh, Mythic's a little bit on the underwhelming side as well. Like in terms of like, I've seen 10 Mythic lose before. But yeah, I think you are correct. He does have two Mythic Emblems. But he has oh. to go back and retroactively hit Kog'Maw and that's going to be really, really hard. But Garki has hit 10 and here we go. 10 faded. Oh my God. Tampop hit Lissandra too. That's kind of crazy. Dude. Feels bad for whoever he queues up into right now. And it is Skipeus. Skipeus is going to die. Right? There's no way. I guess the question will be, can Skipeus actually kill any units? It's kind of hard, isn't it? Because you have to get through the ZZ, ZZ Rots first. He killed one ZZ Rot. That's all he did. <laughs> <laughs> he killed one voice oh, spawn no. and then that's all he did. Uh, oh man. All right. Well, uh, that's not a very good sign for everybody else in this lobby. Ooh, seven. An encounter. Okay, you get salvage bin. So whenever you sell a unit, you get to, you get to salvage bin it up. I wonder if that does anything for anybody. Set two. I mean, one of the most common, like, I want to say, like, uses for uh, salvage bin is like wrapping emblems or vons. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You could like sell the story for emblem if you don't need it. Combine it with another spatula, make a tactician's crown, or make another. Um, yeah, or or like re rearrange them as you want. Whoa! Hit. Kaisa hit. He hit Kaisa three out of nowhere. We looked away for half a second. This guy all of a sudden has Kaisa 3. Mythic Kaisa 3. With no items. Titans. Oh, I <laughs> mean, we talked about Titans being maybe a damage item sometimes. We've got another Kaisa. Wow. Wait a second. He just he just did, he did the prismatic uh, ticket thing, which is like uh, out of nowhere. You just kind of have a big burst of gold and then you just like roll down and you, you roll for a three-star four cost. This is like the old, this is like one of the first uses of Prismatic Ticket back in like, what is it, set seven, set six? This lobby is insane. It is worth noting, we talked about how Story Weaver just bleeds out to a really good top four. I think the two people who slammed Story Weaver emblem, look what happened. They just, they basically got into a pretty good top four. I mean, not bad in a lobby where there's uh kaisa three and ten yeah faded. Ten faded. <laughs> i'm happy with the top four <laughs> what's going on here why are there oh okay 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 it's a visual bug i thought there were six voice spots <laughs> all right okay uh i don't think i don't think uh i don't think kaisa three can beat ten faded though Deathblade. Yeah. Do you need the flat stats? You get 80 I and mean, AP already. 
I mean, you don't really want the, uh, the adaptive Kaiso, so I mean, I guess it's better than nothing. And also, I think that blade has some uh, damage amp as well, so that is it's true. not completely wasted. Wait a second. Is this a Riot game special? We're gonna have two people dead, or uh, two people alive, and two people are streaking? Wanme versus Candice. Oh, okay, it's not, it's not, it's not. <clears throat> Good top four from Kevin. Okay, this is this is Clash of the Titans episode one. Uh, Margarki is going for Sin. <gasps> Wait a what second. He has Huey and the Syndra, and he has double Syndra right here. What the heck? How many, how many turns on it? Is the is the is looks the like it's artist? zero. Yeah. Okay. I mean, Wait, four orbs. That should mean that it's, it's like now. I don't know, actually. Also, it doesn't matter. Kaisa 3 just died so quick. I'm down to sack one for the <laughs> really Syndra 3. Sack one? Okay. He can't die. There's no way he dies. Yeah, five orbs. Oh, he oh, has it! The sack. Woo! Oh Man, my god. I'm going again. Oh, I understand. I understand. The four orbs was because he was putting a legendary on it before. So it was the fourth orb. So it couldn't immediately count the Syndra. So we needed one more turn. And that fifth orb was the excess tick from the previous round. So he actually had it. Oh my God. 10 faded plus Syndra three. Magarki's farming YouTubers. In tourney. Yeah, in tournament against Juan May, the CN goat. Second row, Kaisa. Oh, he wants to backline assassinates. I mean, not even close. And a kiss goodbye. <laughs> she says it's going to be our little secret, though. She says to do shh. I kissed you outside the beach, but don't tell anybody. <clears throat> All right. Well played. Let's go ahead and look at... Uh, other people's POV precedent. Precedent. Wow, they look like they started really late. So we'll have uh we'll have let me see I can reshare my screen so I can sync with you, Rain. So we can't spectate the other lobbies because spectate via friends is bugged. But we have precedent's lobby right here. They have to remake? Oh, that sucks. Ari bestows a combat blessing for the rest of the game. It looks like President's playing Yone reroll. He says, we're not playing. No, Satsuko and Soju dropped out. Honestly, the, the RE one is the one that I think is actually the most interesting. Uh, Cause like, I'm never actually sure how much, or like, it's really hard to just mentally do the calculations on the fly to figure out like, how much is, is it exactly 1880 worth for my team or 150 HP? Cause like, most of the units on Preston's board don't even use the AD very well. Yeah, that is true. And like, also but, uh, a loon is like a really, big factor of this comp as well. I think people like, like, you know, of course, of course, talk about how strong Yone is, but I think mm -hmm. Alun is also a really secret MVP of the comp too. Were they scared of Malala? I think, uh, I think, well, Soju didn't want to play because he didn't feel like he was in good form. I don't know why Setsuko didn't sh uh, show up. He played a lot. It would surprise me if Setsuko wanted to and he just overslept or something like that. Hey, look, by the way, Kudza is playing Nar, uh, Aatrox, and Senna. That, this looks like a real, a real comp for CN. And he's 70 HP. All right, I'll just say Honestly, it. Looks like China's going to win this surprised. tournament. Sorry, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty good. I, mean, I was a little surprised. Like, I thought that might just be like a one-time thing, uh, especially since they were holding the Kindreds like, b before they rolled down for yeah. that comp. But it looks like it's... It's just the comp that they really believe in. Yeah, yeah, and it's getting it's it's, it's getting really good results so far. 
This is one comp that was not on our, any of our radars. CN Tech. Yeah, also Soju doesn't really stream PB, you guys. He he's a uh, he's unfortunately addicted to the LP. So he doesn't really want to play unless there's LP on the line. Is we gonna go eighth? Oh, one HP. I'm just going Soju and stuff. Like, I mean I do it too. But uh I think it's important, like, if you spend uh like you see you spend your entire life grinding like TFT that you just like take a break from the game every once in a while. Yeah, yeah. The mistake that I think they made is that they should have just said no beforehand, I think. Like, they shouldn't wait till three hours before the tournament to drop out. <laughs> yeah. If you're, like, not feeling it, even if it's, like, two... Like, Robin dropped out two two or three days ago. So, like, yeah, at least you give him a heads up. It sucks, but, like, it is what it is. But, like, dropping out, like, three hours beforehand is, like, kind of kind of rough. That's the part I, I don't like. Mm -hmm. But I think the thing is, I think Soju wanted to play in it because he saw a lot of other top players competing. And so he was trying to like play and get into form. But yesterday, like his his confidence was really low. And so I think he like, he tried to play all day yesterday. It was like, man, I'm just going to go dead last. And just, so then he backed out. But like, yeah, that, that, that timing is not very ideal. Okay, Gunblade for a Loon is really good. It's one of her best items because of the way the Execute works for healing. So uh, Precedent. Oh, he's going to go on Kane too. That's interesting. I think I think the blade's like a lot better on a loon, especially because you might hit a loon three, assuming you survive this round. I guess maybe he thinks it's just better now and he's playing for placements. Yeah. I mean, he's definitely playing for placements. His his spot's not very good. Yeah. What is it about the Yone that's not working out here, you think? Like obviously we didn't we um, only tuned in halfway, but it looked fine and he lost three. We just watched him lost lose three fights and then almost go eighth. If I had to guess, it doesn't really have enough damage and or like I, I don't really like stacking Hodge and ET at the same time. Um, Because Yoni is like, he's actually like pretty tanky by himself. He gives himself a shield. Um, I think generally just having one healing item on him. Oh, wow. It's okay. Uh, I will say that, like, I think Yoni actually really falls off against late game boards. Like, once the fight gets gets faster, because like the way he kills the backline is like on his second or third cast, he uh gets to the corner and he just like one shot something. But in late game fights, um, he really struggle, and also the the Yoni board actually really struggles to like get really good frontline in. Yeah, uh, that for sure. Really? I mean, he was playing size one. <laughs> we're we're looking now. at this board. And like, yeah, there's a Silas, but there's also a Shen one, there's a Yorick too, and the... I mean... We have a Rek'Sai too in the corner as well. Oh? Yone? Oh man, Yone just doing Yone things. Wait. I don't Nautilus know if he wins done. this one though, I don't know if he wins. I think the Frog oh! might just kill it. Oh, I don't know, man. <laughs> okay. Oh, look at Preston! <laughs> Preston pretty close. is popping off, let's go! Nice, nice. A is the top four. Amazing, amazing. Actually, I'll restate my, my, my theory for why it's not doing well. My, my <laughs> new theory is it doesn't have enough attack speed. Okay, okay, okay. Man. Because, like, most of the damage comes from autos. And this thing is not autoing very fast. Clutch top four. You're, you're not wrong. And also, his Omnivamp ended up being clutch in that situation as well. I'm not sure how sure. strong Stan United is here as well. I don't like. I don't know the breakpoints of which like Stan United feels really good for Yone, but six stacks is what, like 12, 15 AD or something like that, fifteen AP. Uh, six times one point three. Wait, is it one point? Wait, is it? Oh, 2. I thought 5? it was one point. Oh, sorry, two point five or? I thought I thought it was two point five. Or... Is it one point five? <clears throat> oh, it might be two point five. I think it's 2.5 actually. Okay. 1.5 is a uh, showstopper or scrapper or whatever. Showboard scoreboard scrapper. Oh, okay, okay. So it's 15. So it's like it's, it's like that doesn't sound like a lot. You know. So mm -hmm. I, I feel like Stan United doesn't he obviously we didn't see his augment choice, so maybe it was an ideal, but Okay, this board looks scary. Level 9 AP board with Rakan and Azir 2 and uh two stars. Oh no, the mana reef, the mana reef. Oh, 
Oh, nice. Yone. Oh, it's okay. Strong fourth, strong fourth. We take those. Considering that the alternative was eighth, I think we absolutely take those. Fourth is good enough. Good job, Preston. Man, I'm getting more dogged again. JB Golf, thank you. Excellent timing. <clears throat> top four, top four. Yeah, so the way format goes is 48 cuts the top 16. So 48 uh, players today, top 16 tomorrow. Also, this Narboard. Featherweights mulched. All right. I'm adding this to the tier list. I'm adding this to the tier list for sure. What up, Raptor? Can you look up Malaz Liquipedia? I mean, yeah, I can do it between rounds. We, we get like five minutes between rounds, so we could probably do it. We have reroll. Was it real Zyra? For Sean's? Mm, might have been. Okay. Uh, I've seen Zyra Jana as like a real comp that sometimes people go for. Yeah. Especially if you like the two healthy but, setup, I've seen that before. Mm -hmm. Also, um Zyra's thought it as a solo carry. You guys, China is one two in this lobby again. <clears throat> so uh Yeah. If 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 top sixteen has like seven or eight CN players, don't be surprised. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Sien is gapping us really hard. Zyra 3 is good if you can hit. Yeah, that is part of the problem. She is uh, relatively contested. Okay, Pressman's walking through his own. I kind of want to see the last couple of fights of this game. 7 Cn, 7 and Yeah, but uh, half our NA players even show up. They either backed out or they overslept. So it's not even possible to get seven NA. <laughs> <clears throat> Once more, it might be Malala holding off the hordes of CN by himself. I mean, Malala's the NA goat. Nothing, uh, nothing, nothing strange about that. Yeah, no, just another day in the office. It is Zyra 3, by the way. Interesting. Story Weaver, Zyra reroll. Top four. Okay, Flancy. Flancy streak. It looks like Flancy is going to beat out the Narboard. And this makes sense. It looks, it looks like this Narboard caps out a top two a lot. Which is totally fine. How many games? Uh, in the top left, it shows how many games. We're at round two out of six right now, and we're going to play four more after this. Okay, Flancy at level 10. <clears throat> Who are the CM players? Okay, so this cuts the guy in second place. He was having once a, in a different universe. This guy was the first Malala. He was having a set seven of all sets. I'll show you guys that. I was actually talking about this, but before before the tournament started, I actually walked through almost every player storyline in general of like what their background is. But uh, Kudzu in set seven was actually on an incredible tear. He he won three tournaments in a row and got second at regionals. And so going into Worlds. I picked him as the the favorite. Sorry, Raid, but I picked him as the favorite to win set seven worlds. <laughs> That's and fine. then uh Shungu instead won, but uh Kudza ended up not winning, so like he didn't have the GOAT set. But if he did end up like doing that, he would have his 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 set run would have been one 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 two one. Which means that he didn't even he didn't even like his lowest placement in the entire set would have been second, which would have been insane. Uh, and then it's not like he had only one good set and then hasn't showed up. He's actually still top four in a bunch of other tournaments since then. It's just that set seven was like the craziest run I saw. And then he didn't, he didn't perform at world. Mm -hmm. really. Rage blade yeah, at least... gamblers. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. At least in that set, like the CN players are really, really dominant. Uh, I think any is like really clawed it back since 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 my set though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, basically after set seven, uh, NA has been on top, right? Set eight, we won. Set nine, mm -hmm. we were like 
right we were right there we were basically the we were right there right behind title crushing it and then set 10 Lala and everything the seven was dragons you guys can remember the mechanic where dragons took two slots on your team you start off with econ you you were trying to go for any of the three econ traits lagoon astral or shimmer scale you have to check mirage every single game <clears throat> siphon would randomly choose to target uh, a unit it said that it was it said that he would uh charge the farthest unit and then buy but like he didn't do that at all I mean, he did do that. It's just that the interpretation of the farthest unit was sometimes uh, a Give little bit content warning before talking about warning. dragons. That's right. This is for mature mature audiences only. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I mean, the dragons was also when uh, so Soju made worlds. <laughs> what? And rain potion. I mean, because and me. That's right. Man. All right. Flancy wins out. I told you, Flancy is like a really good player to cap out a bunch of boards as well. Uh, okay, we're going to Solo Song for the third lobby. But I, I, I got to be honest with you guys. I think I chose a lot of these lobbies based off the NA representative. Oh, we're back in Malala's lobby. Okay. So like. For example, last lobby I think had Soju in it, but he didn't he didn't show up. So it was, it was supposed to be like a Juan Mei Soju, um, uh, like Skip Payas, Kevin Parker, Che Che lobby, and then it ended up not having it. So if if, they, if we don't have a good lobby, I'm gonna probably pivot. But this next round, we're gonna go to Malala's lobby. I think we're in lobby four. So this next lobby is Malala Ice. Salvi, Soluga Song, You Need, Grafo, and Point GG. All right. <clears throat> okay, so uh, someone said, look up. Uh, who said we want to look up the Liquipedia of a player? Okay, by the way, I think I think I had it here. Was it? Kudza? I looked up Kudza. This this is Kudza's set in set seven. For set seven, this guy went first, 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 second, and then going to the championship, I was like, this guy is going to put up the ghost set. He's going to put up the ghost set. And then he went 15th at world. This is, it was not bad. Top, the top 16 is still pretty good. But like, I thought this guy was going to have the Malala set, and then he didn't. So then Malala decided to say, okay, I'll, I'll have the Malala set. And then ever since then, he's been doing pretty well. So Kuz is a very good player. Uh, other players. Flancy got my attention also in set seven. He's been really, really good. He got second at set uh eight worlds and in general is a really strong fundamental player loves playing for level nine he also plays mid game very differently from a lot of players it's one thing that really defines him as well uh juan may four he's he has four world championship appearances in a row starting from set four he went four five six seven and he won set five and that kind of streak is yet to be even tied let alone broken um, I guess the only person that's currently on track to do that right now is uh, Malala because <laughs> he has to because he's currently the only champion that's kind of made it consecutively. Uh, that's really impressive. 62nd is he actually has a very similar parallel uh, timeline to Dish Soap. Both kind of started coming around prominence in set six. Set seven kind of got a lot of hype for like how often they would be rank one. And then for three sets just was like rank one but like never made it past like regionals 60 second even to make it regionals for a long time uh so 60 second was like dominating ladder and then couldn't even qualify to like like regional finals uh oh, and then wow. set 10 they both made it to worlds and then uh 60 second got 10th or something at, at set 10 worlds so it was pretty good um he's also kind of a rager so before before the comparisons to dish soap in terms of timeline he was also kind of called the Setsuko of China for a while, but then Setsuko started doing well in tournaments, so he can't. But uh, 60 seconds kind of known as a, as a big time rager or yapper. And unlike in North America, that doesn't make you popular. That actually, like Chinese communities actually really hates yapping. <laughs> they think uh, it's very immature and unprofessional and uh, tiresome. So 60 second is actually uh, Setsuko in a different timeline, but not, not as popular and beloved. <clears throat> Those are some of the CN players. There's, I didn't, I didn't cover all of them, but we're in the next game. 
Wait, could you switch your stream back? Oh, yeah, it's yeah. It's on the... Sorry. Uh, streaming... Three cost champion. Then why do they love Soju so much? Oh, who said that they love Soju in China? Uh, I think they know Soju as the the funny guy. Also, I think Soju is different. Soju is is like a yapper, but like I think they don't like like angry rants. If that makes sense. Soju is like funny, you know. Setsuko is like mad with Taylor Swift playing in the background. There's, it's different branding. Okay, we got Malala back in it. Actually, I did, we didn't do a, a point score update. Let me see. Uh, point score update for round two. Malala went fifth. Okay, so we went, his scores are right now first and fifth. I mean, first and fifth is a 3.0 average and not even bad. Not bad. It's not bad. Uh, five, four item opener. It might just be four items, by the way. Okay, five items. Well, I, I, I still have yet to kind of like fully adjust what it means, but um, you can get two one two can you get one item openers you get two three four five item openers for sure i don't know if you can get, get one, one item openers yeah it's just means everyone has a ton of gold okay okay i think i've yet to see a one item opener but they've normalized it now mm -hmm. okay Harmless it's honestly fifth. like really really cool because like i actually i feel like there's still like a lot of variants playing uh playing around your opener and like what you get and like sometimes you can still make econ on one three but yeah, it's not like you see someone else with an econ opener and you're like, oh, okay, they just go straight to level eight. Wait a gold. second. Is Ice gonna play the Gnar from this spot? <laughs> he, has could, the he, he, he has the Aatrox uh, compliment right here, so. Mm -hmm. We basically just spawned an extra Aatrox on their board. Stars are born. Whoa. Okay, I haven't board. seen this Lockman taking that much of the set, but. I mean, it was always decent. Stars are born. I mean, yeah, it should be fine, especially if you want to reroll, but it's worse this set because last set you had the ability to go for a headliner. So Stars are born basically was like better heroic grab bag at 2-1 by like a lot. It would give you the, the two star immediately. And then um, uh, you were that much closer to finding your three star because you just had, you just need to find three more copies. Ari's kiss grants increased player health. <laughs> Shigers. <laughs> Wonder if anything anyone's fortune. The uh this player health thing is is it's actually gonna be such a big like um swing. I yeah, think in earlier early rounds it's not like super super impactful. It's just like that one portal that gives you extra player health, but like later in the round, when someone's like really low and trying to win out, it can be so impactful. Yeah. Agreed. Double Teemo shop for Malala. I don't know if he's open to that. Okay, they, honestly, they're, they're at this point. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, like, honestly, maybe. The items are pretty decent for uh for Teemo. You, you can play Adaptive on Teemo, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, I think Lugov's uh, better enough that you might as well agree, because, like, it's not like Gargoyles is a, is a bad item to set. In fact, I think Gargoyles is a, is a pretty good item to set. <laughs> Why specifically this set? Um, there's actually a lot more, like, things that I think can, like, mega tank among the four costs. For example, Galio, uh, is, I mean, one, he's literally a gargoyle. <laughs> so, I mean, I guess there's the naming thing. Okay. But, uh, Gar <laughs> Galio, Galio taunts the enemies and he scales, uh, he scales off of resistances. So, like, he innately uses gargoyles quite well. Um, there's also just, like, a lot of three cost mega tanks that... Like, I don't know, I feel like in, um, in, in the last set, like, it was only really, like, Echo Mord in, on, like, the four costs, like, sometimes Poppy, but 
like the amount of like mega tanks in the last set were I think a few and far between. Whereas this set you can like actually tank Galio, you can actually tank Annie. And they actually like feel nice and tanky to play around. Yeah, yeah, agreed. By the way, Salvi does have fortune, and Salvi is a econ trait lover. Also, Salvi has Teemo with Zonias and Gunblade, so I'm not sure if that dissuades Malala from playing it. As you guys know, Malala hates being contested. That is like uh, one thing about his playstyle that is that is distinct. He will pivot out if he feels like he's contested. Or if he is, he's going to have to play from really far ahead like he did in first game, where he literally saved up 120 gold and waited for the Yone player to die before he could roll down. He, he doesn't really go for it. He tries to play low risk in that sense. <clears throat> uh, Salvi has been around since the beginning of TFT. He was like always one of the players that NA players would say as an exception. Like when um, when uh, Solus and Milk and Soju would flame EU, they would say EU sucks, but Salvi's good, right? Like he's not one of those people that we're talking about. They would always show his due respect. He came back and he made it to set 10 worlds, basically one tricking as Heartsteel player. And that didn't work out for him. He actually ended up going like pretty close to dead last after the first day. Uh, brought it back a little bit in the second day, but uh, yeah, it was, Salvi did not have a good worlds. But he is good at uh, Fortune and Heartsteel. Was Salvi the player that like EU players were saying like was clear number one before Worlds or was that someone else? Yeah, people were saying like he's the he's like our pick to go the farthest and do the best from EMEA last up. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I mean the day one didn't really work out. Yeah. His strategy yeah, 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 yeah. didn't really work out and like combined with some laurels, it was it was not a very first fun first day for him. Nah, it was Skipeus. I mean, I'm sure some people voted Skip. I voted Skipeus. If you guys actually remember my pickums, I said I voted Skipeus to make final lobby. But I'm just putting it out there. You guys, it's, it's actually on VOD. I have video proof of that. I predicted Skip to do the best because I thought the meta fit his his uh, his playstyle very well. Because I knew that Skip likes rerolling, and I thought rerolling was really good on that time. <clears throat> Makes sense. Okay, nice. You need you needs a, uh, and you need go me and you need go all the way back, uh, back to Hearthstone. But um, he's uh, a popular French creator as well. Just a long time competitor in strategy games. So uh, he always has a soft spot in my heart. <clears throat> Ice still on a four streak, by the way, with this Ink Shadow Bruiser start. Hit a Kaisa. Okay, Kaisa is not that popular, but this this has to be a good Kaisa spot to start things off. I don't know if he ends up landing on Kaisa, but surely this is good. I mean, the dummy is a ton of tempo. Uh, even if you don't think a comp is good, if you can like, you know, if you can full streak with it, any comp's good. Oh, interesting. He uh, Ice put Last Whisper onto Kai uh, onto Senna, not Kaisa. I kind of thought was you this, wanted to stack. Wait, it was so this a slam? The or like, was this a uh... like was this slammed earlier, or was this just something he just did? I think he just did it. Oh huh. Oh, Lost thing. Tebow on his ward after all. Yeah. Fascinating. Uh, I mean, it's 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 Timo. Timo's also good for tempo. You don't have to reroll mm -hmm. it. I'm pretty sure Timo just might be overstated across the board, at one, two, and three star. Cause you just look at I'd it, like to it say just this. sounds like a Okay, lot. I'd like to blame EU players for this 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 balancing error. Like I've been yapping to Warthog of how this Demo guy is overtuned, and the EU players keep saying or like at least the EU players yapping to Warthog kept saying how he needed buffs. Wait, 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 name and shame, name and shame. Who who name at least one player? <laughs> who is it? Is it a gun is it gunmay? Oh, not, not any names, but uh Is it gunmay? Basic might have been might have might have been pushing for Timo buffs three times in a row. I, I feel like this is a gunmay take. Oh, is it Daysick? No, it might have been Daysick. I, I, I would believe take. Daysick or Gunmay. <laughs> ooh, 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 ooh. No, it was Daysick. It was Daysick. It was Daysick? Daysick? Oh, Daysick's been... classic Day. Because I, I, I introduced Daysick as a contrarian. He always goes against the, what other people are saying. This guy pushed for Teemo buffs. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, he, the, the Russian spy. 
Okay, uh, Solo Gasong, Gambler's Blade, Shoujin, JG. Huh? Just generic AP setup. We, we call this the CN, but to go full CN, he's missing one really critical thing. A second Jewel Gauntlet. Let the chaos commence. Shoujin, JG, JG is the true CN build. <clears throat> JG, JG. I mean, is, is that, that's not actually true, but it's just funny because uh, one time when I was VOD reviewing CN, we saw both two players, not one, but two, <laughs> build a uh, double jewel gauntlet. <laughs> and they just slammed it. It was, uh, it was just funny. And then ever since then, China is just known to slam jewel gauntlet a lot. Too healthy for Grafo. Prismatic. Ooh, Baboom. What do, you, what do you think about Baboom? Rain Plosion. Oh, sorry. I just realized my mic is muted. Oops. No. Uh, I think it, I think it's really really good on units like it's 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 an incredibly strong Prismatic. Um, on units that have like thirty mana. On units with like fifty, it's 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 still I think decent for those units. Uh, when you get above that, it's like really suspicious, I think. Okay. So 30 good, 50 decent, and then like probably not that worth yeah. on everything else. What about like on, uh, what about like on like attack speed, like duelist, for example, because duelists will end up casting a lot. What do you think? Mm, I think Tristana still takes like, it takes her like 10 seconds or like 12 seconds to cast twice. So. <laughs> You're getting like two seconds of up two seconds of uptime every like ten or twelve seconds. Right, right, right. That's not worth then. Before she can start getting a full ramp. Yeah, I think like Volibear gets mana locked as well. So. Okay. And Volibear is not really about the damage as much as the healing, anyways. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, but like you should definitely shouldn't like ignore the damage on your uh, even if it's not your primary carry. Oh, Salvi one your tanks inside carries. Oh. You got grief. I kind of thought Salvi was going to lose for a while. He got grief. Although it looks like he slammed a bunch of his items. Oh, he was one turn off. Cash is out. Okay. Also, someone in the chat mentioned, like, what about units where most of the damage is in their spell, like Kaisa? Uh, I think my response to that is that, like, you have to think about when these units cast. They have, they have, they have a large mana pool. Like, you only get to use a prismatic augment by, like, 15 seconds in the fight and sometimes the fight's already decided if you're already down prismatic by for 15 seconds that's a good point it's kind of like final ascension where if mm -hmm. you can if if you can get to the point where that final ascension will be the difference maker it is solid but a lot of times it isn't because the the fight the, the trajectory of the fight is very determined the first 10 15 seconds like you lose a key tank you lose a key or, or you fall too far behind in damage uh, or your utility doesn't like back up, you know, it's just like all those different things. They need to just be a little bit too late. Salvi uh, cashed out and rolled and then lost again. <clears throat> mm, Salvi spot does not look very good, you guys. Looks pretty bad. Malaw is still streaking. Ice still streaking. Kaisa is that bad. This guy's playing Kaisa and Windstreaking right now. Don't let this don't let these top 2k LP challenger players spread propaganda. Because you know what happens when you guys <laughs> say this so often? People stop buying Kaisa entirely. And you know who suffers? People like me and Ice. That's right. People like me and Ice who like play Kaisa at all. Like you just buy it for like one or two turns or even a stage, and everyone's like, why are you playing Kaisa? Isn't Kaisa terrible? Everyone says Kaisa is so bad. Everyone's gonna, it's like, but like clearly it's good enough to play as a vehicle to get you to a certain spot. So I don't think Rafa is happy with stream, you. Hashtag, you ha hashtag, sh hashtag streamer mental. Sorry, I just need, I just need to finish this. Hashtag streamer mental. <laughs> stop this propaganda train that like you can't buy Kaisa whatsoever. Because when you guys keep saying it, I, I, I'm the one that they have to that, 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 that has to answer these questions for you guys. OK, I'm sorry, I'm in rant. <laughs> OK, what were, you, what were you saying? Oh, I think you might have misinterpreted the message, actually. 
we have we have a Kaisa believer in chat instead of a instead of a non-believer. Kaisa is even that bad. Oh, oh, Kaisa you is meant even... is Kaisa even that bad? Oh, okay, okay. I meant okay. To be fair, you, you that rewording would actually uh, help a lot. But also, to be fair, English is your second language, so yeah, never mind. Ignorant American. <clears throat> <laughs> Okay, is Salvi going dead last? He is, for sure. He's going dead last. Okay, t uh, let's, let's look at this pleasure. Oh. Wait, is Salvi pulling on six? Yes. Are they contesting Jana? their Janas? I think he's contesting Janna. Wait. I don't think Janna's that good of a comp in the first place, and it's getting that, contested. I okay, mean, so Janna is, like is EU tech, then. This is, these are three, this is three times we're seeing Janna reroll from EU players. Hmm. Right, so that's a good sign to not play the comp. Alright, we got a prediction up. Will Malala make top two? We have some channel points predictions on the line. Will Malala make the top two? He's got five Teemos. He's trying to agree for blue buff. Also because a second rod could be really useful, like death cap or something. Mm-hmm. He's pretty healthy. I think if he was a little bit lower, he probably would have slammed like adaptive or whatever just to get like Baboon going more often. Yep. But he did streak for a good amount of it, so he's in a pretty good spot. A Loon 2 for Slogasong. Solo looks like he's going for Lily. Uh... And then Grafo, 4 Teemos. Oh, sorry, uh, Nars rather going for two healthy twin terror. But does it does it count the duplicate? No, right? It says each unique two cost. Don't think so. There is so much two cost reroll going on in this lobby. Yeah, and... Janet, uh, we talked about it being a three cost meta. A lot of two cost today. We've seen Teemo, Nar, Senna, Aatrox, Janna. Seven Teemos. Two more, two more. How good is the trick shot emote? Uh, not emote. Emotes. All right, guys, I woke up really early today. Uh, <laughs> the, the, the augment, the trick shot augment that gives you plus one bounce. Um, if you're playing two trick shot, it's the most broken augment you can hit. Period. Like in this spot, it's it's amazing. On four trick shot, it's still really good, I think. Uh, so overall, like if you if you're Ooh. not even playing four trick shot, it's amazing because because the extra bounce you get from the uh from the augment actually does more damage more more damage than your second trick shot bounce. I see. So it's basically giving you four trick shot with higher mm -hmm. upside. Interesting. Hey, I still 100 streaking with Kaisa. Here we go. 4 2 augment. Try force pick a litter, teaming up. Oh, best friends? Not bad with Baboom. He's thinking about pick of the litter for four costs. Yeah, you hit one of the bruisers, like, I mean, Silas. Yeah, Silas is good, and Galio is good. Oh, Galio pair. Rolling. Come on. One off Riven 3. <clears throat> okay, Tom 2, at least we upgraded something. Salvi. He's going Zyra reroll. Zyra Nar. What the heck? I okay, this is weird. I'm I'm all for it though if it works. Oh, okay. I think um I think Salvi just saw like an exalted line and decided to play around the exalted. Oh, Nar Jana Zyra. Oh I don't know if Exalted is so strong. Interesting, that, like, interesting. Whoa. Should play a bad line for it, but I mean it definitely fits his comp incredibly well. Yeah, 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 because you get the extra ward there. Okay, but that doesn't that grief the um the the, the Nari role player, Rafo? 
<laughs> Grapho has four, four Nars. He's just getting griefed. Okay. This is Malala. He can roll for a tier. He wants a tier. Yeah. Boom, Ooh, and a frontline good. item. We that take those. That is pretty darn good. That's very good. It's a Logosan. Plus a I'll blue buff. Spark? He already has a loon, but Spark is... Gives mm -hmm. you the guarantee uh, of the upfront uh, before the loon casts. Yeah, and it's not like a loon hits uh, everything, and yeah. they're playing a duo carry. You guys, I think Kaisa might be okay. But look at it! Look at this ice guy, proving all the doubters wrong. For now, at least. Also, his spot is pretty high roll, though. You can't even like you just look at it because of this dummy and his setup. Yeah. Pink Shadow, Free Zone 2 1. <clears throat> okay, I. I don't know if I believe in this Jana build. I don't think it's that good. Rage Blade, this, uh, Rage Blade, Nashers. Double Rage Blade. But then again, last time I, I, I said I didn't think something was good. I think I said that about the Gnar Aatrox thing, and yeah. that looks pretty good. Okay, Malala is bot four right now, but is he tied? He's tied. He actually wins the tiebreaker for uh, for the carousel pick. Kaisa is getting carried by wardens. I mean, Ice is playing zero wardens, but. Kaisa needs good frontline, I think, is the summary of that. And I think, uh, yeah, you, you, I, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. <laughs> um, Yone, Yone. Riven three from Alala. Still two off Teemo, so not, not doing, not slamming. Not sending, rather. Man, I did not expect Gnar reroll to be so contested. Now we're at the point where multiple players are playing Gnar reroll kind of wild Malala's boss actually turned from looking really good and some not that amazing like on 4-1 four, four, he already had his 7th uh, Teemo 4-5 still 7 Teemos yeah he starts start other stuff which is not the important thing mm -hmm. and I feel like Teemo does rely on playing ahead Salvi's losing here Whoa. That Janna was going kind of crazy. How much shielding did she do? 3,700. Oh my gosh. It's so painful. That Yone 3? That is Yone 3. Salvi oh, hits the Zyra 3. Malala's not sending though. A lot of two cash just got pulled out. I mean, it makes sense not to send. If you're already on uh, a seven loss, might as well read the extra econ for a bit. Yeah. You need with RE3. Stars are born RE3. Blue buff, Nashers, JG, the Annie 3 build from last set. I have a question for you. Do you ever have like these, like, just like visceral reactions to like unit names when they were in the previous set because like I hear you say like you need with RE3 I'm like what like RE3 on 4-6 oh right because you're like because <laughs> RE was a 4 cost RE. last set yeah 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 I know what you mean I know what you mean so it's just some whiplash especially because like her role is relatively the same she's an AP damage dealer um mm -hmm. some some units like change a little bit in role but yeah I, I know what you mean is everyone rerolling? No, no. Ice isn't rerolling. Solo isn't rerolling. Um, wait, that's it. Yeah, never mind. Six people are rerolling. You're right. Also, I kind of feel bad for this TV guy because uh, he's stuck on seven, seven, eight. <laughs> okay, Malala, it's time to hit. It's time to hit. Time to hit. Galio 2. Oh, Galio 2. That's pretty good on what 6. 
And he hit ne oh, Nemo 3. Okay, okay. Savvy level to 7. I mean, I'd... Oh, I'd say the last spot looks pretty good. The the one thing I'll say about it is that, like, I think in a spot I would have gone Gunblade instead of the GS when he made it. Because uh, I like healing on Teemo a lot, because... Um, I mean, I think, like, a lot of the... Like, damage over time casters have, like, all really liked Gunblade. Yeah. Agreed. Gimlala okay, goes double redemption. She's playing Riven tank because she's a three-star unit. Not that Riven's a tank. She's actually an AD carry, which is, uh, I mean, it is what it is. He just needs to get frontline from this Teemo. B solo song. That's a good sign. I still 100 streaking, by the way. He's 115 streaking. Working out with set makes you bigger. Why is it when I zoom <laughs> in, it's just like, it's just a crotch shot of set when I zoom in. <laughs> oh my God, that, wait a second. Look how big the Morgana is. <laughs> so dropping some uh, really, really what? important secret tech here. What the heck? If you want to win, <laughs> if you want to win games, Morg. and you pick the, the chibi Annie, uh, if you pick the chibi Annie legend and you hit sets, you can block the entire carousel with your with your Tibur summon. Oh, what the heck? That's so crazy. All right, pay to win, pay to win. Just you, 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 you get the chibi, so you block the carousel, so no one can see what, it, what anything is going, what, it, what anything's picking. What does bigger mean? Nothing. Just means it just literally means your little legend is bigger. That's all. It's just like a fun flavor thing. So you, it, it's so that you can respectfully admire the art of the game. Re three. Re three is kind of doing work. Oh my! Mm -hmm. I won. Wow. I just did a level nine roll down as well. I did not expect that. Hold on a second. The Ari is broken. I mean, he does have like Aegis random. It's like a pretty good combo. But that mm -hmm. that was very impressive. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That was very impressive. Uh, but also, I think Alawi might be a little overtuned. Alawi 2 just blocked 12k. Okay, hey, Malala did lose his last fight to Salvi. That's not, that's not very promising. Four trick shot, four bruiser. He does have healing orbs. Yeah, as long as the frontline stays alive. Nice. We're playing for top four here from Alala. Hey, you need. Is that Salvi you just killed? It is. I mean, I could be wrong, but I think Malala's being for first. I think the Teemo comp is really strong, and once you get it online, uh. Okay. Even if it's it. not like the build I would have preferred, um, I think it's pretty good. What's the build you prefer? Uh, I'd rather have like an AP source, so like decap. Um, I, Merle's good, but I don't rate it that highly on Teemo. I'd rather go like Boobuff, decap, uh, Gunblade. Right. Especially with Baboom, he's getting a lot of damage amp already, so I don't really like the GS that much. Yeah. I mean, his items were a little bit awkward, as we saw he greeted for a while. Hmm. Okay. Pretty close for who's fighting for top four. I get the feeling that Ice, like I Ice, is obviously has such a big HP lead, so he's gonna go to ten. He's also gonna go for a Kaisa three. Oh wow! And no one's gonna really stop it. I want to see this Janet three in action. Speaking of the Kaisa. I mean, this is a good matchup or a good time to fight him because of uh because he's trying to greet a 10 but if we're losing here oh we're losing by a lot uh, oh no way 
Yeah. I think you might have killed like one or two units. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not looking too hot. Malala wins for solo. That's huge. Malala looks like he's angling for the top three at least. Yeah, I predict that Ice is going to win the game. So it's really about who can fight for second. And you need, with all these wins, you're getting some huge, huge round victories so you can preserve HP. Solo's one off Tom Kench three he hits. Solo can survive three rounds. He gets Tom, uh, Hui two guaranteed. Oh, wait, he has Radiant Thieves Gloves on Tom Kench. Oh my god. Look at the AD on this Tom Kench. Holy. I mean, we gotta see this. Hey, Brinkadong. Look at that heal. Heals 100 HP. Oh, honestly? Oh. Brinkathon isn't even that bad on frontline. Okay, it died. <laughs> <laughs> Brinkathon isn't even that bad on frontliners because uh, it heals you for a lot of your HP. Okay, RE3 is pretty good. Mm hmm. Wow. Okay, another Kaisa. He's not going for a uh, Kaisa three. It looks like he sold one. Okay, Malala had a really good stage five, all things considering. Only lost for Salvi, who went in seventh. It should be a top three for uh, our guy Malala, who's averaging a three so far today. Maybe, maybe Malala is blessed by our observing. I just can't help but notice, but every single time we've been spectating Malala, he seems to like be top four or better. Well, who knows? Maybe he's just putting on a show. He knows he's being watched. He knows. He's he a knows. little bit of pressure. You need to get to nine. Nine, four, six faded. Oh, seven faded, seven faded. <clears throat> Ice greeting for 10. Logosong needs to wait two more rounds for Hui Tu. This is a fight for fourth. Yeah, so Logosong hasn't won a fight in an entire stage, so. God, these Radiant Thieves Guild items are so bad. <laughs> oh, God. You're not the best. Wait. Maybe it oh. eats the. Ooh. No, Lilia's trolling. She, her, her projectiles are just missing. Okay, it's a top four. La lost to Ice. Wait, Ice did end up going. Oh, never mind, never mind. Oh, Ma lost the Ghost of Ice. Oh. Oh wow, because Ice didn't play Malala. Wait a second. Kaisa or Zaya one did 7k. Is Kaisa busted? She might be. A lot of people were memeing on Zaya in PBE like a few days ago saying like Zaya one was uh like like F tier. Mm -hmm. And uh, saying, like, the best thing about Zaya is that you can play Rakan. Now, look at what's oh, going I mean... on. <laughs> yeah, she's gotten a lot of buffs. Rakan's gotten a lot of bonus. I think three days ago, on this board, like, on a trick shot board, you play Rakan over Zaya. Interesting. So you're saying but... in this setup, you'd rather play Zaya, but... Or sorry, you play Rakan, but the Zaya's kind of... Yeah, three days ago, but, but there's been a lot of balance changes since then. Okay. Well, top four, I'm we take those. Not bad. Zaya. So now you want to play Zaya? Mm -hmm. Okay. Looks like Ice should win this last game. Dude, he hit 92 HP. This was such a dominant win. Unreal. I 
I mean, you need getting second with Ari as well was really impressive. He did get a lot of things uh, going, like he got the Theod Emblem and he got uh, really good stationary support. But this was a very impressive performance by Ari. Seven faded four Arcanist. Holy. Another Arcanist Emblem? I don't think it as well as the Booster Emblem for uh, Ice, if they wanted it. Okay. Or Azaya too. too. Oh. Oh, wow. The size is not even to take the Zaya too. just says, I'm winning anyways. Yeah, it takes a Bruiser Emblem. Does he want to go six Bruiser or maybe cut a Bruiser? Yeah, it's Zaya too. Yeah, maybe he could cut the, um... The, uh... Oh, he just Aatrox wants it on... Or something oh. like... For... Oh, I mean, it's a good thing to be I guess not, but... Maybe you could cut the Aatrox or something like an Udyr. Or we could add Kobuko. <laughs> The uh, Kobuko six bruisers. Ah, I see. He just wants more things to get in front of the Ari. And then uh, stall for his unit to ramp up. Okay. Wow. I still think the Zai is insane in the clump boards like ice. Uh, or into what you need. Because the yeah. pullback on it does so much damage. Oh my god, that's crazy. Show damage chart? Oh, I mean, uh, I showed it a couple fights ago. My bad. All right. Really impressive game. Another CN first place. Uh, CN is running laps on us. CN is running laps on us. Press event. Let's go ahead and check in on him. Actually, let's go ahead and watch Dissope's game. I feel like we haven't watched any Dish Soap. Oh. Uh... Oh, third place. Oh, we'll take it. We'll take it. All right. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> uh let's go let's, let's go back to press event let's go back to press event not bad not bad not bad and they need stats well yeah we also need players who are playing uh pbe our best players are really not in general playing a lot of pbe at the moment Six Warden, four Porcelain for press event. Looking good. Hey, hey. China went fifth. Not bad. Orn three. All right. It's press event first. Six Warden. Pre uh, six Warden, Orn three. My God. That is a lot of damage reduction. This is a wandering trainer game, I just realized. Yeah, precedence, it might be a little bit, but it might be a little bit high roll. Pro he, got, he got porcelain and warden. Mm -hmm. And then uh and then has a behemoth to boot, so he just puts the orn in. So the <laughs> the synergy is really good. Okay. Pressman should win here. Nice. I think that's uh so Pressman's scores are 441. Pressman actually might be like leading the pack or one of the players leading the pack. Juan May top 2, another CN top 2. Juan May streaking. It makes me a little scared to see what's happening on the other side. Think about denying Juan May at this point. Oh, he wants uh, mm -hmm. the adaptive on Orn. I see. I see. All right, it makes sense. The redemption doesn't actually like buff only the holder. So if you can get it to something else, it makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Bouncing the items. Okay. Putting the item Holy. on set instead. Look at the APM. The optimizations. Look at the moves. The 
funny thing is, uh, he's not even necessarily optimizing for the Ord as well, because he gives one item to everybody. So, like, if he really wanted to, he would actually keep one item off of Lissandra and then tailor for that as well. But, I mean, that's, like, that's just a minor thing. Does not actually matter at all. It looks like uh, Juanme played Zoe 3 and got second. All right. It's NACN at the top. Uh, as expected, any on top. What? Why, why is everyone laughing? Oh, they're just—I guess they're laughing at uh, everyone else because he's dominating. Okay, Disso top three. Wait, is Spencer is Spencer playing in the tournament? Oh, he is. He's Iguana PB six. Oh, oh, okay. Spencer is playing. All right, so that was round three. We'll do a score update and get ready. We're halfway through. I don't know if they're gonna take a break, but uh, we'll do a little bit of a score update. So in lobby one, Spencer looks like he went sixth. Oh, this is uh this is lot this is round three. Okay, round three, Michael, Flanty, and Dish Soap game top four. This is a great lobby. Maybe we should have watched this one. Uh in lobby four, we just watched this. Ice wins. You need uh point GG and Malala. In lobby two, Precedent wins, Juan May, and then uh Toady and Skip. Lobby 5 is still... Oh, Lobby 5 is still going on with Kiyun. Is Kiyun streaming? Oh, he's not. Uh, what about Kevin Parker? Oh, they just finished. 60 second with uh, Filios 3, Day 6, Snooty, and Kiyun. Kiyun top 4. Not bad, not bad. And then uh, in Lobby 3, we had Dalesome, Safo... Kiki and Ch oh Latam top four. Uh, and then lobby six we have R Y another C N player, Coco, Spencer third, and then Magarki in fourth. Okay, okay, not that much C N domination. Is there is there a standings right now? Oh, there is. Okay, yeah, I think it's on the final. Uh, yeah. Flancy number one. Coco, Ice, Rico, Kudzu, Juanme, Precedent, YFTX, Dalesan, Malala, Studi, Disub, You Need, Dion, and Magarki. That's the top 16 right now if we cut. That's the top 16 if we cut right now. That's not bad. Hey, that's not bad. Like a lot of NA is in the top 16. Yeah, a lot of NA. A lot of CN. One, two, three, four CN in the top six. All right, let's not talk about so that. Let's not talk about like that. Four total reps? With Iguana, Iguana PB6. Yeah, yeah, we, well. we do, we do. Uh, Iguana PB6 is um, Canada. Oh, actually, Kiyum. We have five. We have five. Five NA reps. Okay, uh, lobby number four, we have to pick. Uh, what lobby? Let's see. Lobby number four was originally lobby three. So we were going to do lobby three. But that was because this was supposed to be Setsuko. Solo, Dasic. Well, it was supposed to be Setsuko. I think this is Canvas now. Flancy, Skipeus, and Kiki. Not for another lobby then. We haven't watched a Dish Soap lobby yet. Ahau, Dish Soap, Point, Ging, Dalesom, Caesar, Rico. Eh. Lobby it's one is Salvi, Tampop, Juanme, Potibol, Precedent, McGarkey, Miguel, and Grafo. Lobby 2 is Chuso, YFTX, Luch, Kiyun, Michael, Shans, Coco, and Kudzu. Lobby 5 is Unid, Allen, Spencer, Bintum, 62nd, RY. Lobby 6 is Relic, Malala, Kevin Parker, Canvas, Snooty, Iguana, and Ice. This is kind of similar to the lobby we just watched, though. Any lobby stand out to you guys? Lobby six. You guys want to watch more Malala? I mean, I'm down. It okay, looks like people want lobby six. Uh, lobby six with Canbiz. Oh wait, no, this is Canbiz. Who's who's PB three? I don't know. <clears throat> if you someone who like replaced, right? What's up? It's probably someone who replaced, right? Do yeah, you have, like, probably you know, the uh, people who replaced her. 
Uh, yeah. Let me uh, message. Where's Malala? I'm just gonna join off of this. Uh, I'm just gonna say start with out me. Dy. Brandon, would, if you were the tournament workers, would you invite North America next sets? I mean, yes. Why wouldn't you want the best region in the world to compete in your tournament? I mean, do you want to, do you want, uh, do you want to just give it away for free to China? Or do you want actually China to get challenged? Imagine if NA wasn't here. It would just be China, France, China, Ital Italy. I was going to say Italy. Italy, China, 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 China. Spain, China, Spain, China. But like, uh, you tell me, you tell me if you want, if you want that. Iguana PB3. Oh, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Thank you, though. Thank you. We're going to watch this lobby. I'm just going to write. Pivoting to lobby six because of the replacements. Our streamers didn't show up for this one. Okay. Uh, TFT influencer is not here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just letting them know. <laughs> they keep inviting me. <laughs> All good. All right. Oh, I realized I wasn't sharing you my uh, my monitor, but uh, mm, I mean, when it was like out of game, I was just thought, yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So this is was that round three or was that round, was this is this round three? This is round four, right? Yeah, I think this is round four. Hold okay. opener. OK. I need to use the bathroom real quick, actually. I'll be right back. One second. Woohoo! Free rain on the stream. <laughs> no mods, hands off. Send it rain. I'm pretty sure I wouldn't send it. Even if Rodan was coming back, it wasn't wasn't coming back. Wait, gold openers two gold? Uh I think all the silver orbs are two gold. So it's like a two gold unit or something like that. We got gold opener. Gold mm -hmm. opener with Ari, Kiana, Zyra, Yone, Orn, and Hue. This one actually has like a pretty decent top end with a uh, Orn, Zyra, and Hue. Okay. So we might see some more exalted on the. Like I mentioned earlier, how I didn't like dropping too many like good units to Exalted, but like on like a level 9 AP board, I'm happy to play Zyra or an Anahue. Yeah, I feel like if anything, uh, because of how prevalent reroll is, we're not seeing much Exalted right now. In general, Exalted is like a lot more for like those four cost comps as opposed to the reroll, because reroll you kind of need to make sure you have some of the pieces in place. Okay, this is Malala's POV. He has build different. How do you feel about build different this set? Mm. I mean, it kind of depends on like, so how good like units are, even if you don't have items on them, throughout a sets and uh, as well as just how strong the augment is. I think this set, it's pretty wow. decent. There's a lot of like units that do a lot of like utility stuff without items, like a failure, Sinaloon, Shred and Sunder, Horn Prince items, uh, 
any anti heals. I think there's a lot of good built different units, and I think the augment is like reasonably strong. Okay. Ooh, but like force whether force. build different is strong or not, like I don't think it's like so much based on the set. It's just like the numbers on it, and uh, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. Oh, right no. now, I think it's pretty good. <clears throat> yeah, but if you're not able to get that streak going. Oh, Timo. Oh, wait, he doesn't Let's unfortunately win these. Oh, he does! 11 HP! Oh my god, that's so big for Malalo to win that. And he makes 10 gold. Wow, that was huge. That was huge. Gargantuan Resolve for Ice. Double Gargantuan Resolve, Caitlyn. Okay. That's, I mean, obviously, that's going to be temporary. And then we got Raining Gold. My my take on build different is that I think uh, it's it's still really solid for tempo, but I think that it's one of those things that uh, is good early in the set because people aren't playing optimized boards, so that you're just playing like units that have high tempo and high stats, and you're punishing people that don't have efficient boards. So if you looked at the PB <laughs> stats, I think it was overperforming relative to where it actually sits. And then I think that it then that so I think it, I think right now we're at a period where it drops off a little bit because the first set of optimized boards can punish uh build different which usually gets optimized like later on uh so I think it's gonna have a little bit of a jump up performance again later on probably like in uh, like a few weeks from now when people kind of figure out the best ways to set it up that's kind of the way I view it at the moment uh -huh. I mean that makes sense I will say one thing that's interesting is whether or not you end up playing like Exalted with Built Different. So let's say you're in a situation, because the thing about Exalted is a lot of times they don't match together in traits anyways. And so mm -hmm. uh, you you could just play Exalted for like utility units. Like, do you care if um, like Zyra has Built Different? Like maybe, maybe not, but you could just like splash her in, right? And then maybe throw in other things like Yone because you're not playing any Umbrals or Reapers anyways. So uh, maybe you just get Exalted to buff all your core four costs that you're playing around, and then maybe that's like a way you can get some value late game. So just just some things to think depends. about. That's all. Ideas. I mean, I kind of I think it kind of depends. Like maybe this one because you're playing uh, Ornn and Hui, which I don't think they really care that much about having both of them activated. If yeah. you're not carrying Hui at least. Yeah, Hui. Uh, I don't know if I would yeah. like. I play like two bad units on my board. Yeah, yeah, fair enough, fair enough. It's about the unit quality for sure. Spatula open. Immediately taken. Uh oh, it's mythic setup. Okay, so we're gonna have a mythic game. See what Ice is playing. All right, he's playing the Gargantuan. Let's see what Relic's playing then. A Rage Blade and Gamber's Blade. That's a pretty classic. Good combo. What are you thinking about? <laughs> is this just is this generic into what Ash Bard? Uh, yeah, I mean, if I saw this in set 10, I'd say uh, they're probably looking to play like Kale. I think the Kale of this set <laughs> is Bard. Kale. <laughs> Holds. Yeah. <laughs> Holds basically the same items. Yeah, I could see it be something you play on Bard and then ultimately use later on, but he didn't get this off Lucky Street, got the Horrible Force, you don't get the remover. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, we'll see. Relic. I think he's doing okay in the tournament at the beginning. I haven't caught up with the standing since, but I would like to see him do well because he's the player who has kind of made a pretty big impression um, from Latam last set because he made it to World Championships and he's the first player to do to make it to both League of Legends Worlds and TFT Worlds. Also, last set, he got invited to MSI and that was actually kind of a controversial thing because there's obviously only a limited number of slots for msi and they invited relic over like some other players from latam that people were like okay it feels like you could have invited like a like a player of higher pedigree 
and then he did well anyways so like despite the criticism like oh maybe this guy isn't isn't the best player he doesn't deserve to like represent us compared to some other people and then he just proved them wrong and then he made it to world as I mean, well so I, I would love to see him keep proving the doubters wrong yeah i mean i think i remember hearing something about the msi stuff <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, and it, it wasn't like it, it, people. To be clear, people weren't flaming uh, Relic. It was more like they were getting mad at the, they were getting mad at China and the organizers. They were getting mad at Tanner. They're like, "Why would you invite this guy? Uh, you could invite like these other players instead." And they were kind of getting mad and like uh, it actually kind of. I think I think Tanner was saying like it left like a really bad taste in his mouth because he was like, "Man, I'm getting like torched by Latin bands and everything like that." To the point where some Ladam representative, like community members, were like, "Hey, these players like don't represent us. Thank you for including us. Please invite Ladam back to the next MSI." <laughs> They're just really uh, passionate, I guess. Uh, hmm. Yeah, so there's a little, there's yeah, a little be... bit of controversy. And Relic, by the way, even stepped up to it. He said, "Like, hey, I know that I probably don't deserve it as much as some other players on paper." Um, because the thing is, he hasn't been competing very long. He was just kind of a notable name. Oh, oh, Prismatic Orb? Huh? Support, item, artifact, artifact, completed it. Tome. Tome? Two items. Okay, not that, not that I actually think Tome is, like, that good. I think it might be one of the worst ones. But, uh, it's always kind of hype to see Tome. Warden. I mean, this is the, this is the best, I mean, uh, generic, uh... Front line mm. that you can pick up. Yeah, Reaper Spot's also just like really strong in general. Maybe they true. decide to play Reaper Spot with like Rage Way to Loon or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is true. Reaper is very, is potentially very, very good. Ghostly. Ooh. Whoa. Oh, man. Okay, so Rain, explain to me a little bit about Ghostly if I haven't actually like read this Yu Gi Oh card. <laughs> uh, so. Whenever the unit, unit stock, so each ghostly unit needs to stack up their own ghostly stocks. It's kind of like stacking up Shadow Isles, which they've dealt with like taking damage six times, which generally happens pretty quick. Um, then they send out two specters, which they act as a like they're like the little ghost balls I, that you see on the unit's feet. Uh, the more ghost balls they have, uh, the more damage the unit takes. Yeah. A little bit like and Contagion, then, like, yeah? Just like the longer the fight goes, the more you're kind of getting some of this bonus damage on your enemies. Oh, wait a second. Is this guy a genius? Oh, man. I'm getting more Dr. Is, he, is this guy a genius? Oh, I'm, my God. I'm not <laughs> sure if it, like, it's based on fight length. Like, I think it might just happen once when they, like, proc ghostly. I'm not sure if they send out more spirits. You go, thank you. Okay, but I, I, could I, be wrong. I mean... Now we can play for the eight ghostly though. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Malala takes Freaky Friday. He lost his streak, but uh, that's okay. Canvas, Sniper, Sivir with Jewel Lotus 3. Final Ascension. By the way, Scoreboard Scrapper into uh, never being the bot 4. I'm generally not oh. a fan of this. I'm not that big of a fan of the augment if you're not bot four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, it's really good if you're like, um, obviously playing like a fortune based strategy or like trying to reroll. But if you're trying to play tempo, yeah, I don't know. I mean, honestly, it looks like they're trying to reroll, but uh, just happen to not be in the bot four. Yeah, and wins again, by the way. <laughs> okay. okay, I mean, you're not gonna get that much score score with scrapper value this game, but. Saving HP is not that bad either. Yeah, that is true. Like, I guess it's like a it, maybe some people view it as like win win. Like, uh, hey, mm -hmm. if you're not getting value, chances are that just means that you're in the top four and you're you're preserving HP well. Yeah, I mean, like either you're winning because you're getting scoreboard scaffold value or you're winning because you're just literally winning. Yeah, 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 yeah. Two Zephyrs. Oh, man. All right. Malala. This is Kevin Parker is going for Yone, by the way. Kevin Parker with Yone. Malala has these two Zephyrs as well. Let's see how he does it. Going against Ice. Ice is going for Gnar. Gargantuan and Warden Crown. Gnar 2.
But I like got the duplicator, so not exactly that strong. And then Canvas is the story uh, Weaver Streaker right now. <clears throat> oh, he predicts the size that Gnar would be on. Ooh. Both eyes get effort. But I think uh, Ice's Gnar scales a little bit better. Yeah, the one. Gargantuan. The, 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 the delay on it is nice, though. Hmm. Oh, yeah, maybe it just gets first down before the gargantuan stacks. Yeah, so, not oh, really. Well, I guess it didn't matter. The stacks didn't matter, but yeah. Okay. Another spat, a third ghostly emblem. A relic ghost for it. Ice is at least top two. I mean, his spot looks really interesting uh, with the Gnar. I think I think this is the big revelation for today in general. Gnar reroll was something that we weren't expecting to see like a lot of, and China has played it a lot. And if he top fours, that'd be the third time we've seen it top four. But we did see it go seventh one game as well, but that was because it was being contested, I think. Yeah, that game was a little bit weird in terms of uh, what people played. Yeah. Like, Janna was contested, which... I, I don't know. I'm not that big of a fan of Janna. I don't think I'd ever contest someone for it. Agreed. Lilia 2 on 7. That's what he uses Duplicator for. Going up against Snooty. I mean, this... This board from Sumi does not look very strong. With a prismatic orb, by the way, it's kind of like everybody got almost a prismatic augment. Like, not really, but uh, everyone gets like a big spike. It's kind of like more like everyone got a gold tier augment. But everyone's yeah, like I mean, at three it, augments. It, it's, it's called a prismatic augment, but when you look at the results, it's like an ore item or support item or like complete item and will plus some gold. Yeah, it's gold, um, it's gold tier. It really is a gold document. For four, oh, for four player combats, units in the back three rows start with 200 bonus HP. So you move everything back one. Man. Yeah, this one is, uh, it's just really bad for Umbral. Are we trying to play Umbral and greeting the frontline hexes? Cause yeah, the frontline. oh God. You're looking at this <laughs> and you're like, uh. Yeah, I mean. One of my less favorite parts about encounters is that sometimes, like, through not really a fault of your own, like, it's not like, it's not like you should play, you should not play Umbral because, like, you know, maybe Yasuo shows up. Uh, sometimes you get a tiny bit screwed over. Yes, agreed. By the way, Safo still streaking with Scoreboard Scrapper, like, Team 01. Team 01's a monster. Team 01's a monster, man. Hashtag thank you, Dasic. <clears throat> Gunblade. I mean, remember Yonai. the Dasic thing? <laughs> Specifically, because because I was trying to argue against them. I was trying to tell him that like Timo one was already like this was before the the first buff. So I was trying to tell him that like Timo was already a really strong tempo unit. <laughs> oh man. Five streak for ice. Looking good. Iguana or not. I, I don't know who this player is. Do you know who PB4 is by any chance? Anybody, I don't anybody know? even in the Discord, so uh, I think I'd have like, even yeah, less information yeah, yeah, yeah. than you do. I, I wouldn't like... I, at best, you'd be able to look at the, uh, the flag. A Spanish player? Okay. I'm kind of surprised that Safo didn't reroll Teemo though. Like, I would have thought that Zanya is just like so so broken on Teemo, like on, on a dot unit specifically, because like every like you go into Zanya's, everyone just takes the death. Yeah. But I'd been really happy playing Teemo. But I mean, 
you can't complain about their spot. Their spot looks pretty good, even if Swarward Scrapper isn't really working for their team. What is going on? Bard, ghostly? Ghostly... Ghostly Bard. If I had to guess, I would expect that they're not trying to end the no, Bard. They're just going no, instead to like, but... find some upgrades and bridge the Morgana, <clears> but... <throat> pretty cool mid-game. Ghostly Bard is Casper. Is Rain playing? Yeah, she's actually playing right now and, and commentating the game with me. <laughs> yeah, very talented, commentating very talented TOT player. Malaw's going to fast eight here. Oh, on a Kaisa. That's good. Kaisa, I think, Kaisa, Ash, two good AD carries that you can kind of play around with uh, the built diff. Mm-hmm. Recombob. Oh, that's pretty good with Bill Fit, Bill Diff. But some of the legendaries aren't like deactivate their traits. Oh my god, is he going for it? like Unified is also really good. Is he going for it? I mean, Exiles is pretty good too. Because you get you have a, you have bonus HP. Yeah, I mean, same reason for Unified, right? Uh, like getting a ton of armor and R on units that already have HP is also pretty good. Oh my god, he's go. Is he gonna go for it? No. Oh, he didn't. He didn't. X oh, Malala. Oh, man. I mean, it makes a lot of sense, honestly. He hasn't rolled down. If he'd already rolled down, I'm pretty sure he would have uh, insta taken it. Like, okay. he'd get a two star five cost. But some of these five costs, like, aren't that good with build different. Like, Quay, for example, activates artists no matter how many you play. Oh, oh, some cool build different tech, though, um, that I'm sure some people already know. But uh, Zion Rakan. You can't play. You can't actually feel different on them because they have the lovers tag. But if you play one Zaya as an, uh, and one Rakan, as in you put one front line and one back line, you can disable lovers by getting two out of one lovers and activating Phil Tiff. Oh yeah, got it. I think I think most TFT players already know how to disable lovers from their IRL experience. What? But it's really good to share just in case people don't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Holy. That is good tech, though. If you play Zaya in the back and Rakan the front, you actually disable Lover. So yeah, so you can play them and build different. <clears throat> Ash two, Rexai three. Mean Dan, nah, they hated him for because he spoke the truth. Oh, this is interesting. Now, if you do it with tricksters, you keep lovers. That makes sense. This is like a copy of the exact same unit. Whoa, sniper mm -hmm. way. I mean, the trickster doesn't like activate a new trait, so yeah, it's yeah, activating yeah. like two lovers that that makes it. God, that's right. Because if it's just by yourself, I mean, that's not how lovers work. It takes two to tango. Okay. Um, also, by the way, apparently that also counts for. So, someone said that that counts for like things like too healthy. I think Dish Soap said that it counts, like the Trickster's Glass on a two cost unit, which would, is news to me. Huh? Wait, what? <clears throat> wait, I, I feel like. Wait, and he says he said that recently. Uh, that I I was I was playing it last night. Or I was watching it last night. And there's a trick. I think Kurum was playing too healthy, and he Trickster's Glasses Riven three, and apparently he was saying that it, count, it counted both of those Riven as oh. uh, as too healthy. Okay, I mean that's not how the Ogden is worded, but like not everything works how the Ogden is worded. So yeah, I mean it's it might it might be a bug. Who knows? Okay, Malala. Dude, I, I don't know if this game looks good for Malala right now, you guys. It's looking pretty bad, actually. It looks like Sorry. the Yasuo buff has been gone, though, so you can stop griefing us that way. Mm -hmm. I mean, for some people, it's pretty good. Like, if you don't care about your positioning, like, you know, if you're playing Teemo, uh, you're quite happy to just backline everything. Right. Dude, Safo still? <laughs> He's still a score worth scrapper, 92 HP. Oh my gosh. I mean, you're going fast nine. Like, I guess it's it's totally fine. 
I, I will say one thing though, on level 9 boards, it's actually kind of hard to find uh, things to boob off. Yeah, yeah. Blue buff is not surprisingly an easy item to use at high levels. Like nothing's even like 60 mana. Rakan's like eight, either 80 or 90 mana. I forgot. Like Azir is like 100 and Azir and Hoyer like 130 or something. I'm probably getting the exact numbers wrong, but something close to that. Give or take, you know, 50 mana either way. Oh, you guys, it's not looking. It's not looking good. We're stuck on one star carries is the reason why. Yeah, I also think Lee Sin is just... I I don't like Lee Sin because I think they put too much of his power budget into his attack speed scaling. Which means that like as a flex unit, I think he's like... Pretty horrifically bad. Yeah, he needs to like the duelist and the dragon lord to activate so he can actually deal stuff, deal damage. I mean, he does technically get attack speed through mm -hmm. the build diff, but... Yeah. It's not like he gets nothing, but it's just... Not not quite so much that I'm happy to play him. I but think. Is, isn't, like, two duelists already, like, 60% attack speed? So it's like... He's getting less than his very baseline activated trait. Okay. Can we win this fight, though? Nope. Oh, God. Ah, uh, hey, oh no. Eighth is really bad. No, Malala. Should have taken Recombob. Should have taken Recombob, man. Nice to pair. Yeah, let's go check in on Snooty, the ghostly board. Six ghostly. Wait, you did play ghostly bard. Oh, okay. He's just missing Kane and Morgana. Ice, by the way, still holding strong despite uh, only playing Nar too. It, 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 this is actually um, impressive in the sense that like he hasn't hit Nar like super fast. Mm -hmm. Oh wow, he's oh he pre-leveled, got it. Oh weird, he like pre-leveled and then rolled. Wow, wow. Okay. <laughs> and the Caitlyn 3. Gunblade. I don't know if I personally care oh. that much about Caitlyn 3, but uh, it is a Caitlyn 3. I think it's GS uh, plus Morello. Oh, right. He's an anti heal. Who holds Morello? Um, Caitlyn! Honestly, maybe just put it on... Oh, okay. Alright. There's, there's not really a good Morello holder. Like, it's fine on Caitlyn. Her auto is applied. It's not the worst. But we are kind of playing AP Caitlyn, which I... I don't know about AP Caitlyn. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, it looks good enough. Damn. Dude, this CN, this CN tech is so strong. All right. <clears throat> Malala, I mean, Malala's playing for placements. And remember, if Malala can just like squeeze out like a like a fifth or a fourth, he's still in a really good spot for qualifying for the next day. Just need to keep putting on like every placement he can squeeze together is huge. Kevin Parker ended up playing. Oh, this is actually um, this is actually a build that I was talking about yesterday, where you play Heavenly plus a four cost Warrior, and you uh you basically flex around he Heavenly as your vertical, and this Heavenly kind of acts as like KDA from last set, and then you play around four cost uh units to give it a bunch of stats. So this is this yeah, is a this is like a comp that people don't really talk about right now, but it's uh it's one that I've seen do well. I've seen it do really well with Kane. I've seen it do really well with like specific divine rolls, the heavenly augments. Mm -hmm. Again, it, I think it also can do well with Lee Sin. Speaking of like a, a comp where Lee Sin can actually care, I think he can do well. <gasps> no, Malala went eighth. I mean, maybe, but like I've seen this show try it twice, and then he went seventh twice and lost out on stage four. Damn. Maybe his setup was just like bad, or maybe like Lee Sin needs more specific items than than Kane. But like, at least personally, I would like, I would almost always always opt to try Kane in this comp rather than Lee Sin. Okay. I mean, I I think highly of Kane. I also think highly of Silas. He's playing 
He's basically playing heavenly with these three powerhouse units. Mm -hmm. The problem is that this comp is really expensive. Oh wow! <laughs> He's playing Kana without without playing Kha'Zix. Oh, I, nope. I thought he was just looking Kha'Zix at the board. I thought he was just looking at the board. Yeah, I mean, give some roll. So. Oh, what the? Sniper, Syndra. I did not expect that. It looks like he's playing binary as well. Two item Amumu, two item Syndra, two item Ash. The hidden binary tech. Uh, <laughs> it's not looking good. Also, Snooty died with seven ghostly. Gosh. Damn. Heavenly emblem for Kevin Parker. I might get taken. I mean, anyone who's running like too heavenly in the comp already <clears throat> can just grab an emblem for some free Omni Vamp other team. Oh, Safo took it. It's fine. He's going for Orn 3. No, oh, I don't think Orn got taken, so. Uh, who's going for Orn 3? I'm looking around. I don't think anybody is. Oh, 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 oh. You're saying like the, the binary. <laughs> yeah, he's actually playing around Orn. Playing around Orn. <laughs> I like that. Six Warden, four Porcelain. Oh, I mean, it is kind of like a real strategy to like run a two item carry if you can play Orin. Yeah, it and is. And you can like uh, guarantee your, your Orin like uh, forges onto your unit. Because mm -hmm. the, 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 like, the Orin items are not like the literal Orin items, but the items that Orin forges are actually like really high quality. They're like, I think they're like, they take from the same pool that like Binder used to take from. Yeah, they tailor, which is really, really good. Okay, Relic is dead. Man, three rounds, five players eliminated. It was very close. Ari's Kiss grants increased player health. Okay. That's good for uh, for Kevin Parker. Okay, so this just can't work anymore. Mm -hmm. Or you can say, <laughs> I mean, at this point, you don't want to stack it. At this point, you can say it's always working. You're always getting the extra HP. Oh, yeah, fair enough. The score wars scrapper has gotten two procs, it looks like. <laughs> Two AP. That's not bad. Actually, one proc, one proc, because it's one point five. Oh. <laughs> uh, that's funny. And I think it was the very first round of the game. After that, it's all been. All been top four. I guess uphill. Yeah. It's all been uphill. All been uphill since then. I mean, like I said, if you take this Augment scoreboard scrapper and you're just in the top four all the game, it's like, well, I guess that, that, that's a good thing. You, you top four. Mm -hmm. I mean, hey, if you top four the entire game, you can't top four. Yeah, true. Is Nar broke? I'm pretty sure Nar is really good. And I think part of the reason why we were playing Nar incorrectly is because we kept playing it with Kindred. Which you can't even, you, you, that's not even like a bad idea because it's a two cost dryad. And you're like, okay, yeah, I mean, like, it, it, it kind of makes sense. It's actually just sort of like really strange to me that like Nara doesn't get played with Kindred. I'm not saying it doesn't make sense in the context of this board, but like the fact that like you're rerolling one two cost dryad as your main carry and you don't even reroll the other two cost dryad. Right. It's very unintuitive based off the way things are designed, but I think that's what, I think that's what makes it cool because like all, everyone who tried Nara reroll has either tried it in like a too healthy situation and you were just playing so many two costs it didn't matter or they're playing with kindred this is the first time that i we're seeing this kind of result from uh a core build of 
of these ink shadow this is this is a scene exclusive i haven't seen any region not cn do this i mean hey i'm, I'm not selecting this sounds pretty good i know i'm snatching this Almost to the point where I kind of want to DM the NA guys and just be like, yo, are you guys playing these these lines? What does this Ink Shadow item do? It's called the uh, Tattoo of Vitality and the attacks heal for uh, like 2% of their max HP, but more importantly, it deals the same amount as bonus damage. So usually you put it on like a, like a melee unit that has a lot of HP. Specifically in Ink Shadow, it's best on Udyr. He got is literally playing this comp right now. Amazing. Okay. Solid top three. I feel like, okay, so my my analysis of Kanan and Morgana is that they feel a lot like kind of like a Karthus Akali, where um you just you just kind of play for like a like a like a really solid top four and you kind of package around it. You could play Heavenly, I guess, in this case. You play Ghostly, you can just play like bruisers and stuff like that as well um but uh i don't feel like you win very many lobbies with this comp i don't know if you feel similarly about it yeah i think that's pretty fair i've been thinking about like how to cap the comp out but um the items are like i mean they're not like completely inflexible but i think a lot of like the melee carries that all, like the five cost melee carries um have a hard like hard time carrying items like that Rudir comes to mind but i think wukong is a little bit underpowered so yeah, I, agree. I think you need like a lot of gold to like transition your board off of kane and morgana because i yeah. think both of them fall off late game morgana just stops doing enough damage uh, i think wukong can and... do it it's just you need him to get like two star and a full support like you just need to set him up correctly uh and that's like that's too far there's a big gap between hitting Morg 2, Kane 2, and then having the setup where you can kind of transition to Wukong. Hmm. You're kind of missing a step or two to get to there safely. Oh, oh, APM Demon. Maybe we don't know. Ice is uh, allegedly, this is according to what China believes, but his reputation in China is that he is the reason why Think Fast got removed because he isn't. He's an APM God. He says that he can do 10 repositions in under a second. Not bad. I don't know if I believe that. Just putting it out there, but he, he says he can do that. <laughs> I also don't know what reposition means in this context, but uh. Or he, he basically says he can do like ten actions in a, in a second at, within one second, including things like repositioning and and stuff like that. Probably not itemization, but in terms of swapping things. Man, he, this might be the first time we see it win, though, if it can win against Safo's board. I feel like Safo's board is capping kind of low at the moment. Oh, he has 50 gold. That's why. It's just that he's playing, like... Well, Ice does have a 70 gold, though. Oh, that is true. In this exchange, it doesn't look like there's a lot of tanking going on besides the Alawi. But maybe this mm -hmm. set two from Safo like just keeps scaling higher and higher. How much yeah. DD? How much set DD? two. Maybe you can get to seven one. Um, get a last item. Who knows? Maybe a set just like one shots the Nar. Yeah, set is scaling. I mean, Silver Veil here is actually a really big deal as well, stopping the stun. Mm -hmm. I like that Ice is splitting his snipers as well at this point. It makes set value lower as well. Oh my god, oh. the Syndra lived! Yeah, the Syndra just barely lived. Oh man. Man A. It's a That's Morello crazy. diff. Wow. Level nine. I mean, also, oh. yeah, I'm, I'm kinda surprised. Like I, I know these like none of these are good Caitlyn items, so I'm kinda surprised that the Caitlyn didn't one shot at three star. Uh, wow, Caitlyn was second highest deep. What? 
1100 physical damage. Yeah, me too, actually. Huh. Literally any leftover items on Caitlyn. Okay. He doesn't have the he doesn't have the last whisper in front of the Nar. I don't know if that matters. He's on the back line already. Set is just wasting his time on these units that don't matter. Indra. Oh, set blocks the, the, the ability. That happens to every single one of my sets. Zonius hasn't activated yet. Oh, Zonius cheesing. Wait, Zendra. Oh, oh my God. The... Okay, so that time it did one shot. Wow. All right. All right. That's a hot <laughs> hit. That's crazy. Yeah, this, this Zonius is actually so crazy on this Indra. It just like lets her scale up, gain more butterflies. And she just like one shots like boards. Yeah. You know what this might be? This might be a no score scrapper, scoreboard scrapper value diff. Because oh, like if we're able to get a little bit extra more AP. With, yeah, but at the same time, like it's also easy, really easy to look the other way and say like if you didn't have, you know, yeah, 50 extra yeah. HP. Oh. Why? Holy. Double I oh my holy. god. Oh, dude, he's going to crit so hard. 95% crit. Like full damage. Wow. Giga Chad set. And he's at 233 AD now. Oh, one item I really like building on set, just as a tangential. I actually really like building QSS on set because it kind of stops him from bugging out as much as he normally does sometimes. Yeah. And also, like, his, his autos hurts, and just letting him auto with, you yeah. know, like, plus, like, 200 base AD is kind of crazy. And, like, by now he would have cast it instead of yeah, exactly. not casting. Was there, was there a Quicksilver option? Uh, no, no, no. It's just something, just like something that uh, an item I like building on set that, like, I don't see a lot of people build, so. Just putting that out there. Man, there's just too much stuff. I don't think it's un unwinnable, or maybe it is, but, like, I'd like to see a try from Safo to, uh, maybe even stop reading the push up setup value on set. Like, you're, you've already, like, stacked them, stacked them as high as he's gonna go. Um, and try to get sets to actually like ult something important because I think this fight it ulted the Lowey one. The fight before it ulted like something not very useful. If you can like actually ult the Nar or the Nautilus or something, oh, and actually get three. rid of like, or... Okay, but he's not gonna hit. I mean, oh, he's so far away. Maybe if he hits Chosen Set. Chosen Set. No. No, but you can have Set Benches Bros. Okay. Nice. Nice. <laughs> oh, he did! He did it! Uh, it's a uh, it's Camp Canute, featuring uh, Mizkif here. No items right here. <laughs> All right, well, uh, that's uh, that's gonna be game number four in the books. Ice wins with the Nar build. Six wardens. Holy! I'm pretty sure warden is very busted. Also, I didn't realize that Morgana did the dance at the end. Uh, I think I want to hop out. Okay. This one. GGs. Thanks, Rain, for stopping by. Was fun. You want to say any any plugs or uh, or or any oh, sellout yeah. moment? Oh, yeah. Hashtag Edge moments before you leave. Uh, what am I plugging? I'll plug myself, I guess. Uh, I guess I'm 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 different because I'm also gonna be playing in a PB tournament. Not quite as prestigious as this one, but you know, same prize pool. So, so also paying for. Playing for 1500. Also, what else? Oh, I made a YouTube short. Like, I, oh. I don't know. Uh, a YouTube and, uh, short? Can I watch it? Yeah, about, yeah, Where sure. YouTube.com uh, slash. It, it kind of sucks because I don't, I don't know how to edit stuff at all, but I was just trying notes. It's at about the TFT. Trash to Treasure Reforged Tech. So if you don't know that yet, so for you, but yeah, most fun hanging out. Um, 
if you still doing this tomorrow, I think I, I'll, I'll probably also join for like the first four games or so. Okay. Sounds good. Have a good day, Rain. I was going to say night. Have a good day. <laughs> Have Bye. a good day for you as well. Okay. Uh, so. <clears throat> Let's do a points updates after four rounds. Actually, round five real quick. Round five. Uh, we have to make sure we're picking the right lobbies. I'm doing... I bef Yesterday, we picked... Yesterday, we picked lobby one. Ging, Dish Soap, Miguel, TB, Chuso, YFTX, Kiki, and Salvi. For round five. I think that's a pretty good one. We haven't watched any Dish Soap today. I'm down to watch some Dish Soap. Wait. No, was, wait, lobby four. Uh, do we have the right one? Okay, we're right now in Snooty Boo, Kiyun, Potty Ball, Flancy, Skip, and Kevin Park. Do you want the? Do you want lobby four or lobby one? I think we're supposed to go lobby one. I kind of want to watch some dish soap. I haven't watched some dish soap. I'm down to watch some dish soap. <clears throat> Need some PP action. Okay. Uh, let's do so. So based off round four, let's go ahead and do scores. So scores. Juan May won. Oh my God. CN won everything. Salvi third. Not bad. Rafo top four. Precedent went fifth. YFTX won. Lelouch second. Q went eighth. Coco and Sean's. Dasic won. Clancy in second, Che Che in Sloga Song. We just saw Malala go eighth. Uh, RY wins, TB, Allen, ZQ, and uh, Spencer went top four. Then Rico, Dale Som, Ging, and Dish Soap. Oh my God. Dude, China is crushing it. They sent eight players one, two, three, four, five, six in the top 13. 62nd is in it. Ahau is 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 also competitive as well. Oh no. China is kicking our ass. EMEA is doing well. Oh, uh the thing is, I think EMEA has like 20 players. So, it's actually literally impossible for EMEA players to not get through. Just just saying. Just saying. <laughs> I mean, you you can you can you can talk about it all you want, but in the end, we won Vegas, and uh, we won Worlds twice, and uh, I don't know. It, it, like you guys got you guys got second in worlds because title ended the, the lobby and you just so happened to be second place during that time. So yeah. Maybe if some NA players would show up, you might perform well. <laughs> I mean, you got us there. You got us there. Kiyun is going is going dead last though. All right, here we go. Round five of six. Ambience volume. Okay, Anvil, Anvil Buffet. So all enemy drop best component anvils. Prismatic finale. All augments offer this game with prismatic tier and wandering trainers. NA equals not awake. <laughs> uh, man, I can't even say anything because you're kind of right about that. <clears throat> man, what, what can I? What, what's even my? What's even my 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 counter to that? We just have to hold that.
here's the thing what if we still show up emea in this tournament even though uh some of our players didn't even bother showing up and a equals not attending <laughs> oh no yasuo senna yorick bard nautilus Lisa lissandra i mean you guys talk a tough game but like if you guys have to host a tournament where you guys have 65 percent of the slots so that way you can make final day i mean that's that's one way i guess you could get uh get to the final lobby all right anyways salvi yftx why is is a player that i actually know some of the least about also they got they got dish soap's name wrong they got it is dish ope <laughs> dish ope all right yftx i know he's um i know he's made it to regionals before but yftx okay he got second at msi that's kind of his claim to fame that's about it he's a little bit on the newer side of competing though he's been competing looks like since he looks like he started in set eight One, twos, threes. He needs to clear his bench, though. Sword. So he wants to lean AD because he has the Sivir, too. You can go Rageblade. Rageblade Infinity Edge. Oh, Cloak. Okay, he got Kabuko, Timo, Diana. I just want to. I just want to play this. I my my. If I was in this spot, I'd probably slam two ADMs on Sivir. I'd probably go for uh, Last Whisper plus one. He goes Last Whisper BT. Interesting. Really interesting. It's very open ended, right? It depends on like what you think is good and what you're open to. I thought that, the reason why I kind of thought that he wanted to go for two items on Sivir is because this is two star unit and he wants to play around it. But like fundamentally it'd be like hey this is my best unit on my board i want to itemize around it but he chooses to slam bt and this is making me think that he might end up angling into a reroll comp like yone but i'm not entirely sure he also could be he, he also could be trying to play the nar build maybe he's just straight up saying like i want to play nar reroll and uh i i have the last whisper for senna and now i have a uh, bt titans that i can kind of go for so those are two possibilities. Why FTX already slam BT Titan? And you know what I just realized? BT Titan slam now gives you options for Nar and Yone. So now you have a now you have a couple of different comps you can play, and then you can also just play it on like a four cost like Silas, and it's totally fine. So I, I I'm actually I feel like okay wow I feel like the pathability of what I'm watching develop in front of my eyes for the metagame is actually starting to open up my eyes for the set. Huh. Rageblade Archangels. Interesting. I mean, Rageblade could be seen as a mana generation item. But that... The reason why I hesitate to say Bard is because I don't know if Archangels is really good on him. And when you slam Archangels, you aren't going... Oh, is he going to go for Janna? oh he's playing twisted fate <laughs> yeah it's a, it's a disco it's a disco pivot ari for chuso but he's he's four out of ten so he's not uh re-rolling volibear oh yeah you're right volibear can play bt titans bt titan seems like a really good setup then interesting so i think i think dish soap's read might be shifting mid tournament yeah, he's holding this double Aatrox as well. That this is this is one of the coolest things about these early PB tournaments. That's why you want to watch these because you're watching the meta shift in real time. Hey, okay, Dishop loses. Y F T X. Very strong start. We have a Yone. What looks like to be Bard. What looks like to be Janna. 
and uh a couple other open-ended things but looks like he's gonna re-roll like it looks like it's gonna be mostly a re-roll Yeah, Seth and I agree. That's, that's, I was saying that. I think uh, I think he's trying out the the Nar comp because we've been we've been playing Nar mainly with Kindred most of PB, and it kind of makes sense because it's two cost Dryads, so it feels like like they, they complement each other. They're the same tier as each other. You don't really get item screws, so you can split it out play for like a vertical dryad or you can like play too healthy there's like a lot of different things you can do and it was okay it was like a it was like a tier 2.5 build this build looks kind of straight up like s tier four on bro Oh, Miguel's playing uh, Seten Yone, i.e. Hodge, Titans. The interesting thing about uh, Yone that we've also kind of started to see is that no one is prioritizing defensive, um, like pure defensive items, like Edge of Night and Quicksilver. Or like a defensive utility item is another way you can say it. People are just building like three offensive items or three three direct combat items. I guess all items are combat related. You get what I'm saying. Working out with set makes you bigger. You know what I should do? Every time this happens, I should just have some weights in my room and I just do squats with him. He does like six or seven squats. And uh, every day is leg day anyways, right? <laughs> I also didn't I skipped I skipped my workout yesterday so now it's like reminding me I should work out maybe I'll work out after uh, today's stream a okay, disop is uh on the uh, lost two but that's okay because uh he has nar two and also Working out with set makes you bigger. <laughs> Sharing is carrying. Not bad. King's at 66 HP. Oh, he's playing fortune. He's playing fortune. Oh my God. <laughs> what is this 60 double rage blade uh, oh my god oh janna too is there a reason why this janna looks like super tiny the modeling doesn't make sense to me it, 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 does he have maybe it's just relative to the little legend size yeah, yeah, I think I think the little legends uh, scaling is throwing me off. Okay, let's look at fortune. Four player combats until rewards. Oh god. Okay, so uh, let's see how this Janna board does. Just so it's at four Nars right now, so he's looking pretty good. I.E. Last Whisper. All right. So he's, you just prioritize Senna or Nar items. This is Nar. This is uh, this over Salving.
I mean, if, if you can if you can get Janna going, it's good. The problem is his front line is not uh, solid enough, but I see the vision. It feels it feels like if Janna has even a little bit extra combat power, she can like go infinite type of units in the early mid game. Heavy hitters, Nar. Wait a second. Oh my god. Nar pair. Aatrox 2. Kaisa! Wait, don't you just play Kaisa here? Oh wait, he wants to get Kaelin in for the ghost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no, he just cuts the warden. Okay, I see. So you're not playing warden for Nar. Tattoo of protection. I mean, that's just you just putting items on Nar too, while it makes sense. Ging, to know your enemy. Tristana two roll down for Kiki. Looks like he's going duelist. Salvi did roll a little bit. Has a uh, five Janas. Chuso has Epoch and switching gears. YFTX has Gargantuans. Looking pretty good for dish soap. Did they removed last stand final reserve. Yeah, they did. Has Janna worked? It's been we've seen like one time Janna did well, and then uh, I think we've seen it a few times it bought forward. Okay, that's good. Now we have frontline finally for this Janna. And magic wand is re relevant as well because it keeps everyone alive. I, I can see I can see Salvi doing well from here. Chuso went seven. Oh right, he's playing switching gears. He has epoch. Miguel, hanging strong with the Yone, all one star board and Janna too. Looks like he's had good matchmaking as well, playing against like Ging, for example. Okay. This Yone is doing a lot of work right now. Getting focused by Kogmal though. Oh, that shield? Oh, nice try. Ging at 33 life. Yeah, that is not looking good. Swiftly. Dude, Ging and Kiki, 43 and 33 life. That is not looking too hot. Sen and Nardu, I'm not going to lie. I try to understand. Okay, so the first thing to understand is that in contrast to Kindred and Nar, you're you're stacking the same type of damage, which is really good if you're trying to be efficient with your itemization for Shred. So you build Last Whisper. It's good for Senna and it's good for Nar. Second of all, uh, the stats that you get for, the, st for the, the traits that you activate, like Warden and Ghostly and Sniper are really cheap. Like everyone knows the Sniper opening is pretty good. You guys remember when I was putting Senna at S tier at the very beginning of the PB, like about a week ago? It's because I felt like early game she was really good and she activated Ink Warden. And so she gave you a lot of a pa combat power and the, the tattoo was always high tempo. But um, uh, Nar is a really interesting piece to this because he's not only high tempo and tanky, but he also scales. And so, uh, like, because of, of the Dryad. And so, uh, with the Warden and Dryad, and then you have the Ink Warden ghostly kind of template to help sc the scale the fight as you go longer, it kind of works really nicely together. What's really surprising is how good it is late game. But I think that's because of how busted Warden is. I'm pretty sure when Riot nerfs Warden, this comp's going to struggle more or suffer for it. So I'm pretty sure this comp is like almost ex encapsulating perfectly what makes Warden really, really busted. All right, here we go. Ging's cash outs. Third 
33. Oh, God. Okay. Story of Emblem, maybe? Sage Emblem. Oh, man. He's rolling here not so he can stabilize. Okay, he's hitting some units. But it is not looking too hot. He does have Zoe too. Is he going to reroll Zoe from here? Maybe. I feel like I would rather reroll Zoe than go for um, level eight. I'm pretty sure if he goes to level eight, he's going to go eight. That this is this is kind of the position I played a couple day a couple times yesterday where I was just like, okay, what do I do? Uh, oh, Miguel disconnected and reconnected. Kiki is in a bad spot for sure. Very, very bad spot. He's his tempo duelist is really behind. You're supposed to play duelist from ahead. You remember like the first game when um, Malala was like 100 HP streaking with duelist all the way to the end of stage three. That's when he played duelist. Looks like he's playing loose streak duelist, which is like, I don't think there's ever been a meta ever across all the duelists like set four uh set eight and now set 11 where like duelist has ever been good from behind i guess we can do a quick scout as well miguel is struggling and he's he's top of hp so you kind of need to pause for this Salvi has seven Janas. Um, kind of hard to tell with the the sepia tone. I feel like I'm in. I feel like when you pause, I'm kind of like an Instagram from uh, 2010, where like everyone's like, "Oh shit, I'm a photographer. Look at this. I had a sepia tone. And I'm gonna emphasize the shadows. I'm gonna crop it so it like features this in the foreground." Man. I mean, I, I'm only know because that's that, that's what I did back in like 2010. All right. Uh, YFTX. What is he playing? Oh, he took our Gantry Resolve 3 2. Kane. Oh, is he playing Silas? Ooh. I would love to see that. I would love to see that. That's cool. Okay, looks like uh, they're struggling. Let me see if I can bring up another stream while we wait here. I'll put someone up in the background. Look at uh, press events game in the meantime, in between time. Currently paused, so waiting for that. <clears throat> Let me hide his chat so that we can get the, the, the full, as much as full screen as we can. Precedent is playing. It's going to be epic. And trying to play around Lilia. Okay. So he's slamming Lilia items. He's really rich. Oh, he has, he has hedge fund. Going against Relic, who has Clutter Mine and Baboom. Lilia in general is pretty probably the most consistent for cost we've seen but we have seen some really good moments from morgana if you can hit as well as uh we have actually seen kaisa be one of the surprise for cost that one game where ice uh played kaisa fast nine and then won won the game Ash has been surprisingly not as uh, effective as I thought, but it could be that the meta is too fast for her. I do think Ash is a, in general is more reliable. I just I, we just haven't seen much Ash today, and it, and it also could very well be just the lobbies we're watching. 
just just uh fy like you could if you told me like well i saw like disop or sologa song like, you know these other people play it i i would believe you best three cost rerolls so far um well yone has won a game uh zoe has top two multiple times bard also did well so it looks like zoe i think zoe yone and bard are the three best uh aphelios has uh been very we haven't seen much of aphelios and i don't know if that's because people don't believe it or it's um or it's just not that common and then duelists i think only one we only saw one player top four with duelists so far it was like yone three oh sorry it was uh it was weird though. It was a Volibear three plus a Soraka three, and then all, all and then duelists. Very unusual setup, but the Volibear was like kind of going crazy. Surprisingly, the story of the tournament has been two cost reroll. A lot of uh, a lot of Nar with Aatrox and Senna and then Janna and Zyra has been rerolled a lot today and Teemo man precedent is so rich he has a hundred gold and he's at level seven. Oh my god he actually has enough gold to go straight to level nine next turn like next turn if uh if he if he just straight up presses the buy exp he can go straight from seven to nine that's how rich he is i think he would have like 10 gold but he could man what is going on is miguel just unable to reconnect yeah disconnected reconnected disconnected reconnected disconnected reconnected disconnected uh oh that would suck because miguel's in a in a pretty decent spot hp wise I mean, he's first oh really good is the president's gonna go for a big roll down here None of these probably. Oh, he's an extra reroll from probably the the encounter. I wouldn't mind just taking Jewel Lotus, and but he has an extra reroll. All right, we are back. Good luck, press event. Did Miguel reconnect? He did. He did. Okay. Thank goodness. All right. I'm not gonna lie. I kind of want to watch Preston's roll down. Oh, he's not rolling down. He's going to level nine. Oh, Giga Chad. All right. Okay. Never mind. You can see, I knew he had so much gold. Anvil Buffet. Wow. Uh, Hodge. I don't know if that's as good, though. Steadfast. Hodge. Does he want to go IE? Damn, that was so fast. Wow. Oh, you know what he could have done? He could have taken um He could have taken an item for uh for Aatrox. Oh. Theris Gage. Oh, I get it, I get it. Because Gage Gage BT has a really interesting combo okay i like that and also also he has a lot of hp scaling with uh heavy hit or with dry dryad and then his heavy hitters is really nice too i will say that heavy hitters gives him more flat ad so it's a little bit less good but um rather a le little bit it's not as it's not as important but it's still good man i'm getting more dogged again i do like going for third item on nar dryad crest Q Janus, thank you for the prime. Welcome. Nice to have you. Uh, do you want Dryad Crest at all? Is it even good in this line? I don't I don't know. 
Maybe Capricious Forge for just the the Aatrox three. <clears throat> four wardens, six dryad slabs. Well, sure, but you're you're saying if we randomly get four more dryads? Yeah, that sounds sounds really good. I guess you could just dryad Aatrox, and then just go for like Azir or Orn. That doesn't even sound bad. Ging, four sage, four Arcanist. He actually did go for level eight. He abandoned Zoe. He's going up against Disoap. I just realized that Disoap also has gained 50% max health shield. So he has actually three shields. He has a shield at 60, 50, and 40%. Oh, wow. Ouch. Okay. I mean, GS is really good here, and he has four sage. I'm a, I'm a little bit surprised that uh, it went so one-sided. What, what? Why was that so one-sided? I guess he doesn't really have tank items. Three component anvils. I mean, that's pretty good if he wants to itemize his Aatrox and his Gnar as well. Senna 3 is pretty important. Nice. Huge. Bow. I think I think Titans is a big deal. I'm pretty sure this tattoo of protection is not that good. Titans, Titans, Titans. Fuck it, double IE. Okay, he's probably going Hodge. Okay, got the four Dryad. Probably Hodge here for max crit. 100% crit Senna. I like it. Okay, it's looking way better now. Because he has, he has so much shielding and he wants the resistances for Gnar. Okay, and Salvi, by the way, is still stuck on Janna, too. <clears throat> Just on a three for Kiki. Kiki is stabilizing. Rakan, Zaya, and Azir. Syndra and Lilia are not very balanced. You think so? I feel like I feel like they are uh, the some of the stronger four cost to play around, but I feel like they're more balanced than some of the other things. Okay, we get to see some duelist action, but we're pretty far behind the Volibear Bear counts, and we're stuck on five duelists. Unfortunately, he didn't get plus one duelist or anything that's good for it. Okay, Volibear. Bear. YFTX and seven Story Weaver. Oh, Story Weaver Lee Sin. Whoa, I was not expecting that. Red buff. Oh. And then what is this? Kale, uh, shred. Kale's deal thirty percent shred and thunder. Attacks grant Kale fifty percent or five percent attack speed. And her Kale deals 10% more damage. Okay. Lee Sin didn't even get full stacks. Doesn't matter though. Seven Soy Weaver Kale, too good. Oh my god. You know what's so tilting about this, though, is that you deal minimal damage. You win by Kale. You win by less than a champion. <laughs> it's the minimal amount of damage possible. Also, things are not looking good for Miguel. He just TP'd back in after he reconnected. Lost four in a row. Went from 84 HP to 38. Yikes. That is not looking good. Ging is streaking now. Four stage, know your enemy. 
He's linking the Ari and the Syndra to deal some major DPS. Rodan, happy to see you are still here. Are you finished with Heartsteel casting? I am. I am. Heartsteel was last set in set 10. This set is called Inkborn Fables. There's no Heartsteel. Instead, it's Fortune. Fortune. I'm Fortune casting now. <clears throat> Man, Syndra is kind of good. Like the Sage kind of compensates for the Arcanist, right? Because you get 35 more AP for six Arcanist, but you get 45, so he's a little bit better. Okay, not bad. And the Silas Arcanist is actually kind of a kind of a unit. Oh my god. Dude, Silas. Okay, you know what it is. This comp, Silas Arcanist is nuts. I could see it. You take five or six from a loss of kid. I don't know, actually. I, I, I need to look at it. <clears throat> Hearthstone casting. Oh, yeah. So so Hearthstone casting, uh, I I haven't done Hearthstone casting in quite some time. I I, I don't think it'll be like, I don't think that uh, I'll cast Hearthstone anytime soon. I don't, I'm not even really an esports caster anymore. I'm a, I'm a co-streamer now. And you know what that means? I'm a professional backseater. Hence the, the bio in my Twitch profile. Okay, we got we got the the stuff online and Joseph's now pushing level eight, going against YFTX. YFTX has uh has Lee Sin two now. If we can if we can rush this Lee Sin before he gets the stacks, oh my god, fifteen stacks. Wait a second. Wait a second. Oh my god. I feel like nothing has a single target burst to take this down. I think Ging is the only person that can beat Disso because I feel like nothing has a single target DBS to actually take uh, down Nar. We hit a Loon 3 for Arcjo. Hale's third green slot was very good early as it could revive every unit at 1500 HP. How is it now after it was nerd the 50 still the best option? Well, clearly not because uh, if it was the best option, then uh, YFTX would take it. But then that being said, YFTX is losing. Kiki finally got six duelists, but he stuck on Volibear 2. Oh dear. Preston went seventh. Oh no. He did the soju. He went fast nine with hedge fund into a seventh. Oh man. Oh my god. Wait, Shazana just missed. Shazana just missed. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Close, close, close. Janna. Wait, combat caster Janna? Okay, now I can see. Now I see the vision. Now I see the vision. That is two mythic emblems. Soraka three. Oh, man. Ging made it to nine as well. Hit Alawi two. This you guys this is a great recovery game for Ging. You guys remember Ging was um Ging was at 20 this he had 21 HP and he cashed out with fortune he got a tome. He got a tome and got a, a sage crest and everyone's like, "Well, he's probably dead." This is an excellent recovery. This guy is kind of a demon. Oh my god, speaking of demons, this Silas is disgusting. What the heck? Every time he casts, he kills a unit. He cast again. Oh, he didn't cast. <gasps> he didn't cast a loon. Oh, that was so close. 
BB's just dead. Man, I don't like the way Morgana looks at me like that. She's like staring down in the bottom right corner right at me. How do they get a new Ari Chibi? Because it's on Torment Realm. So Torment Realm is, uh, they can activate special things, including this, this Ari. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, she has nine tails. It's not for married men. It's for me, actually. <laughs> okay. All right. Diso's pushing level nine as well. Salvi's pushing nine. Chuso just hit nine and rolling. He actually didn't go Archangel Staff onto Lilia. It was low damage Lilia. He can go Archangels on Azir. Reinforcement. Why is the score sheet in Spanish? It's hosted by Spanish, uh, the Spanish community. Also, uh, a lot of people in the world speak Spanish, you know? Hey, okay. you're so lost. Here's a, here's a bigger question, Milk. How come you don't speak Spanish? Miguel's dead. Sag. Dear Soap and YFTX are the ones with the, the Morgana. Zeke's or Lockett's? Dear Soap got... Locket as well. Chuso got Locket. Ging got. Oh, is it? Oh, is it? Everyone gets Locket. Looks like everyone picked Locket. No one picked Zeke's. I mean, Locket's just good for your front line, especially for all these units. For all these units that like don't have items, just makes them tankier. Interesting positioning here for Dirso. Ah, look at that. Look at that. Listen, in TFT, you don't get many hype micro, like last second out positions. We take what we can get, you know? Soraka. Soraka is like mana reaving this Gnar. It's kind of annoying. Gnar! Gnar! Oh my god, there's Janna's going infinite. Oh no, the EU tech. YFTX is out in fifth. That's a pretty good fifth, all things considering. Wait, and then Dish up lose the gang. This is gonna get a fourth. I mean, that's fine. Top four is fine. I actually, I actually don't know. I, I actually think this might have been bait. I, I don't know how much, how good uh, four dryad is. If you think about it, I guess he gets three times more HP, so it's good for the Nar. I, I, I feel like Dryad Crest has not been very impressive. It almost goes back to like why we didn't find this particularly very good. If you remember like why we're rerolling, I was talking about it before. We were playing Gnar and uh, Kindred reroll and we were playing like this type of core. And then now China is showing us how to play around uh, it, not for Dryad, but specifically playing around just two and going for other things. Did Soju drop out? Yeah, he dropped out like three hours before the tournament. I'm not gonna lie, man. It's uh, it, it, it's it's making North America look pretty bad because everybody else showed up, and Setsuko and Soju both didn't show up, man. They just literally just 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 left the the, the tournament organizers hanging. Oh, mierda, Senor Froden, Ahmad Musum. Wait, what's what's playing in the background? All right, Disop wins. Nice, nice. The rematch versus Ging. Is Robin playing? No, Robin dropped as well. Were, were they ads? They might be ads. 
Oh, that's Zion Rakan. Oh, <laughs> I don't even know. Are they flirting? Holy shit. Okay, so let me get this right. We have, we have Zion Rakan with lover straight flirting. We have Chibi Ari that blows you a kiss. We have an encounter which uh, Set is just doing straight up squats for you. Why not just have a full on visual, visual novel romance? story going on for the set like maybe the next set is just a dating sim for set 12. i think i feel like i feel like that'll be a way that riot will make tft a billion dollar game actually thanks to thanks to china mobile it already is a billion dollar game but like at this point just go full just lean full into it just make a straight up romance visual novel <laughs> the encounters is choose your own boyfriend or girlfriend or, or waifu and husbando Right? I feel like that's where I feel like that's the path that we're on. Okay, solid third for dish soap. I mean, it's a good enough comp to, to get top three. Dude, this Janna comp. I, I'm 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 a believer now. Janna reroll. When I was playing this, when I was when I was seeing uh, people play this comp, they were playing Zoe as the Pryo instead of Janna, and they would take out this uh, this Morgana. I mean, obviously it's, it's level nine, so it's different, but they would play Zoe three instead. It's Janna with the Rage Blades. Man, everyone brought tech. Everyone brought tech. China this tournament brought Nar. EU brought Janna, and North America brought excuses. Those are the big three texts we learned from today. Man, it's a first. <clears throat> Our three most popular streamers even show up. I'm pretty sure if you look up who are the three most popular streamers in TFT, all of them said yes and then didn't even show up. All right, well, that's, uh, looks like we still have one more game going. Ice, Bintum, Coco. Is Lococo streaming? Nope, he's not. Bintum, uh, I mean, Korea got, 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 got gapped on Twitch. Preston, uh, went seventh. I guess we'll do a score update. We'll do a score update. All right, <clears throat> let's go ahead and update round five of six. We just watched that lobby. Salvi, Chuso, Disop, and Ging. It's an EMEA top four. In lobby four, we have Potty Bowl. Key wins second. Snooty Boo and Kevin Parker. Oh, wow. EMEA popping off. Uh, looks like Kudza and Bintum are like 1-2 right now. Relic. Oh, Codes of Bentham, and then third is uh I don't know who PB3 is, the Spanish player. And then Coco. Wait, EMEA popped off this round. Relic, Allen, Michael, and Shantz, top four here. And then uh 62nd, Safo, Dion, and Juanme. Then lobby six, we have uh, Malala. Oh, Malala won! Yeah, that's huge because Malala went eighth in round four. We, we watched Malala go eighth round four. That's huge. That's huge. Okay, so Malala, Malala with the first. You need Dasic. And um, I think this is... Wait, is this Canvas? No, Canvas actually has his username. I don't know. Hello. Hello. What's up? Who's there? That's uh, it's dish soap. Oh, what up, dish soap? Okay, I, I, man. I, I, I can't go. I, I can't stop going third and fourth, man. You say like that? That's like a bad thing. No, but like like three of these games, like I can just win. But unfortunate things happened. Okay. Do you feel like you're playing well though? No. Oh. Uh. Okay. Well, th then then fix that. There you go. Oh, I'm just tired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I think we all are. I think these tournaments are like the consistent. They're playing on NA servers, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I, like, like everyone just uh, showing off their ping. They're like 150, and I'm just like, 
I'm just sitting here with like 20. So. <laughs> yeah, everyone's doing their ping check. And they're like 150, 200, 300. And then we're, we're here with like 10 to 15 ping. I like it. Okay, dude, what do you think about this uh, Narcop? Did it catch you off guard? Uh, I, I, I knew about it beforehand. Like I saw like the Twitter post. I, I thought it was just like mid, but it's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It's it's really easy to play. I, I didn't I did I I have not played that comp until that last game. Yeah, I mean it looked like you were trying to figure it out on the fly, especially with your anvils, like you were popping in everything like that. Yeah, I, I don't know what items to pry out, but I think I got good enough. Yeah, you got it good enough. I think um I think Titan Titans looks like it was really important on Nar because he was just kind of getting blown up at certain points. I think I'm actually like I, I win that game if uh. I just win that one fight because their uh, Salvi will just kill the other guy, and I always beat Salvi. Yeah. Oh, oh, interesting. Didn't he beat you in the head-to-head -head actually one time? Oh no, that that was when I had that was when I was level eight and I had an Annie one on my board. Ah, and I it, see, I see. And it was, and it was close. Okay, okay, I got it. Uh, where are you for the cut? Oh, you're actually fine for the cutoff for top sixteen. Yeah, I'm just I'm just chilling until they invite me. Okay. Okay. Um, real quick, I'm gonna ask my chat. Do you guys want to watch? Looks like Prestivan and Malala are on the cutoff. So, do you guys want to watch Prestivan or Malala? Prestivan's directly on the cutoff. Malala's slightly above it. We watched two games of Malala. We haven't watched any Prestivan games today. So, to if you want to see a little bit more USA Pride, we can watch. Oh wait, are they in the same lobby? No, it's Prestivan and Michael. Never mind. You guys want to watch Prestivan? All right, where is he? Uh. Oh, they just started. Oh, crap. All right. Well, you guys don't get to choose then. We're going to go to Malala's game. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, okay. Uh, so what do you think about the Janet comp too? The Janet comp actually was something that uh, people thought was also like kind of mid, but it, it seems to be performing pretty decently. Oh, I, I don't know. I know it won the last game, but uh, I, don't know, I, I beat him every single time I fought him and, and, until like that one fight on stage four. Okay, okay. Um, it might just be matchup diff, but like, I don't know who he was beating. I, I guess just the invoker players, like the Lily players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think part of it was that like he hit like three item Janna two very early and hard stabilized and then uh, like tempoed pretty well because he hit Janna three pretty quickly. Um, but I, but to, to that point, we also saw a handful of Janet players, uh, also like go seventh, uh, a couple times as well. So I wasn't sure, but E it's like, it's like China played a lot of NAR today. E you play a lot of Janna and, uh, NA, <laughs> NA didn't even show up. So. <laughs> Wait, really? We're not doing that bad. No, I'm sorry. I meant like Soju and Sensuko dropped out of the tournament. So. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> uh, oh. Wait, I don't, have I seen this one before? Darius? Enemies can drop 30% chance for loot. All right, I'm out of here. Peace. Good luck. Good luck. You got this, buddy. All right. Wishing, uh, wishing dish so best of luck. Sorry we missed out on press event, you guys. It was uh, just a little bit slow. This is round six of six, and we are on uh, Darius Encounter. And then the Exalted is, um, about to find out. It is Sivir, Shanna, Shen, Tristana, Silas. <clears throat> All right, so Malala needs a top... I think he needs like a top three to guarantee it. But uh, he's in a pretty good spot, I think. Even if he goes fourth, he should be able to go through. Fifth puts him in like a spot where I think it kind of depends on how everyone else does. I've never seen this encounter. Players probably play Super Hightail. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Uh, the portal. I should probably write the portal back down Darius which is like uh 30% loot okay. silver to start things off five item opener Pandora's for potty bowl toady 
Actually, let's go ahead and look at Malala's spot. Switching gears or the golden remover or buried treasures. I mean, I'm a big fan of golden remover. Big, big, big fan. Uh, switching gears is good as well if you want to convert off gold. Uh, buried treasures also just gives you an immense amount of tempo. Like, I can see, like, a case for any of them. But this component item anvil gives him three full items already. So it's like, that's actually really good. Stone plate. Blue buff. Blue buff rage blade. You also rage blade archangels. Play for Janna if he's willing to do that. I don't know. Death cap shiv. He didn't level. Law stayed low level. Okay. Not making gold. Interesting. Very interesting set of decisions. Uh, from the augments to the to the itemization to the not leveling. It seems like Malala really likes stone plate for his tempo options. BT Titan Slam here for Snooty. Ice, Rage Blade, Guard Breaker, pretty generic. It looks like it looks like Ice really likes Rage Blade. All all these players have like a specific kind of like um uh framework with which they're kind of playing. Like Ice has slammed Rage Blade every single game I've seen him. Malala has slammed Stone Plate every single game I've seen him. What makes Golden Remover special? You get infinite uses of it. You can use it to remove forever. Which, uh, if you say, like, what do you do with the second remover? You just use it immediately because it fills up your bench. You actually don't want a second remover on your bench. But, like, d I'm pretty sure Ice would have slammed Rage Blade in Malala's spot. That's what makes it really fascinating. What about Solus? Isn't he the early set peaker? What? No one was talking about Solus. I wasn't even thinking about Solus until you brought him up. Is Solus even playing TFT? I feel I thought Solus uh I thought Solus isn't playing PB right now. Blue buff and Rage Blade. A lot of Rage Blade. This was exactly the spot that I thought um, Malala could go for. And, and, and to, to his point, it could very well be Malala said, hey, I see a bunch of people slamming things like Rage Blade. I, I just don't want to contest that type of uh, line. And also, what kind of sets up well with Stone Plate is maybe setting things up for... Like, keeping himself to play Blue Buff, Nashers, Death Cap. He is playing low. Ooh, but Malala's playing low tempo, though. He's holding so many uh, pairs. And this is uh, this is one of those snowballing portals where you get uh, the more you win, you win harder. Okay, what's Malala going to go for? Two cost tier on a Kindred. Gunblade. Oh no, he already uses rods. Shojin is an open tier. So instead of blue buff, he goes Shojin. Plus, it's, a, it's, it's an Alawi. It's pretty good. Maybe he's gonna go. Uh, maybe he's gonna go Syndra Lilia. Not entirely sure. Very open ended. He's playing faded with this. He's playing over encumbered. For the next stage, you only get two bench slots. Afterwards, get three item components. Some people said, doesn't this feel like so much not worth it compared to buried treasures? Where you get uh, two components. The third component is a really big deal. Because a lot of times you do have an odd number of components. So, yeah. Okay, Law is going to go for an Arcanist setup. We'll check back in with him in a little bit. In the meantime, Kiki... Just has two stars across the board. I'm trying to see like what he's playing for high tempo. He slams Vow. Morello Shojin. 
just high tempo slams he's just trying to play for like a solid top four Luch as well looks like Luch loses more like the lose am I right I'm realizing we got a lot of uh we, we got a lot of world's finalists Kiki multi-time world finalist Luch set seven worlds potty bowl uh set four and set Ice set 10, Lala set 10, and world champ. Lala's trying to four loss. Let's see if Kiki can do it. Also, I think I'm going to bring up the uh, point standings just to see if I can uh, keep track of who's playing for what. In this lobby, Kiki's at 18. He basically needs a first and some luck. No, it's actually impossible to make it. It's impossible for him to make it. Okay, so Kiki can't make it. Lelouch. Lelouch is 21. And I think 20... I think 29 is going to be the cutoff. Yeah, I think 29, 30 is going to be the cutoff. So Lelouch needs a first, basically, to get through. Balotelli is 23. He needs basically like a, like a second or third. Hade Ball is 23 as well. So same boat. Okay, so Pade Ball and Balotelli are 23. Snooty Boo from Spain is at 26. He's him and Malali are in the same, the same exact boat. 26 points. Solid top four finish should be put him in a good spot to qualify. Toady is dead. He's he's dead. He's at 11 points. And Ice is uh, guaranteed three. He's first in point. He's first in point. So the people that are capable of making, of having their fate in their hands, so to speak, is Malala, Snooty, Pade Bowl, and uh, Balotelli. Give. This looks like. I mean, just playing AP. So he's playing Ash. Spark. EG. See if he keeps up the streak going up against Malala. Is Vow. I mean, early Kindred 2 is really good for tempo still, for sure. Eco 2 for Malala. Interesting that he, like, is not uh, having uh, Alawi get, like, the full don't play value, but it looks like it makes sense because. Uh, she died before she could cast again. Hey, Malala, we need something kind of good here. I'm not even, I don't even know what we want, for quite, quite frankly. These kinds of positions, yesterday, uh, you guys saw, I, I, I kind of failed to pull it back from deficits. Too healthy? Oh, you could Teemo this. You could Teemo this. Cybernetic Bulk. Oh, man. I actually, I actually think too healthy was literally the same but better wait a second he's playing three two cost on his board man i'm getting more dogged again you might not know the variation he might not know the variations because you can actually play an ap um you can actually play an ap two healthy board you play four bruisers you play riven uh and atrox and then you play janna and like Zyra or something like that and then you play like Morgana for your stage and then you can play like Kane or Silas or whatever like that as your secondary that was a board that we played yesterday and it's, it's actually quite good I think Malala actually had a had a really good two healthy setup there bloody wow thank you for the prime it's a knowledge game yeah also by the way for what it's worth Malala uh just started playing the set a couple days ago like he's also behind but uh you know, he, 
he he basically hasn't been playing as much set 10 either also do you guys think that these items are better on Ari I think it might be he has a he has a remover he can actually remove and put these items on Ari too Choose an effect, component anvil or 10 gold. Okay, he pops it. Probably like belt. Play for frontline. Lamus. Cybernetic, okay. Got it. Alright, let's uh let's cool it on Malala's POV for a little bit. Ice is looking a lot stronger. Ari super weak. Nah, look at the difference between uh, Ice's setup. He's playing around Ari as well, but is he's actually preserving a lot of HP. Ari's not weak. Ari's actually quite good. He also took the D Claw augment. Interesting. Like three two. I usually take it at three at two one. Really interesting. <clears throat> Lala, oh no. Oh boy, things are looking kind of bad for Malala. And if he goes eighth, he's definitely not through. Okay. Do all the en encounters reduce the amount of skill expression this set? I don't think so. I think if your take is uh, all encounters just reduce skill expression, I think um, you're like in the camp variance equals bad. And I think that's just not true. There's all kinds of variance. There's variance that is like there's like there's there's like there's like variants that can help define the game. There's variants that don't really impact the game at all. There's like good kinds of variants, bad kinds of variants. There's healthy variants, there's unhealthy variants. Um, so like I, if you're like encounters are just like low skill expression, blah blah blah, like, and you're saying like all of them are bad, I think that's a really lazy take. Okay, we hit a Syndra. Playing around Syndra. <laughs> Got it. So he wanted to play Syndra, so he's not going to play around too healthy. This is probably the reason why. Because he wants to play around like um, Syndra and uh, three cost. Wow, that Thresh Shield. Okay. 37? 37's workable. 37's workable. We saw Ging's hard stabilize with this as well. Th th this is workable. And, and, and if, if, if Mala pulls us back into a, four, a fifth or something like that, we might be we might be okay. Ari kiss. No, why are we working out with sets? Why would you not shiv her? I mean, she's she's often spending her time casting and not uh, autoing, but to your point, it's like he has infinite remover anyways. He also should put this rod on a unit because again, he has infinite remover. I think uh, I think Malala is not playing very clean. Like he has cybernetic bulk. He has infinite remover. You should just put a rod on some units like it's just it's, he's just making mistakes. It's all good. It happens. <clears throat> he's still it's it's still his first like 50 games of the set or something like that give him a little bit of uh give him a little bit of leeway if he's still making these kinds of mistakes you know a month from now I i'm probably gonna give him a lot of grief 
He's washed. All right, rambling. It's okay to not be informed people. Yeah, exactly. Which is why it's like, uh, I mean, I, I, you got, you got to like at least give him props. Some, some people, I'm not going to say who are not in form and they don't even show up because they don't want to be embarrassed for not being informed. But this guy is the world champ. He has like kind of a lot to lose in terms of respect. If he like shows up and gets uh, fleeced on day one. So you got to at least, you got to at least admire that. He's like, yeah, I'm not informed, but I'm going to show up anyways. And he's still my top 16. He's right. He, he's right. He's one game away from top 16 anyways. Kind of, kind of giga Chad, you know? So you got to at least show respect for that. Gunblade. Hey, okay, boom. Scouting around Balotelli. Going for what looks like to be uh, a fast eight. Playing on Exalted. Okay. Snooty, scoreboard scrapper. He's kind of flirting between fourth and fifth a lot. Top four, bot four. How much stacks has he gotten? He's gotten two stacks of scoreboard scrapper. Oh. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> not that good. Um, Man. Oh, actually, he took it on three, two. Never mind. So he, only, he only had four chances to do it anyways. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Well, TFT Academy released in the next couple days. It's gonna it was gonna be released in the, like a week. When the when the set launches. There's a if you go to the website, tftacademy.com, it'll be on it, there's a countdown timer, I believe. Right? Ice on a win streak. Who, who, whoever was hating on Ari as a damage dealer? I mean, uh, I present you the evidence. Oh, I don't know about these. Probably, probably Rebo both. Whoa, Ice loves fast nine. Oh my God. Oh my God. Okay. Okay. Uh, here comes Malala, level eight. Oh, that's big. That's big. That's big. That's really big. Any, any two would be big as well. And repair. You take those. I feel like he has to roll to zero. Or, mm. Okay. We didn't hit Syndra 2, but that's fine. Because you can work with Syndra 1. You can't really work with one-star frontliners. So this is good. This is good. It's not the best, but it's good. Oh, he also got Spirit Guardians. Also, I'm pretty sure Cybernetics in general this set are just good. There's so many encounters that give you resources. Orn gives you extra items. Like, I feel like cybernetics this set is just good so it's not even like Malala was wrong it was like him taking cybernetic bulk is because he had vision he knew what he wanted to play I, I I said too healthy is just broken in general so he, he could take it but he knew what he wanted to play okay big time upgrades hey if we hit if we hit wait way two we just play way two I wouldn't mind Also, if he hits Rakan 2, Janna 3 for Patty Bowl. Cody. Cody's having a rough day. He's just going eighth. Lelouch hit Udyr 2? Nah. What, what is this EU cheat? What, what are these EU hacks, man? Wait, Ice disconnected. Hold on. Someone should pause. Okay. <clears throat> Surely it's Quay over Jax. I mean, the thing is, what's the value of a. Oh, he actually did do it. Never mind. I was going to say, uh, you have to think about the value of what you want to play over the Wardens because the Wardens actually, like, because of this, it's actually kind of nice to even have extra stray Wardens. 
yeah it's not it's not four wardens it's three but this augment it gives value for a stray warden for sure okay looks like ice disconnected uh and it'd be really shitty if he just disconnects and that's just yeah so all right in the meantime we'll uh we'll pull up someone else's pov let's go ahead and watch uh press event press events game press events on the on the cutoff oh top two oh he hit the yorick augment yone three Like we unpaused. Uh, this is Isis POV. Ice is still fast nining. Wait, does he win this? Oh, amazing loss. Mamalala, nice. Nice. Oh, Malala's on the streak. Still second pick. <gasps> Rakan 2 there's no way okay you guys wouldn't happen to want it right neither of you guys want it Rakan 2 oh badge would have been dope though would have been dope man Is the Darius poor 30% more loot? No, it's 30% chance for loot to drop. Actually, yeah. Uh, that is, uh, it, yeah, technically correct, I guess. The portal says uh, each champion death had 30% chance to drop loot, but, like, I guess you, another way you could say it is, like, 30% uh, more loot. Although it's not necessarily true, because that, that actually means that PV, it implies that PV drops 30% more loot, so. Lala and Sunfire. He's going up against Lelouch. Tattoo of Bombardment. Very good for Kaisa in general. Orn cast again. Orn cast again. Yes. Give us a good item. Don't play. We'll take it. Thresh, Thresh save the Alawi. Woo! Oh, man. Mad life. Oh my god. We just beat Udyr too. It's looking real good. It's looking real good for the world champ, baby. It's looking real good. That was such a big round. My god. That was such a big round. Wow. <clears throat> okay, Balotelli. Balotelli doesn't look that strong either. Okay. Sorry, we just gotta wait for this round to uh, to finish up. Okay, Malala, finish up with a with a hot five streak in stage four. Okay, this is another uh, this is another raid boss, Janna three. If we can get past, okay, it's, it's only one star Galio, it's only one star Galio. Third item, D claw is good. D claw is really good. We love that. We love that. Can you get another cast orn? One more item for the road. Duplicator, that doesn't suck either. Okay, that's not that good. That's fine. Oh my god. How does he do it? How does he do it? From the depths of the abyss. Oh! My god. And the vision for all of this is just so good. Okay, what can we use this duplicator on somebody? He's two rounds off of Hui too. He's two rounds off of Hui too. How is the Nars in a comp? Uh, it's it's been it's been getting a lot of like thirds, thirds and like top fours. It's it's looking really good. I think it's AVP. This tournament is probably like. Probably like 3.7, 3.8 or something like that. It's probably really, really high. I, some people did get like 7th with it and stuff like that. Or like bot 4s. We saw a 5th, we saw a 7th with it. Uh, other players were on the bubble. Not Lelouch. Balotelli's on the bubble. Pops is Anvil. 
Dude, Snoonibu going 8th here means he misses out. He's at he's at 26. Snoonibu is tied with Malala. Oh, man. And Snoonibu's actually, like, one of the cool cool uh, Spanish guys that I've hung out with. I mean, I'm sure all of them are really cool. But Snoonibu is, like, uh, when, we, when we went to Spain for Alicante for the finals, he, like, showed us around a little bit. He's a really, really nice guy. Also, he's, like, a Hearthstone bro, you know? So... Sad. She's gonna die here. Ice has a zero two. Oh no. Oh no, he's in such a good spot. Sad. Alright, well, eighth is very unlikely for him to get through. Wait, Patty Bowl is also at 17, I just realized. Oh my god, Malala won again. Now he's going to nine. And he has set for the faded for the warden. Then he, you want to take this out? Oh my, oh my, a mumu one set one for thresh to allow or orn two. That is that is aggressive. Oh my god! Okay, that is very aggressive. Dude, he's well spoken. Yeah, he's, his English is phenomenal as well. He lost a little bit of cyber value on his front line. I really like the Orn giving items for cybernetic bulk value. And it's an Orn too. Oh no. Oh, man. Okay, but we have way to. We have way to. Who do you grant you a support item? So it's uh, Zeke's or Locket. Probably Locket for the Wardens. Actually, I can see Zeke's. I can see Zeke's. We have two Shoujins. Ooh. Okay, okay. He takes, he takes Zeke's. Potty Ball took Zeke's. Uh, and Balotelli... Took Locket. Ice took Locket. Ice is Ice is one of the candidates to win this game. Ice and Malala and Balotelli, I think, are the three players who are, who can win. Toadie is streaking though. Four wardens. I mean, it's four. It's a, it's a warden meta for sure. Okay, Malala versus Toadie. This is a really big hurdle to clear. Okay, one warden down. Okay, it's looking good. It's looking good. No set cast. Wait, cast it again. The heal on the allies. Oh, that's a big win. Big win, big win. Okay, okay. Kiki's dead. Potty Bowl's dead. Lelouch is alive. I think one more fight and Malala's through. He should be, he should be. Also a third item for Huey. What does Malala want? JG or Gunblade? Gunblade is really good with the Warden setup. But JG is also nice to give him actual damage. Ice takes Gunblade as well. I mean, they're all playing the AP setups here. I'm actually really impressed how much uh, this board has gotten done despite only playing Morgana because I feel like Balotelli, I guess I guess he hit like Udyr 2 on 8. But um, I, I am impressed with like how uh, much the board has been able to get done because Morgana tends to struggle with like single target and it looks like he got it done. Uh, JG Hui, he can also remove by the way. He can item remove and put like uh, JG on uh, Syndra. He has item remover, some options. JG, JG combos well with Guard Breaker, though. I see, I see. Do you guys think, do you guys think Syndra is better with JG, Guard Breaker, Shoujin, and then you move Gunblade to uh, Hui so that Hui heals, like, more AoE? I don't know. I guess, technically, Hui's damage does heal more as well. So, it's, he's having two consistent sources of healing. I can see it, I can see it. Oh! Oh, Toadie survives. 
Lelouch! Oh, Lelouch survives. Wait, how much gold was that? That was insane. All right, give him a lot of the ghost. He's, he's, he's due. He's due for the ghost. Balotelli versus Ice. Cody versus Ice. It's Lelouch versus Malala. Oh, wait, what's Frodo doing? All right, we got Lelouch versus Malala for, for a potential top four. Or if Toady loses as well. Alan, thank you for the raid, buddy. Oh, Malala just fought the ghost. Oh. Fuck it, give him the ghost again. Oh, unlucky. Just try to stop. This is uh, Udyr 2. Okay. That Wukong. Okay, that Wukong is kind of scary, man. Okay, never mind. He didn't actually bop our back line. Okay, nice. Wait, Udyr woke up next to the Syndra. Oh, that's so... Oh, man. That The Udyr literally just woke up next to the Syndra. Oh, God. Wait, wait. Oh, oh no. Man, that has some wake up fighting. That's just, that's some FGC cheese. He just like wo woke up tiger stance. Oh man. Okay. What up, Kevin? I sack with fortune the entire game and got three components and five gold. Wait, what? What was your, what was your luck cash out? If you, uh, the, the number you want to get to is 50, Kevin, with fortune, at least. 75 is usually what you miss. Okay, yeah, Balotelli is good to go. Uh, a set item. We can put, like, three tank items on Alawi, Sunfire on set. Oh, tier on set. Ah, I see, so he casts a little bit faster. Shiv. Ah, okay, okay. Okay. What about bow on like Jax? Oh, staggering his positioning. Ice? Oh no, it's a big raid boss. Does Ice have Exalted in? He does. Wait a second. Oh, that Nautilus ult. At least uh, Hui cast it again. Healing our front line. It's looking good. It's looking good. It's looking good. Okay, at, at worst, we don't die. Yes! Oh, I think that's it. I think that's it. I think Malala gets in now. Oh my god. He did it. He did it. Amazing. Amazing. Oh man, thank goodness. Wow, what a Chad, man. He's not even really he's not even prepared for the tournament, you guys. Oh, he has two gold. Is this one gold? Man, he wasn't even really that prepared for this tournament. Shows up anyways and gets to the final uh, top 16. Impressive. Also, this game, I wasn't sure about his mid game direction, but he helped. He stayed the course and uh, he delivered. Cinder looks really good. Did Malala go eighth last game? He went eighth two games ago. Two games ago. And he's right now on the bubble. He's, uh, I can show you because these fights don't matter, I think. Balotelli should be through. But, uh, Malala was here and top 16 is a cutoff. So he needed to, like, have a good finish. And Balotelli is the one playing for, um, he's playing for tomorrow. Lelouch might make it if he goes first. He might make it if he goes first. Oh, Lelouch is dead. Oh, Malala's dead. Wait, Balotelli went first. That's so big. Lelouch lost to Balotelli's ghost. Oh, wow. I actually, actually, I think Balotelli makes it. He's at 31. There's no way he doesn't make it anymore. Man. We have one more game going on. We got Dissop's game. All right. Full screen it. Disso oh my god, a Disso 73 HP victory. Okay. Not bad.
or Warden. I love how mature as a competitor Malala is. Respect for the champ. Amen, brother. When are you watching Boise's tournament? Oh, I kind of want to play some TFT. I don't know. I, do, you, do you guys want to watch more TFT? I kind of want to play some TFT as well. Yesterday kind of made me uh, realize I, I kind of, I, I think I need more play. I need, I need to play more. Well, who's, who's playing? It depends who's in it, I guess. Who's playing in the Boise's tournament? Oh, wait. Dislope has five Exalted in. Oh, my God. This Exalted is so broken. Well, Rambo, what if I told you that uh, Exalted hasn't been played very much today? Like, it, it, it's, it's seen some... Oh. Oh. Exalted has seen some play. But it's not as it's not as uh, it's not as prevalent as I th I think we expected it. I thought there's gonna be way more exalted today, and it was only in like oh, wait, 30, 40 percent. Maybe that was maybe that's why some people didn't do well though. Get Bay as thank you for the raid, brother. Skip, how'd you do? How'd you do? At Frodan, all right. I'll look at the sheet afterwards. For uh, for fortune favors the brave. There's a lot of tournaments happening this weekend. What was that cutscene? That's the Morgana cutscene. Oh, it's another Nar. It's another Nar top uh, top two. I'm pretty sure this Nar comp is S tier. I we had Nar. At like middle of a tier, it's got to be S tier now. I have to, I have to rearrange some stuff on my my tier list. I'm filming my I'm filming my comps video tomorrow night, but I I feel like uh, I feel like I could film it tonight. My comps video for like launch week. Okay, I mean you got second, but uh, I mean because this soap's a beast. I mean what can I say? NA goes 1-1 one, one to wrap it up. Like, actually, technically, Lamal went 2. Went 1-2 to wrap it up. Impressive, impressive. Okay, so that's the last of all the results. In round 6. What did Preston go? What did Preston go? Show me the news. Show me the news. Preston went top 4. Is that good enough? I think Preston needed a, a third or better. Oh, Preston made it through. Oh, wait, no, no, they haven't sorted. They haven't sorted. Wait, Dishto takes a spot. Oh, is Preston in six, top 16? Is Preston top 16? Refresh, refresh, refresh. Oh, no, he tied. He tied for 16. What's the tiebreaker? What's the tiebreaker? What is the tiebreaker? Is there any, is there tiebreaker rules? Flancy first place, Coco, Kudzu, Ice, Dish Soap, Juanmi. Why are these why are these bolded? Like, why are they boxed? Oh god, you guys. CN. CN 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 CN. And and 60 second missed by one one or two points. One, two, three, four, five, six. They sent eight players and six of them made it through. Also, RY clutched it. Wow. Box because he's the GOAT, I guess. Dale Song went first last game. Man, I'm getting more dogged again. He did not. He did not. He went fifth. Unless you're talking about somebody else. All right. Are you in press events? All right. So that was uh, the tournament for today. Although uh, I, I don't know if press events in. I'm going to log on to PBE.
Also, here's the tournament for Fortune Favors the Brave. Here's the day one lobbies. We have Rain Plosion playing. There's a lot of lab members. Ripple Overdrive. Who else? Connor, who made it to set nine worlds. <clears throat> Pocky Gom. Actually, there's a pretty good amount of player, good amount of players playing. Juke U. Uh, who else is actually playing? T Lides. Oh wait, what's Frodo doing? Oh, just so. Thanks for the raid, buddy. Congratulations on a fantastic tournament day. Man, how are you so good? Is there like some kind of school or educational facility of Team Fight Tactics that you happen to attend? Thank you, buddy. Congratulations. Good job, top five. Thanks for showing up. Thanks for showing up. If Precedent made it. Wait, oh, oh, he missed by one point. Oh, whoops. Damn. Salvi snuck in, huh? She damn one point. We almost had three NA players. We have two. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six CN players. One, two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven EMEA players. Two NA players. And then what am I missing one? Oh, wait. Actually, this counts as another player, right? Nine. One, two. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight plus six plus two. So that's 16. No Latem or Brazil players. Sag. Look at all these Spain players, too. They were like one or two points off from making it. EMEA. Okay, guys, don't get don't get ahead of yourselves. Don't get ahead of yourselves. EMEA also has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 players that didn't make it. <laughs> but, uh, but well, but, but well, well, well played, well played, well done. Uh, no, so it's, it's a really stacked tournament, honestly. Like, all the you can also just extend it straight up to like the top 24, and it'd be like, okay, that also makes sense. It's a lot of good players. And look at how close some of the Spanish players came to making it through. So many of them narrowly missed out. When in Mexico joined EMEA. I mean, EMEA at this point is literally just recruiting every continent uh, on the planet in order to grow their chances of making final lobby. Like, it wouldn't actually surprise me oh, if wait, the A actually stands for Antarctica at this point. They add another A and they're like, oh... EMEA Antarctica because uh we, we need a fifth continent in order to make world final lobbies. <laughs> I'm down if we want to play live together. Wait, precedent. Easy, thank you for the raid. Uh precedent, are we playing are you playing in houses or what? Are you done? <laughs> I went 17. Yeah, sorry, buddy. Congrats congrats on the congrats to all the EME players, but BG for precedent, sad day. I'm going to go play about Okay, do you guys want to watch the Boise's tournaments? They have some pretty good players. Or we could play PB. What do you guys want? Do you guys want to play some PB games? Or do you guys want to watch... There's Appies. There's... Uh, there's Juke U. Rain Plosion. There's T Lights. There's... Uh, I'm trying to know the people who made regionals. Uh, Connor. Ripple Overdrive. No point in playing PB games till launch. Wow. All right, we have a poll. Watch versus play. Watch versus play. There's a poll. You guys can vote. And then after that, we'll uh, we'll choose to do something. Play versus watch. Sub zero arcs in this. Brosef, Philip, right? Some uh, a lot a lot of the the tier two to three and actually not even two it's a lot of tier three na players a couple of tier two like rain plosion probably headlines it no one wants to watch you play i have 35 people disagree with that which is uh 
35 more people that want to watch you play. <laughs> Wait, no, you don't have to time him out, man. <clears throat> you don't time him out. It's all good. All right, uh, so let's watch, I guess. Am I even allowed to watch? Is there a tournament stream? <laughs> 